Okay. We are on the air. Hello. Greetings to all, wherever you are, whenever you are, and welcome to live coverage of Baltimore Orioles baseball, where today, weather permitting, the Baltimore Orioles will wrap up a three-game series with the Kansas City Royals. And uh, let me just say, hi there. I'm Steve. How are you doing? They call me the bird watcher. I'm down here in the corner of your screen right now. And uh, welcome to my channel. I'm so happy that you found me. Uh, it's a brand new Orioles channel that I just started up uh, for this 2024 season. Uh, where the plan is to provide play-by-play -play and commentary for every Orioles game during the regular season and, fingers crossed, postseason. Uh, today, uh, we're in for a bit of a, for a tough one. At least, it's going to be tough for me, considering uh, I live on the other side of the planet and uh, I'm up now at what will be midnight in about two minutes. <laughs> Wondering when this game is going to start and whether I'm going to be up all night long just to hear that the game is going to get rained out. Who knows? I'm not sure. But until we get some uh, updates, I guess I'm going to hang out with you guys and maybe talk a little bit of Orioles baseball. Uh, folks, uh, again, I'm a brand new channel, so... Uh, I do apologize for what, what what might appear to be uh, a bit a bit of a uh, amateurish setup. It's pretty bare bones, but uh, what I can tell you is that uh, the microphone is working okay. I think, and uh, I, per I I do a pretty good job with the play by play. I don't know. What do you guys think? Card is here. Pull. David. Sean. Thomas. Hello, everybody. Good to have you. Again, with this delay, I don't really know where to begin. I think I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the concerns I have after the first five games of the season. Uh, obviously, I'm not in any sort of panic mode. We're three and two. But uh, let's face it. If we do get this game in today, there's a huge difference between uh, starting the season with a six-game homestand against the likes of the Angels and the Royals and finishing four and two versus three and three, and uh, that's that's what we're up against today. We we want to go four and two. Uh, if we go three and three, feels like a bit of a misfire. Uh, but we do have our ace on the mound today, Corbin Burns. And my biggest hope is is that if this game is uh, going to be played, that we're going not going to have some mid game delay where. Burns pitches two or three innings, comes out of the game, and then we sit 90 minutes, and then he gets wasted for a start. Uh, that would be uh, the worst-case scenario. Uh, but I'd like to see anything to improve upon last night's game. Uh, that was a tough one. Uh, not easy to, to watch. Uh, the offense was anemic. Uh, Cole Irvin struggled on the mound. But there were some positive takeaways, uh, mainly uh, the bullpen uh, did a good job, pitched four shutout innings, gave us a chance to hang in there. But again, uh, the bats just weren't there for us. It, it was a night where bad weather and a very strong pitching performance uh, from uh, Marsh, Alec Marsh, a kid who I did not know until last night. Uh he pitched a great game, and I'm telling you right now, I stand by the theory that I had. I said, this kid has got to be from the north, and I bet you Cole Irvin is from California. I go and Google, and there you go. Uh, the uh, Kansas City guy from Milwaukee, and uh, Cole Irvin's from uh, Anaheim. So you could say, Steve, you don't know what you're talking about. The fact that one guy was born in Wisconsin and the other in California has nothing to do with last night's results. Well, I tell you, maybe it did. Because uh, one pitcher just looked comfortable in these elements and uh, the other did not. And uh, I stand by my theory. 
<laughs> Let's see what's going on in the chat here. David's late to the party. Just realized Angelos is dead and the O's are sold. Wow, David. Yeah, there's a lot to catch up on. I mean, it, this has been a, a heck of a calendar year or 365 days, however you want to slice it up. Uh, it's uh, the transition into a new era of Orioles baseball, uh, top to bottom, you know, from owner all the way down. Uh, hey, Chris, thanks for the compliment. Good to have you here today. Uh, yeah, we got to win today. Can we just say it? Urias has been terrible so far this season. Yeah. Um, again, I don't want to read too much into, you know, saying this person is, uh, going to be an MVP or this guy is an absolute waste of space after just so many games. You know, you got Yankee fans out there right now convinced, uh, that they are indeed world series bound. There's Met fans out there right now convinced they're going to go something like 20 and 142. I don't try to read too much after this many games, but there are some takeaways you can make. For example, the Oakland A's are a disaster. I mean, when you break the record for most errors after so many games, that's a sign. When the Rockies give up 14 runs on opening day in one inning, uh, which has never happened in the history of baseball. You can probably read into that that that's not a good sign of things for the Rockies for their upcoming season. But uh, for the most part in general, you don't want to overreact. You want to maintain a level head. But there are some things that's got me scratching my head right now. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking at today's lineup card, and I'm not very happy with it. Basically, when I think about an optimal Orioles lineup and some of the interchangeable parts that we have, I feel like the first seven batters in the lineup should all be pretty, uh, you know, formidable. But uh, we got Mateo in the seven hole, followed by McCann and Urias. I am sorry, folks, but that is a bottom third of the lineup that is a hole. What makes the Orioles lineup tough to beat is that we don't necessarily have you know those top sluggers in the three and four spots that put up the 50 home runs and, and or that sort of thing you know we don't have an Acuna we don't have a Jordan Alvarez uh we don't uh, you know you get what I'm saying but what we do have is consistency top to bottom usually but Mateo McCann Urias that just feels like to me we can look at two or three innings uh, today where we're going to come up to the plate with two or three of those guys do up and we can almost just uh, chalk it up as, as an inning without a chance to score runs. I don't know. I'm not trying to be too pessimistic about it. It's just that imagine a scenario, and this is going to be my next point, which is nobody is talking enough about this in Birdland, which is – we, we love to uh, wax uh, happiness about all the depth we have on this team. Now, obviously, Adley Rutschman is irreplaceable. James McCann is a fine backup. But in terms of replacing uh, somebody uh, and not losing too much, uh, of course, Adley is irreplaceable. But we're, we're pretty much been going around all spring saying, yeah, we've got so much depth, uh, you know, if one guy goes down, uh, we got another guy to take his place. Well, what about center field? Can we talk about this? Because we've only got one real center fielder, apparently, and he isn't exactly 100% healthy. Uh, he's had a lot of injury concerns. We're talking about Cedric Mullins, of course. Uh, he's not up in the lineup today. Obviously, he's going to need his share of days off uh you know here and there um and uh, we have been uh I say we uh you know the Orioles organization has been grooming Jorge Mateo since last year uh to get experience uh playing in center field and they're gonna put him out there today but is this really gonna be our go-to option on days when uh said Mullins gets the day off because to me that's that's no good um, why is Colton Kowser considered only a corner outfielder if he's going to make it in the bigs? That's, that's something I don't understand. Is it, why is Colton Kowser not even being 
considered a center fielder option for the Orioles. Like, it, it, I know he played a little bit. He played a few games in center in his call-up last year, but for the most part, corner outfield when he was uh, given a chance. And, uh, yeah, when we talk about where Kowser plays uh, for this coming season that's now underway, it's always, well, he could play for Hayes and left. He could start over Santander and right. Maybe Santander can DH. Uh, but we never really talk about Kowser in center field. Uh, I, I took a long look at his uh, minor league career, and he's a center fielder. That's been his – uh, most played position at every level of baseball throughout the minors. So I get it. He may not ha- He's not going to have the range of a Cedric Mullins. Not a whole lot of center fielders do, at least not when Mullins is fully fit. But, uh, yeah, I just feel like we need to do something to come up with a better backup plan uh, for days where we don't have Mullins because, folks, I don't trust that Mullins is going to be able to get through a full season healthy, you know? Like, you can almost bank on there being, you know, a DL stint here or there. Let's see. Hey, Pierre's in the chat now. Hey, Pierre, how are you doing? Melanie, hon, how you doing? The rain has stopped as of now. Okay. I don't know how quickly they're thinking about taking off the tarp. Listen, if anybody's got any uh, updates concerning uh, when first pitch might begin. Please keep me informed. I'll keep you guys informed about whatever I can find. Uh, personally, I don't think we don't have center field options. Hayes and Kowser can both play good center field, just don't have a right-handed option. Well, I mean, Hayes is right-handed. And I, I was saying that, uh, I think, on last night's game. Like, yeah, I mean, in a pinch, you know, he put Hayes in center. It's not optimal, but you can do it. But my thing is, again, Kowser, I I feel like we're stunting his growth. Maybe Kowser eventually will be a corner outfielder, but he's got experience in center field. Like, I I just feel like we need to give him a shot out there, you know, until he shows that he's completely incapable of doing it. Uh, you know, let's let's see what he can do there. Pure lives about three hours north of Baltimore and it just stopped raining here. Yeah, I, I looked at the radar and the band, you know, how it it looks it looks like there's a clearing coming up. And now David saying live cam looking pretty grim regarding the weather. So is it just another band of uh showers, one following the next? It's gonna be one of those days. Uh, yeah, Enrique Bradfield Jr., yeah, I thought that's why we drafted him. Like, as soon as we made that draft pick, I said, okay, there's who's going to take Mullins' place, you know, a couple of years down the line. But uh, until then, we need to figure some things out. And uh, the other thing that I guess I want to, you know, I guess as a complaint, and again, folks, don't take this as like, oh, Steve is, uh, you know, trashing his Orioles. No, uh, I trust in... Brandon Hyde, I trust in Mike Elias. I trust in the process. Uh, It doesn't mean I'm always going to look at every decision and immediately go, yeah, that makes sense. But occasionally there's some uh, decisions that give me immediate pause. Uh, And, uh, you know, for me the biggest thing was when I looked at the schedule, when I saw – the teams we were facing, when I saw the amount of left-handed, left-handed pitching that we were uh, due to face and factoring in the off days and the fact that Jackson Holiday wasn't going to come up with a club, I was sitting here going, we got to have Kobe Mayo up. We got to have Kobe Mayo up. This is the perfect time. And I understand that uh, it may only be uh, like a two-week, three-week sort of stint, but I, f- I feel like if you – if you sort of let Mayo know that, that like, hey, listen, you're, you, we're bringing you up because you've been swinging a hot bat and we feel like with the teams we're playing, the matchups that are coming up here to start the season, uh, you'd be the best fit for us in the lineup. And you can't tell me looking at this lineup right day, uh, <laughs> this lineup right now, that uh, sticking, uh, 
you know, Mayo at third, maybe putting him behind Westberg and batting six. Then you got Hayes in the seventh spot. And then whatever, Mateo I'd rather have in the nine hole sort of as a secondary leadoff hitter, keep McCann in the eighth spot. But, yeah, just that one addition, Urias out for Mayo, it's just it takes this weak bottom of the lineup and and suddenly uh, the whole lineup looks a whole lot stronger. I don't know. That's just me. And the whole time I was saying, well, in order to do this, we need to trade Urias. But, like, if we're going to keep Holiday down – and we're not going to give a spot to Mayo, then that means we're holding on to Urias and at least until Holiday gets called up. So we need to be looking for a trade partner for Urias. And Urias had a decent spring. If you know, if we were you know making our phone calls to other teams, we might be looking for a, an, a, a, an infielder with a little versatility, pretty good contact hitter against right-handed pitching. I mean, look, I know most of Birdland is ready to move on from Urias, but uh, I I don't think he's like a washed-up player that can't help out another team. Uh, I I think, you know, between his versatility, I know his glove seems to be a bit flighty. I mean, one minute you say former gold glove winner Ramon Urias, and then that next minute you're going, there's another awfully booted ball there by Ramon Urias. (laughs) Uh, I don't know. We we, we got to do something uh, to, to address uh, center field. And again, this Tony Kemp slash Ramon Urias part of our infield makeup in the, in the roster right now, just it, it's it, it's not making me too happy. Meanwhile, we're watching all these highlights down in the minors. Last night, four home runs, two from Kerstad. Holiday went deep, hit one off the batter's eye. Connor Norby went deep. Wait, I think there might have been another one. I think Kyle Stowers went deep. So, hey, here's something I want to talk about. By the way, thanks for being here, guys. And uh, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to just talk without any sort of, uh, you know, interaction like I'm not the uh, you know Joe sportscaster over here and Joe uh, Joey bag of donuts. We do have a uh, Royals lineup card out here as well. I guess we could go over that. How's the Orioles looking? They seem to have trouble with the Royals. Well, you know, two games we've split so far. Again, that's that's how baseball goes. These three game series perfectly designed you win one you lose one and then that third game decides whether or not you had a good series or a bad series we'll find out hopefully today that it was a good series I'll take four out of six I was kind of hoping for five out of six to be honest considering the opponents but again uh you know early doors not too worried have my production assistant pull up some random stats. <laughs> Stowers, Holiday, Norby, Robinson, Kerstad twice. Wow. Yeah, the Orioles are at home. Uh, there's been rain in the Baltimore area uh, all week long. And uh, it's just continuing today. And, uh, yeah, uh, the tarp's been on the field since the morning. It's been raining for quite some time. Uh, right. What else? What else is there to mention here? Gunner, Adley, Mani, Santander, Westberg. I mean, we, now we're moving Westberg up into the five hole. That's asking a lot from him. Uh, yeah. i tell you what I want to look at. How about a little preview of the, uh, Pirates uh series coming up next because i have yet to really take a look at that just want to look at maybe the pitching matchups i probably can name only like two pirate pitchers right now so i'm a little bit curious yeah bobby witt is uh quite the player five tool player Great guy to have in your organization. 
That's somebody you want to build a franchise around right there. Uh, some other games are getting underway, by the way. Let's see. So tomorrow's a late schedule. Looks like there's only six games on tap. So starting on Friday, is that right? Grayson Rodriguez against Jared Jones, 1-0, 476 ERA, 10 strikeouts. Wow, I'm assuming, yeah, at this point, everybody's only made one start. So Jared Jones with double-digit strikeouts in his first start with a win. So there's somebody to keep an eye on. We'll have Grayson going up against him. That's a 4-12 start on a Friday. That's got it. Yeah, that's their home opener. Oh, that stinks. That's 3.12 a.m. for me. All right, so I get a day off after today. And by the way, I might be up all night long for a rain delay. Hey, Jason, how you doing? But then uh, you, you got to tell me I got to figure out when to sleep and how for a 3.12 a.m. first pitch. That's going to be rough. I'm not complaining. I'm just uh, letting you know it's, you know. And then the next day, a Saturday, 3 o'clock a.m. start. Oh, my God. Just forget it. I'm a vampire. I'm officially a vampire. Tyler Wells against Bailey Falter, 13 and a half ERA. All right, that sounds good. And then Sunday, let's see if they've got it up yet or not. And then once we're done with that, we're playing our first division opponent, the Red Sox, next week, guys. Dean Kramer against Marco Gonzalez on Sunday. So there's another lefty starter coming up. That'll make, let's see, two, four, five of the first nine games left-handed pitching, if if my math is right. So, yeah, that's why, that's why I wasn't that upset about Holiday starting down in the minors. I was like, well, if we're keeping Urias... And we probably don't want Holiday in there facing lefties. You know, I'm seeing an infield of Gunner, Westberg, Urias. You know, if you're not going to have Mayo. So if Holiday's only starting every other game, plus you got these built-in off days, I can kind of understand, you know, the move. Case of Red Bull, I know. I am so unprepared, Melanie. I, You know what I did? I, even though I'm living over here in Thailand... Tonight I splurged and I got a, a Subway sandwich delivered via, you know, a food uh, delivery app. And uh, they had a, a special buy two cookies, get one free. And I'm like, hell yeah, I'll get some Subway cookies. So I had one cookie with my sub and I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll have these two cookies for later when I do the stream. I'll make some coffee. And then that between the caffeine and the sugar from the cookies as a snack during the game, I'll be able to get through this no matter how late it goes. But guess what I did? I ate, the, I ate all the cookies. You know, well, you know, I went after that next cookie an hour later. I was like, eh, man, that would be great. You know, I'll still have one more cookie. I'll still have one more cookie. And then uh, about 20 minutes ago, I ate the other cookie. So there's that story. Uh, I speak a little bit of Thai. I'm not fluent by any means, uh, but uh, the basics, you know. I got the basics down okay. Uh, let's see. What channel can I watch MLB? Is it pay-per-view? Uh, it, it all depends where you're living, what sort of uh, packages are, that are available to you. I might crash. It depends on how late this start is. <laughs> Three cookies, pure, and they're all gone. I ate them all. Uh, I'm. So, you cannot put cookies in front of me at night. You know, it was. That's what was. That was the plan. Was take a nap, uh, you know, and then wake up and do the stream. But I couldn't fall asleep. It was like I was just laying there with visions of. Subway cookies dancing in my head. You so fat with the pH. That's right. Word up, David. 
Are you in the hizzy? <laughs> uh, let's see. What else are we going to talk about here? What are some of your concerns, Orioles fans? Or baseball fans in general? You want to talk about Shohei Otani? You want to talk about how suddenly it's just completely out of the news for the last five or six days? This is way too big of a scandal, and it just feels like everybody's uh, doing everything they can to sweep it under the rug. I mean, I guess the feds are going to eventually reveal whatever they're going to reveal, and that's where the real <laughs> truth is going to come. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, if you're, if you're following that story, I mean, clearly there's some stuff that doesn't add up, whether you believe one side or another. There's still stuff that doesn't add up. Where are you from originally? I am from PG County, Maryland. I consider myself a uh, dual citizen, uh, Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Maryland citizen. Maryland, my Maryland. Don't get me singing the Maryland uh, state song. Because it might get to that point tonight. The despot's heel is on thy shore. Maryland, my Maryland. His torch is at thy temple door. You see what you got me doing here? Do you see what you got me doing? I love Maryland. Have I ever mentioned that? It's the best damn state. I'm sorry. You got it all. You got the mountains. You got the beaches. You got the city. You got the country. You got the bay. You got the beach. I already mentioned the beach. Can't beat it. You can't beat it. Otani doing new balance commercials to pay bets off. Is he, did he actually just sign some kind of, uh, like, uh, endorsement deal? That sort of stuff. I, I, I don't know anything about that stuff. The despot heel is on thy shore. Come on, David. Let's hear it. Come on, Melanie. Sing along. Do, 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 do. Hey, who's your favorite lord? I'm a bit of a Cecil guy myself. You know, a lot of people will go Calvert. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a Cecil guy. You know? You, I mean, obviously, you can go Lord Baltimore if you want. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a Cecil guy, I think. A, com a new balance commercial last night? So, so how does... How does uh, what did they change? Did they change the... Don't tell me they changed the Maryland State song. You can't do that. Not without informing me. That's not right. You'll be there at the end of the month. Oh, you're, you'll be back in Maryland? Man, I'm so jealous. Ugh, if it were financially viable, I would just do like a one-month tour go back there now's the time to do it before this dumb election season goes out of out of control <clears throat> before it gets too hot over there lord this dick this dig yo man this dig do you got this dig this dig what, what is this dick he meant this dig uh yeah, I haven't watched kids in a while. Hey, Charles, how you doing? Yeah, folks, if you're here right now, I know it sounds like the worst presentation in sports history. And, you you know, you might not be wrong about that. But here's the deal. We got a rain delay in Baltimore. And, uh, you know, maybe if I had another person on a microphone to talk to, we could have an interesting conversation. But unfortunately, it's just me blabbing into a microphone and i would do my uh other stream that i do on my other channel where i just dig through youtube and whip out some funny videos to pass the time but uh 
I can't go too off brand, all right? Let's see, what's some other uh, just headline news in baseball? What's the weather like down there in the Bahamas, Charles? How about Bryce Harper hitting three home runs last night? Are they serious with this? Are they serious with with this uh, with this headline? Who will be 2024's breakout star? Gunnar Henderson? Will he break out? What do you mean break out? He just won the he just won the uh, Rookie of the Year. He's uh, he's he's broken out. There's no there's no surprise. What are you talking about? Breakout star? That would be. A surprise. Kobe Mayo would be a breakout star for the Orioles this season. Like like even Jackson Holiday wouldn't be a breakout. Breakout would imply, hey, I didn't see that coming. Gunnar Henderson? Breakout? All right. Whatever. Oh, here's the uh, Jackson Holiday home run from last night. There you go. And dead center field over the 400-foot sign, bouncing off the batter's eye. And, yeah, that could be on our team right now. And it will be. It will be soon enough. Look, he's ripping it up down there. I'm happy for him. Look, the kid lives and breathes baseball. We, we know it. The Holiday family, if you've seen where this kid lives, his bed is next to a batting cage, okay? He's going to be ready, and he's got the mentality, I think. He's not, gonna, he's not worried. He's going to make a whole ton of money in his career. I don't think he cares about this service time thing. It's like whatever, you know? There's a lot of great, talented players that, you know, just had to hang out in the minors for a little bit before they, you know, got their uh, career started. He'll be he'll be fine. Let's just hurry up and get him here. No later than what is it? About another ten days. He'll be eligible with that service time thing in about ten more days. I think it's uh next Friday or Saturday against that'll only be eight or nine more days uh, against the Brewers. So yeah, that's the Pirates this weekend, then the Red Sox midweek, and then back home to face the Brewers. Next weekend. Uh, oh, Sports League. Yeah, uh, just clearly you're new to the channel. Uh, yeah, uh, channels like this that you find on YouTube that uh, do live stream coverage. Uh, we can't show video of the game. We can't play audio of a broadcast because uh, that's copyrighted material. We sort of uh, fill in the cracks as an alternative way of... Uh, getting your baseball fix so between the animation of uh you know who's batting and who's on base and all that and me calling the game uh that's sort of like uh an alternative way to follow the ball game there's all kinds of practical applications for a site like this i like to think of people putting together ikea furniture while listening to my streams you know, because putting together IKEA furniture can really be a pain in the neck. But if you got my stream on in the background, it'll, it'll, it'll make the time go by a little faster. Maybe it'll make tab A fit into slot B a little bit easier. I don't know. Card, how you doing? How's everybody doing? By the way, I, uh, there are other games starting at this point now, right? Yeah, there we go. We've got the Angels already. Hey, how about the Angels after losing the first two against us? Three wins in a row, sitting at the top of the American League West and are already ahead by two runs in the first inning today. So, again, just another reason to say uh, there's no reason to overreact in terms of, like, records right now. Uh, there, there's some reason to react to some decisions about some certain players. But uh, in terms of, uh, and another, you know, n non surprise would be the fact that 
the American League East currently doesn't have a team with a losing record. Again, this is why this game today is so important. If the Orioles were to lose this game, fall to 3-3, three and three, to, to just split a six-game home series against the Royals and Angels, that's a, that's a loss. You can't – that's not good enough in the AL East. This is a four out of six situation. We need this game today. Let's see, we got the Twins and Brewers uh, scoreless top of the second. Same situation, Rangers and Rays. And looks like uh, perhaps there's another rain delay going on here. Shouldn't this game already be? Oh, wait, no, that's local time for me. All right, so that's about another half hour away. Hey, Bill, I, I'm, I'm not doing all that much, but I appreciate you appreciating all I do. <laughs> What more can I do? How about that? How would you guys, uh, what would you like to see to, you know, make your experience here on the stream a little bit better? Uh, if it involves a lot of time and effort, I might say no thanks. But <laughs> if it's something I can do with relative ease, I'm all ears. Here's our weather update from the Bahamas, 85 degrees, winds from the southwest at 13 miles an hour. Hey, Charles, it's a little warmer where you are, but to be fair, it's uh, in the middle of the night here. It's after midnight. I'm looking at, if you can see in the bottom left-hand corner of my screen, I'm looking at 83 degrees right now. It was, uh, it was 92 degrees today by 9.30 in the morning. And uh, another thing that I just realized, uh, the giant yearly New Year's festival. New Year's in Thailand, not like you're used to in the Western world, where it's a one-night, you know, countdown to this one moment, and boom, it's a new year. It's a, it's a week-long celebration. Well, actually, uh, it lasts... In varying lengths, depending on what city or what area of the country you're in, but uh, it's a it's a water celebration. Uh, if you're ever out here during Songkran, uh, be prepared to get wet because everybody is entitled to throw water in your face everywhere you go for about a week, which uh, you know, as long as you're able to. <laughs> And tolerate it it's not so bad because typically this time of year it gets awfully hot what's the percentage this game gets canceled florida there's no there's no way to i mean it's all speculation i i would hope that the chances are better than 50 50 because if they weren't then i wish they would have just called the game off i mean nothing is worse then if you're a fan trying to go to a game like the one today uh, and you're trying to make your way there and you're trying to figure out, you know, when to go and, and the, you know, and the whole thing winds up with it just being a rain out and just your whole day gets wasted. That stinks. It's nice to get a, you know, a heads up, but. To be fair, we've been lucky. Uh, there's been a couple of games already in this homestand where the weather looked pretty ominous, uh, including opening day. But uh, we've got all the games in so far without any any delays. This is the first one. Just taking a look around here at the, at the Twitters. Well, we've got some Premier League football coming up here in the next hour as well. This is the sport I used to cover for a living. Arsenal taking on Luton Town. David Rea, Ben White, Saliba, Gabriel, Alexander Zinchenko, Martin Odegaard, Thomas Partey, Emil Smith Rowe, Reese Nelson, Kai Havertz, Leandro Trossard. I'm sure everybody here listening knows all these players' names, right? And for Brighton, we'll have Verbruggen, Dunk, Igor Julio, Veltman, Van Heck, Baleba, Buonate, Gross, Lalana, Adingra, and Juan Pedro. 
All right, moving out of English football. <laughs> oh, there's a couple of games on tonight. Rain in the forecast for the next seven days. All right, well, our road trip couldn't have come at a better time then, right? Can we somehow get this game in? We'll be spending the next uh, seven days in Pittsburgh and in Boston. Melanie, what's uh, the Pittsburgh? Uh, I might as well look at that. What's the what's the Pittsburgh weather forecast for the weekend? Because that is an East Coast. Oh, no, Friday showers. Saturday, cloudy, 44 degrees. Flood warning. Flood warning. Yikes. Rain and snow. Uh, don't really hear anything about the Premier League. Do we know how long they plan to have it delayed? Rob, we don't. That would be... If, if I had any info on when they, I'll go ahead and check like Rock. I'll check Rock's Twitter. He's usually pretty good with uh, updating about the the rain delays. Well, all we got is a one hour ago tweet saying start of today's game will be delayed. Okay. Uh, got an ETA on that Rock. Or. Uh, he just sort of telling us what we know because first pitch was supposed to be 33 minutes ago. And now I'm just sitting here with coffee that is turning room temperature more and more by the minute. Didn't know Pittsburgh was so near my town. Rain and snow in the forecast is normal for me. You live close to Pittsburgh card? You should go to a Pirates game. They, pff, if there's one ballpark that you know pretty much took the Camden Yards model and made it just as good it's a uh, PNC Park and they're in Pittsburgh I haven't been to it I'm saying it simply just from you know all the looks I've seen of it both you know in game and I've watched some uh, videos of like stadium tours and stuff like that great ballpark oh you're how are you in Canada and close to Pittsburgh? How does that work? I guess distance is relative to... I guess you're close to Pittsburgh uh, in comparison to Jupiter. Nat Stadium sucks and it's relatively new. David, I could not agree with you more. I remember going to my first Nats game and just looking at that ballpark and going, Wow. There is zero atmosphere here. This place feels so sterile and just lacking of any sort of charm or, you know, quirkiness or anything. Just just a, a corporate stadium. Ugh. Oh, you're being sarcastic. I'm sorry. By the way, folks, if you attempt sarcasm with me in chat, remember that A... Sometimes tone is difficult to read in text. We all know this by now. We've all made this mistake. And B, your boy has been up since 4.30 a.m., which was last night for you guys. The game I called last night, it's still the same day. I'm wearing the same shirt. I got on the same clothes. I'm, I'm burning the candle at both ends. So uh, my brain is probably going to be mush uh in about another hour or so so any attempts at sarcasm with me i might miss it tonight <laughs> just just letting everybody know please go easy on me the weather says it's clear now in baltimore well that's a good update i like that update all i want to hear is the tarp is off the field because then you can start counting down because that's usually what about 20 minutes 25 minutes. Tell me the tarps off the field and, uh, you know, we'll be fine. Otherwise, I'm running out of stuff to talk about. And when I run out of stuff to talk about, I start cursing a lot, which I'm not trying to do on this channel. I'm trying to keep this channel PG. Because the other channel is a hard R. And I got to just reserve all of my 
potty mouth talk for that channel. Ah, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. All right. I'll remember that card. I'll look for that emoji. You know what? Use that for sarcasm too. Just I'll remember that one. Slightly tilted head, tongue sticking out like one of those uh, English bulldogs. <laughs> That's fine. The O was lost last night. You had better change clothes. Uh, yeah. Well, I did change clothes, Bill. Don't you notice? Don't you see this hat? That's what's missed. That's the new addition. I didn't change. I added. Just like a team sometimes. They don't need to change the players. They just need to add something. And this hat, like the clothes I had on today, that was the 2023 Orioles. This hat, this is Corbin Burns right here. I put on my Corbin Burns hat, and suddenly we've upgraded. And we're ready to win today. How's that sound? Sound good to you? I might have to have a lucky strike here, folks. I got time to kill. Oof. I mean, before this coffee gets to uh, room temperature, you know, I might as well have a little nicotine. All right, this segment of the pregame rain delay in the middle of the frickin' night on the other side of the planet is brought to you by Lucky Strike. Uh, you are a very superstitious ball player. Okay, Bill, perfect. I would love to just start some sort of topic while we sit here and hang out. What was your go-to superstition, Bill? If not go-to, maybe just one of the more interesting ones, and then maybe some others will uh, will join in with their own. 23 watching and only 13 likes. Please hit the like button as it helps. Get to be seen by more people. Share the video. If you know any baseball fans, thank you, Card. Yeah, folks, listen. Again, uh, when it comes to subscribing to my channel... Uh, it means a whole lot, but I also understand I need to earn it. So I, I get it. If you want to hang on here and sort of see what I'm all about before committing, it's understandable. I want to earn your subscription. I, I want to give you a good coverage of Orioles baseball, but don't let tonight's stream be, uh, you know, your, your first impression because <laughs> again, Right now, I'm here killing time, okay? Okay? Uh, all right. Uh, folks, I'm going to uh, just uh, briefly uh, go off uh, my video here for just a moment. Because, uh, yeah. You know. I'm still here. I'm talking. I'm talking. Yes, indeed, I'm talking. Ah, that's a good lucky strike. No stepping on the baselines on the way to the mound. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much universal, right? If you play baseball, yeah, don't do that. Did you pitch, Bill? I mean, I mean pitchers are quirkier than anybody, especially when it comes to the mound. No one talked with you during the game. Okay, so you were a pitcher. You were definitely a pitcher, right? There's no way you weren't a pitcher. Otherwise, you'd be a terrible guy in the dugout if you're a position player, not uh, chatting it up with your mates. How have the neighbors been getting along, Melanie? Uh, there haven't been any arguments, at least not on a live stream since uh, maybe last week. All right. Uh, lefty or righty, Bill? What's uh, what's the CH, by the way? Is, is that like a, a, a title of some sort, like a military title? That, uh, 
Should I know that? Is that like Chaplin or something? Like, what, what's the CH? I feel like an idiot for asking, but I'll be honest. I don't know what it. I don't know what it. Uh, what it is? Isn't Chaplin like a? That's like a religious thing, right? That can't be it. Ch what's a ch ch? I'm sure I'll figure it out. Or maybe you're just shortening Charles or something. I'm not sure. Right hander. Hmm. Hmm. Don't mind me, guys. I'm just, uh, you know, a little bit of the devil's lettuce here. Figured I'd keep it off camera. Yeah, no. Got nothing else better to do. Oh, military chaplain. All right, so I guessed it right. I'd give myself a cookie, but I ate it already. Ah, oh, jeez. Good Lord Almighty. All right. Uh, what's going on around here? What's shaking? 16 years. Yes, David, it, ha it has been legal here now for about a year and a half. And uh, the country has gone nuts because, you know, it went from being something that got you in a whole lot of trouble into something now where there's a head shop, like, on every block. Every block. Right here in my own block. I got a 7-Eleven, a nail salon... A haircut place, a tattoo place, and a head shop. <laughs> wow. It almost feels like I'm living in Myrtle Beach again. So you just started a year and a half ago. Well, David, I can't I can't reveal everything. You know I've been here a long time, right? Are you a fan of the devil's lettuce there, Melanie? You know you put a little old bay on there. Make yourself a sandwich. Played college ball and invited to twins spring training in 78. Nice. Oh, I wish I could say I had a baseball career that went as far as that, but we'll never know. Thanks to Osgood Schlater's disease. Who was it in here in chat yesterday? I think they just came by. I'm not remembering everybody's name, I have to be honest. But they have a blue uh, avatar. But uh, they, too, experienced the the thrill of Osgood Schlater's disease uh, during their teenage years. Mm. I'll be right back on the uh, airwaves here. I just, uh, you know, we're just trying to, you know, mm. Oh, bro. What? Uh, oh, sorry. Whoops. I hit the video. I hit the camera button. Did that just happen? All right. I guess I can't hide everything about me. Hmm. All right, that ought to do the trick. That ought to keep me entertained for the next uh, 30 to 45 minutes. <sighs> Whew. Hot boxing in here. Hot boxing in Thailand. What's shaking, everybody? <laughs> uh, yeah. Again, no snacks. So now, I, now that I've done that, I've got hot coffee and no snacks in a game that hasn't started yet. I'm in great shape. Is it ties or Westerners in your building? Uh, I think there's two Westerners in my building. Let's see. There's five floors. There's six, six or seven rooms on each floor. So somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 35 rooms so yeah about three westerners and the rest are thai 
Hello from Brazil. How you doing there, Simer? If I'm saying that right, it's great to have some international representation, especially when it's a whole other continent. We got David in France, so Europe is checking in. I'm in Thailand, Asia representing. Melanie's in Baltimore right now. She's living near the water. Melanie, you live near the water? Where, where, where are you at there? Are you in Dundalk? Where are you, Melanie? <laughs> so we, we got the U.S. We got North America. We got South America. We got Europe. We got Asia. Do I hear Africa? Do I hear Australia? Hey, here's a, here's a baseball trivia question for you. Name an Australian-born uh, baseball player. Because I remember at the time who was like the first one. He played catcher for the Brewers. Maybe he was the first position Australian player. I might be wrong about it. B. Moore County. Talesen. You know, I almost went to Talesen State. But uh, my, my, my dad fucking pulled an okie doke on me. I, you know, I grew up in Maryland, right? And then uh, my junior year of high school, I moved down with my dad because, uh, <clears throat> you know, he, he was living in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And he was, you know, I was living with my mom growing up. And my dad at some point was like, hey, son, you want to come live with uh, me? I'm, I'm moving down to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And, you know, being a high schooler at the time, the idea of like moving to a beach town I, you know, after growing up like in a metropolitan area, the hustle and bustle, the traffic, uh, you know, I'm like, hell yeah. So I headed on down to Myrtle Beach and uh, spent my last two years of high school there. Uh, we, Fitzy, you got an Australian player on the Sox? I know there's a few now, but. In the early 90s, I think it was a guy named Dave Nilsson, catcher for the Brewers. Now it says Australian manager. Uh, now he's managing baseball somewhere in Australia. Uh, let's see. I don't think I'm going to go ahead and guess he wasn't the first Australian player, but I just remember when he played back in like the early 90s. That it was a big deal that he was from Australia. Uh, he was, in 1999, the first Australian player to appear in an All-Star game. So you got that going for you. Which is nice. So yeah, Australia representing tonight. We Okay. Do I hear Antarctica? Is anybody from The Thing in chat tonight? <laughs> you from the county or something? <laughs> hey, how about we just watch a bunch of John Waters movies until this uh, game gets started? How's that sound? Who's up to watch uh, Multiple Maniacs? Who's in the mood for uh, Pink Flamingos? Anybody? <laughs> Sure, YouTube would love that. Oh no! What's he watching? <laughs> you want to watch some old Captain Chesapeake? Man, I was watching. Uh, I was watching some old Captain Chesapeake. Oops, I can't type. Who else grew up watching Ch Captain Chesapeake uh, before or after school? Anybody? Come on. Don't tell me I'm the only one that was watching Captain Chesapeake. There he is. There he is.
Uh, you saw the one with saw saw what one with John Travolta? I hate. See, this is why I'm terrible at this. Oh, you're talking about uh, John Waters movies. You're talking about the Hairspray remake. That was oh, that was a remake. John Travolta has not been in a true John Waters movie. Okay. He was in the Hairspray remake playing the role of Divine. Uh, I never saw it because there's two things I will never watch. Blues Brothers 2000 and that Hairspray remake. Because I, I, I can just tell by everything before seeing it that it's just a bad idea. <laughs> And it's only going to tarnish the legacy of two things that I enjoy. You know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Melon, you've seen the original. The original's great. The original Hairspray? Oh, it's a... It's a I, when John Waters crossed over with Hairspray and Crybaby in the late 80s, uh, it was, you know, I was like, 12 13 years old at the time so for me that was my first exposure to john waters and i remember my mom taking me to see crybaby and her like telling me up front like you know steven i might have to like hold a newspaper up in front of your head uh during some of the scenes in this movie she was exp you know she she knew all about the old john waters right like, this was right when he's, I guess Polyester was the movie where he kind of started the transition from being just pure shock humor into something that's a little more, you know, commercial friendly, like Crybaby and uh, Hairspray. But, you know, going into, like, Hairspray at the time, my mom didn't know that. You know what I mean? <laughs> there are a few gags in hairspray that are kind of you know fun in a sort of old school john waters way but man when, you, when you're talking about those first few john waters movies man, talk about an evolution or a de-evolution whatever you want to call it i don't know let's see what Ca old captain chess peeks up to here can we get an update here on the old twitter please I am getting uh, kind of uh, bored with this. I'm getting bored with my own presentation. Rock, anything else? No? Orioles, Orioles official, anything? Anything new? Serial Mom is the best one of all time. It's all filmed right around where I live. Well, Melanie, I'm sure uh, there's a lot that was filmed right around where you live. He, he, uh, he always shot on location in and around the area. By the way, is it me or is, does Captain Chesapeake look like we're watching uh, Red Letter Media? This is like a Mr. Plinkett video. <laughs> uh, all my favorite stuff sort of overlaps each other. What's my favorite John Waters movie, you ask? Gee, if I had to choose. I do like Serial Mom. Kathleen Turner is, is, is fantastic in that. Um, but that was where John Waters kind of lost that commercial appeal because that that movie didn't really do too too well and then he made one cecil b demented cecil b demented was just there and i think that's like the last john waters movie i kind of even gave a chance i was by the old homicide building in fells point a couple of weeks ago it's like a hotel restaurant now yeah, there's a 
When I went back to visit in D.C., David, I was, you know, I didn't go back to Baltimore when I came back from uh, my first trip here to Thailand. When I stayed in Philly for a few months, I did go down uh, to D.C. at one point to visit some folks and then eventually take the train up to New York to take the plane back to here. And uh, all the neighborhoods that I was living in and around like, you know, around the 930 Club and uh, Howard University, that, that whole neighborhood where, it uh, you know, it was going through that whole gentrification thing, I guess, when I was, but now, now it's just, you know, frosted glass apartment buildings with, like, gyms with, like, people on their stupid, like, uh, uh, what are you, Nordic tracks or whatever the hell, gazing out over the like newly bricked sidewalks and everybody sipping Starbucks. I don't know. It just what happened to my neighborhood. Ugh. Yeah, six eleven Florida. That's my old. Did you know that was my old residence? It's so weird that my residence is kind of a just like. Like, like, it's, it's, it's not a private, it's not private information. You know what I mean? Like, I lived somewhere that is, like, researchable. Because our apartment was a music venue. <laughs> That's right, folks. I had a pretty interesting life in my 20s and 30s. And 40s. I've had some different chapters. Been doing some different things. Even with a few obstacles in the way. Along the way. Okay, for Christ's sake. What am I doing here? Uh, for heaven's sakes. Yeah, DC. Uh, and, and, and Melanie, I'm telling you right now. I mean... Maybe if I ever moved back to the States, I can find a place in Baltimore, but I, there's no way I'm going to be able to find a place in D.C. Um, everyone's address is on the Internet now. Yeah, but this is different. This was like, again, like 611 Florida Avenue was like the name of a music venue, but it was my house. I mean, I mean it was a shared roommate row house. But it was an unlicensed, you know, no permit, but, you know, still listed like in the city paper as a venue, my house. <laughs> There'd be nights where I'd come home working from the 930 club and there's a show going on in my house and I'm tired and I live in, you know, one floor up from the ground floor where the music's being played and I'm like feeling the vibration of like all the instruments just like vibrating my entire bed. I can't, you know, I couldn't even sleep. It was just music all, all the time in my 20s. My friend, uh, I'm just... I had no plans to talk about 611 Florida. This is just an organic monologue here. I'm sorry if this is boring you. My friend, please uh, bring up any topic you'd like. I'll segue right into it for you. Again, I'm just trying to kill time. Try to be, uh, you know, somewhat interesting to listen to while having really nothing to do. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you know, let me, uh, let me get you in touch with Zach Galifianakis. I'm sure he can entertain you nonstop. You worked at the 930 club? No way. So cool. Yeah, I worked there from, uh, 2001 till 2009. Is that right? It was, yeah, 08 or 09. When when was the big economic like uh when the when the you know the economy sort of shit the bed there? 
was that 2008 or 2009 whenever that was that's when i that's when i left dc because i had to go somewhere new to live that i could afford <laughs> um well there you go my friend if you love zach galifianakis Imagine that this is a very long episode of Between Two Ferns, except there aren't any ferns. I'm not as funny as he is. And it's not a eight minute snippet on, uh, you know, on uh, this is like a three hour. Just uh, painful, cringy thing I'm doing. 2007, 2008. Oh, so, well, okay, well, let's just say 08 then. Uh, I can't even remember what I was talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's when I moved away from D.C. was in 08. But, yeah, I worked at the 930 Club. That's what you guys were talking about. Yeah, that, a, lot of, a lot of good memories there. A lot of interesting and unique uh, anecdotes and stories about working at a nightclub like that for that many years. David, I was living with you uh, while I was working there, right? David, did, did you ever take advantage of the fact that, you know, I pretty much let all my friends in for free to see whatever show they wanted? Hopefully you took advantage. I don't remember you having a whole lot of interest in, in going to the shows, though. I can't remember. Did you come to the shows much? Uh, when I lost my Virginia, Pittsburgh is nice and not too expensive, supposedly. Yeah, Pittsburgh, it's just, I don't know. Is there really any appeal about Pittsburgh when you can just stay in Baltimore? Get in the bar and the, yeah, the, 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 the back bar. Hanging downstairs in the back bar. Yeah. Not a music guy. Which is just crazy to say, David. You understand that, right? You understand that makes you a freak of nature to not be a music guy. It's music. Everybody loves music. We would hang out in the parking lot. Oh, when I would like uh, work out in the lot, you'd come by and just hang. God, man, I miss playing poker, man. I tell you what. I've just been getting back into just f f fooling around online with, uh, you know, play money. But, you know, where you get enough play money to where you're actually playing other people who are playing like it means something. Because even, even though it's play money, it's like 300 million in play money. And they're like, all right, we got like $50,000, $100,000 blinds here. So nobody's fooling around, just going all in with six, eight off suit. Man, I miss playing poker with you. I'm still going to shows as much as I can afford. That's another thing. God, just, man, that's why, again, I've always said I, I enjoy living a life where I make as little money as possible, but still do the things I want to do. And you know, working at the 930 Club was uh, a direct reflection of that. That was a minimum wage job. If not minimum wage, pretty damn close. Uh, and the hours were tough. And there was a lot of crap you had to put up with sometimes. But you also got to see free concerts all the time with, like, fantastic access and, of course, you got your friends, your bartender friends hooking you up with drinks. You know, I used to, I, I made fr friends with a guy that, you know, was like the head DJ where they had a rotation of DJs playing the music between the, the bands. And he'd let me do DJ sets. It was fantastic. Just, you know, everything you'd want to do while you're in your 20s. You know, living in the moment. The music scene it was a good time. Unfortunately, there was a lot of BS politics with uh, some of the staff there. Things didn't end amicably for me. I dated a chick that worked there. That is that is a fact. 
I mean, I worked there for almost eight years, and there is a lot of uh, staff. So it's almost, a, you know, it would be weird if I hadn't had one gr at least one girlfriend in that amount of time working there. Oh, you worked at Merriweather. Yeah, uh, you know IPP, 930 Club, and the, uh, or is it IMP? I'm sorry, IMP. I'm starting to lose all my memory now. Jesus Christ. But yeah, uh, uh, the the bookings, uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it was under the same booking uh, agency or whatever. The 930 Club and Meriwether Post uh, like would collaborate for some of those uh, festival shows. I can't remember the name of them, though. So there's a lot of people that you guys probably would see around, you know, Ed, Chad. I mean, if you guys are, yeah, veterans of going to 930 Club, Meriwether Post. Uh, what were the other venues? What's the one Baltimore venue that was tied in with IMP? I can't even remember anymore. It's been so long. I'm so out of, I mean, IMP Productions. I, I, I do have this right in my head, right? This is, yeah, 930 Club, Merriweather Post. Yeah, so this is all tied in together. So, yeah, if, if you were at Merriweather Post, a, a lot of times our, our staff would work the shows there. It'd be the same staff working uh, at Merriweather. I didn't do a whole lot of working at Merriweather myself because I just, you know, I, I lived one block away from the 930 Club. So, again, I like to live a lifestyle where I lived on the cheap. I had a car, but eventually crapped out on me because DC rats decided to make it a nesting home. But I lived like five minute walk from the club. So I worked there, never really went out to the Merriweather unless it was something going on that I wanted to actually see for myself. All right, I know I'm boring the absolute pants off you guys. If this thing isn't getting started like in the next 20 minutes, I, I don't know what to do. I mean, the mission statement of this channel is cover every Orioles game this year. So until I know this game is washed out, I can't just abandon it. But what am I supposed to do? Constantly check in? I'm supposed to be sleeping. I'd love to just maybe sit over here and maybe play the show, play my PlayStation, but with all this gear hooked up to the monitor, uh, you know, the logistics, uh, you know, suddenly, oh, first pitch is five minutes from now, and now suddenly I'm going to, yeah, I'm, just, I'm stuck. I'm stuck right now. Help me. Hey, does anybody want to get on my Discord? It's a uh, for a different uh, channel, but I'll take a live uh, call in from anybody if you want to just chat it up. David, do you want to have a chat? David, you could be talking to me right now, voice to voice. You ready to get on the air? Put some elevator music on and come back if the game comes on. Incubus, Sublime, The Cure. Man, The Cure are still out there on tour, man. Robert Smith, man, every time I see Robert Smith, I'm like, man, dude, just call it a day, man. You are looking haggard. You are looking rough, my dude. But, uh, you know, good on him for still playing. You know, You know another band that's really tough for me to see anymore? I think they I think they finally this year said we're we're done doing shows, but I've seen some of the recent concerts they've done cuz I'm a huge fan. Uh the B52s, which when I say I'm a huge fan of the B52s, I know a lot of people will go, "God, what kind of taste in music do you have?" Well, look, I've got a, an eclectic taste, okay? And for me, when it comes to party music, just fun, you know, happy fun 
party music. I love the B-52s. I just love the attitude. I love the, uh, I, I, I love the vibe. But, uh, man, they are like all in their 70s still trying to act like they're 25, and it's hard to look at. <laughs> it's not. Where's my umbrella? Hey, that's a nice uh, pull. That's a, uh, what is that, Channel Z? Get nothing but static. Get nothing but static. Static in my attic from Channel Z. Speaking of Channel Z, how would I just call another game that's on right now? How about that? I'll just find another game that I can watch and just call it. Come on. Where's my umbrella? Dead Beat Club. Yeah, this is getting depressing, isn't it? Oh, you're talking about, yeah, old rock star depressing. Yeah, because, yeah, because the thing is, like, when they were in their prime, you, you, you know, and they sort of have that captured moment, whether it's a music video or, a, like, a live performance or something where it's like, wow, that is their... That is them in their prime and they're young and they're just, they can hit all the notes and the energy and just, just knowing like in the context of like their place in music history, like the, the, their, the, the building up of, of, and then, and then the time goes on and then, you know, it just every for you know, it just happens. You know, musicians, bands, just uh, you know, you just can't write a hit record uh, forever. You know, I don't know. It's tough. At the third inning, I'll be on call with you, Cam. I need a call right now. Pure, I need a call. Fitz, I need a call. Will somebody please? Can we have a conversation so it's not just me talking into a microphone? It's killing me right now. I mean, I know that's what I do in my other stream, but I have, like, stuff to react to, and it makes sense. Right now, I'm just talking. <laughs> Somebody, please, get on the, get on the Discord and uh, let's talk some baseball. Come on. You'll be home in five minutes. All right, Cam is on the way. Cam, don't uh, don't break any laws. All right, but yeah. Hey, maybe maybe. Hey, Fitz. Oh, Fitz, you know how to do it. Okay, Fitz, let's go. Get on the Discord, man. Good lord, I'll help you promote your channel. Okay, we'll just make this a promote Fitz's channel call. Let me get rid of some of these tabs here. Where do I go to find you if you're gonna make a phone call? You and Fitz, all three of us together. Don't forget weed and dogs. That's my life. Melanie, yeah. You're, you're, you're checking all the right boxes. I tell you what. Do you like A24 movies? Because uh, if that's the case, I might have to put a ring on that finger. I tell you what. Hey, we're going to have a call here in a moment, I think. I don't know. This should be good. I would tell hey guys, I would tell you about my other channel. It's just uh it's nuts. I got a weird weird sense of humor. I got a Baltimore kind of sense of humor and it is uh it reflects on my other stream. Melanie, you, Melanie, you're on the other stream, right? You're not finding me here first, right? Have you been my other stream? The uh, the home shopping thing? I think you'd have fun over there. Uh, I just I can't remember if you've are, if you're already over there or not. I have to consider the lag and the fact that I might not get a response for quite some time. Oh, Melanie, you have a channel yourself? Well, shoot. 
What's going on with you? I already got one, but you'll take another, another channel. Oh man, the lag is terrible. Oh, you're talking about like like a boyfriend? Well, Melanie, you can still have me as a boyfriend because I'm all about long distance relationships. You know. I can uh, do what I want. It, it's a very open, long-distance relationship. We are free to see other people. <laughs> and uh, we'll probably uh, never see each other. We can call on the group chat for me, you, Steve. I Yeah, I don't know what you want me to do. I'm just standing by waiting to be told what to do. You know? Just tell me where to go. Tell me who's setting it up. I can see right here, start a voice call. I've just never been the one to initiate anything. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'll, I'll hit it and see what happens. Oh, but you know what I need to do? I need to turn the desktop audio on. All right, that should... Let's see if anybody... Earth to somebody. I see. I see. Can you hear me? You are on the air. Speak. Let's go Orioles. What's that? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go Mets. Let's go. I swear you're going to say let's go Orioles and then you just switch to Mets. Let's go Mets. Okay, I said Orioles for your channel, but for me it's the Mets. Oh man, I'm having trouble hearing you, man. It's a little Yeah, and um two minutes I'll draw in back. I'm I'm going to be home. Oh, you, you you got a better uh, mic, and you're just on a crappy mic. All right, call me back when yeah. you got a better mic, man. Okay. Bye. All right. All right. Yeah, that's not gonna work. I I couldn't understand a, a goddamn thing. Whoops. Sorry, my language. <laughs> Let's go, Matt. And there's my uh, first interview, folks. I feel like Dick Cavett. I tell you what, I really know how to run a program, don't I? Oh, boy. Checking in on uh, the Twitter here. For the love of God. Uh, that is Cam. Uh, Cam is uh, here in chat. Apparently, he's driving home. Cam was on another uh, sports stream. Cam's been following my uh, other channel for a while. After I started rooting around these other sports streamers. And then ever since I started this channel, Cam's been hanging out. So good to have Cam around. Oh, boy. Hey, you know what? I never did go over the Royals lineup. So if this game were to ever begin, this is how they would hit. Michael Garcia... Am I saying it right? M A I K E L M O U S E. Michael Garcia leads off and plays third base like he did last night. Bobby Witt Jr. bats second, plays short. Vinny Pascatino's the DH hitting third. Salvador Perez plays first base, bats cleanup. MJ Melendez in left field. Hunter Renfro in right field. Adam Frazier bats seventh, second base. Uh, Fermin is the catcher, and Kyle Isbell bats ninth, plays center field. Uh, Cole Reagans, the Royals' sort of de facto ace, sort of their best young, talented pitcher. Uh, you know, still a lot of room to grow. But, uh, yeah, that's their ace. We got our ace. Gunner, Adley, Mounty, Tony Taters. Westy, Hayes, Mateo, McCann, Urias. My audio on my phone is not working so good. In five minutes, I will be back. My game might... Thomas, I thought you were jumping in on this call. Get in here before you start because I don't... Cam, I think Cam's phone's going to be a problem. Where the hell are you? I'm calling you. Gosh darn it. Say hi to my uh, audience. Look, 
Look at this. I got two people blowing me off. If I wanted this kind of experience, I'd go back to high school. I'll be back in five minutes. I'm driving home. All right. Well, I think in about five minutes, I'm about to run down to the 7-Eleven because... How the hell? This stinks. Oh, God, man. And again, the Pittsburgh games, two games in a row, 3 a.m. start times. How, how do you do that? You can't go to bed early enough. You can't wake up early. And oh, God, there's Fitzy. In about Fitzy. five minutes, I'm about to. Hey, I can hear me again. 7 Eleven. Uh oh. Are we going? Stinks. Are we going God, cameraless? Man. And again, the Pittsburgh games, two games in a row, 3 a.m. start times. How, how do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I, I don't know what's happening. In about five minutes, I'm about to. Hey, I can run hear down. me again. 7 11. Folks, we're just uh, doing a little bit of testing here. Don't mind us. Uh, site again, under construction. Games, two games in a row, three a.m. start times. How, how do you do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just listening. <laughs> I'm just listening to me complain oh, about God. the goddamn start times. I don't know what's happening. In about five minutes, I'm about to. Yeah, come down again. I'm <laughs> Three a.m. start time. All right, I'm done. It's just, it ain't working. I don't know what's happening. Wait, join call. Oh, is this it now? Hello, Fitz. Hey. Are you there? Yeah? How you doing? I'm doing good, buddy. How are you? Uh, Just getting ready for my game in about an hour-ish. Hour-ish. Yeah, you're out in Oakland there. You're looking to sweep. Uh, what was yep. it? Five errors you, you were handed, uh, last night? Not last night, the night before on Monday. Uh, Monday was the five errors. Okay. So, uh, and what's, uh, what's the attendance looking like when you're watching the game there? Uh, there's probably more people in your chat than there are in the stadium. <laughs> that might be true. I didn't think about that. You know, that's that's that is a potential claim I could make. My channel pulls in more people than the Oakland Athletics. That's kind of funny that I say that. Kinda. Hey, uh, what you got going on there, Fitz? Uh, I tell you what. While you're here, let me go ahead and uh, throw your link into the uh, chat here, because. Oh, sure. That'll be nice. Fitz here uh, just hit 1,000 subs uh, a few days ago. Uh, he's a young man. Young man with uh, aspirations and talent. Yeah, he's special. He's not like me. He's not old and bitter. He's young and full of piss and vinegar. So why don't you throw him a bone, head on over that link, since we're sitting around waiting for a ball game that ain't starting yet. Toss this dude a sub, and why don't you hit the like button on whatever live stream that hasn't started yet. I'm sure he's got a thumbnail up. I know I'm asking a lot of favors. You don't have to do all of them. But if you do one of them, it'll make Fitzy happy. Hey, Pure. Pure's here as well. I might as well kill two birds. Speaking of killing two birds... Hold on. I got to get something real quick. Yo, let's see what up. Wait, we got Cam in here now. Okay, it's officially a party. Hold on. I'll have to hold off on my Pure Adrenaline Sports uh, plug because Cam is now here with a better sounding phone. Cam, speaking of Pure Adrenaline Sports, uh, PAS, if you're still here, I got to tell it. I got to tell you guys, I enjoy the, uh, the uh, chemistry you two guys have. Uh, I think I think it's uh, I think you guys have something going on there. Who's chemistry? Who's chemistry? Oh. Cam and uh, and and Johnny uh, P A S. Oh, 
They're they're calling games together. What what was it? The uh, what was the game you guys were just doing? It's the other cam. Oh, it's oh, a different cam. <laughs> yeah, it's the different cam. That would, it's a different cam. That would make a whole lot of sense. Okay. That's a different cam. Yeah. Let's see how it's time straight. That makes so much sense now. <laughs> Oh, oh, Betsy, how is school? I'm not in school. I'm sitting in my tent. Oh, my God. It's a different cam. That makes so much sense. Sitting here talking with temporary, or excuse me, bird watcher, while drinking an A&W root beer. Great yeah. times. Good times with an A&W. All right. Oh, I got more. I got a 12-pack sitting on my mini fridge. I'll go get some. A 12 pack of of root beer. All right. Yo, fifty. One second. I just have to let my dogs out. Good. Good luck with with those kidneys down the road. Oh, I got two 12 packs. Uh, bird watcher. So, I got. I got two of them. There you so go. I, Sending you I subs. Like Cause I'm. A, that's the kind of guy I am. I'm a giver. Ooh -hoo. Ooh -hoo. So, uh, Cam and uh, Fitz, why don't, since you're on this uh, Baltimore Orioles dedicated channel, where it's Baltimore Orioles 24-7, why don't you guys give us your thoughts on uh, just uh -oh. how fantastic this team truly is? Well, last year was pretty good for them. Um, <laughs> I don't know if they're going to win 100 games again, but I think they're in contention okay, for the division. Apparently, they're going to run for the division. But I don't know if they're going to win, what was it, 101 games last year? That's right, 101. So maybe I think they regress maybe like a few games. Maybe they win like 98, 99, but still win 100, but still win the division. And maybe win a playoff game. Yeah, uh, I think that's a fair uh, that's a fair prediction. I I don't expect to win a hundred games back to back simply because even really good teams it's hard to do. Uh, and uh, a lot of times, I mean, we won, we won a lot of one run games last year. Uh, a lot of close yeah. ball games. I think we had a record of something like twenty six and twelve in one run games or something oh, crazy. Dog. That's a little bit crazy to replicate. So Exactly. So if you take a record like 26 and 12 in those situations and make it a little more normal, like, say, 20 and 15, suddenly now you're not a 101-win team, you're a 97-win team. So it's, a very, it's very easy to see how the Orioles can still be as good of a team as they were last year and maybe even better because of Corbin Burns, but still not – reach 100 wins and uh with the yeah. yankees you want, hey, you want some my dogs say what's what? that cam you want some my dogs do i want some more dogs i you said want... you want some my dogs oh maybe do hold I want... on i gotta get something quick do i want <clears> some <throat> of... what's the question i said i'll show you my dogs I can't understand Cam. Thomas, what is Cam asking? Look, that's my dog. He wants to show you your do his dogs. Okay, so like right pets. in the middle of a sentence talking about baseball, you just wanted to interject, you want to show us your dogs. Yeah. You didn't bother to wait for like a natural pause in the conversation. You just kind of no, just kind of shoe, just, just shoehorn that right in there. Is, but, is that what we're doing? Here's my question. Here's my question, temporary. Um, since you're an Orioles fan, like, how are you thinking about this year? I know you're. Was it three and two in five games? Yeah, so three what you and two. About uh, that's right a six hundred winning percentage, and that'll get you in the playoffs every year. And five games is not enough to have any sort of 
overreaction one way or the other. I'm I'm fine, but I do want to win this game if we play it because the difference between going four and two versus three and three in a six game homestand to start the season against two teams that people expect to have losing records, that's a huge difference. You know, you go four and two, you feel like you did your job, but you go three and three, you know, that one difference in one game, suddenly uh, it feels like, uh, you know, you're not doing what you're supposed to. So that's, uh, you know, you play 162 games, but when you break it down series by series, uh, you know, that's what makes it uh, pretty dramatic, right? So one more thing. Um, I forgot to ask you on opening day, but how do you like, what's his name again, the new owner? I already forget the name. Like Rubenstein David or Rubenstein. something? David Rubenstein. What David are you thinking Rubenstein. about him? How do I like him? Uh, I love him. Yeah. I mean, when yeah. it comes to being a billionaire – uh, he seems to be more, uh, you know, of a approachable down to earth type of guy. He, he seems like, you know, whatever he did to make his billions, he's kind of passed that whole challenge in his life. And now he just wants to turn his attention to something that's more of a passion project. And, uh, that's the perfect situation. A guy with a lot of money who uh, is from the area and uh, wants to invest in a team that he sees a lot of talent in. And, uh, you know, you got these extra partners that are included. I, I It's, it's going to be great for this organization. It's going to revitalize uh, uh, the whole organization and maybe the community, you know. So it's a lot of positive, uh, positive stuff for the future. I'd like to know higher. I've liked it. Say I mean, again? I've liked the new owner so far. You like the new I've owner. liked the new owner. Yeah, I mean, I didn't he, really it, it's not like he's done a whole lot of uh, press or whatever. There's only a few interviews out there where, where you can really – there's actually a pretty nice long interview on the Ryan Ripken uh, po- podcast, uh, Son of Cal Ripken, Ryan Ripken. If you look him up on uh, YouTube, he's got a channel. He's got a long interview with uh, the owner and Cal there together where they get a little candid and you get a little more of the, you know, again, candid, non-scripted, non, you know, press conference yeah. sounding uh, conversation from this new owner. And again, he's uh, he knows a lot about Orioles history. And uh, yeah, I'm, I got a lot of, uh, a lot of optimism. By the way, guys, if you oh. check the chat, I stuck in uh, the link to Pure Adrenaline Sports as well. So give him a sub as well uh, while we have the chance. What else is yeah, on your David mind, is. guys? Um, I just saw something for the LLB that um, Julio Tehran is talking with my Mets. Uh, Thomas, could you translate that one for me? Julio Tehran, the uh, Orioles player during spring training. He's playing uh-huh. with my Mets. Something with the Orioles, an Orioles player playing with the Mets. Which player? Julio Tehran. Oh, Julio Tehran. Oh, Julio Tehran. Tehran didn't wind up making the final roster, I don't think. Uh, is uh, Sean, st- uh, who am I looking for? Who am I looking yeah, for? Yeah, David here? in France. I hope, I hope, uh, yeah, Angelos was kind of like a little bit of Snyder. Dan Snyder, in my opinion, but uh, maybe a little bit better than Dan Snyder. <laughs> David in chat said uh, something about reading the Quran. <laughs> oh, he said something about hoping Dan Julio oh. Tehran. No, Julio Tehran. No, David was just joking, but it's just funny because that's <laughs> the Quran. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Space man. Okay. Hey, what's going on, Space? They're going to make the playoffs this year. Who's making the playoffs? Mets. Mets ain't making the playoffs. All right. They're optimistic. Cam, can I ask you a candid question right now? Yeah. How, how many marshmallows are in your mouth at the moment? None. How many? None. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, just <laughs> just making sure. It might it might be a I'm, microphone thing. I don't know. I just I, I'm I'm a little uh, a 
little tough to to pick up pick up your so, mic on my man. end. Fitz can hear you okay, I guess. Yeah. All right. Hey Cam, you said you're gonna see. This is why I got confused about the other Cam, uh, Fitz, because Cam, the Cam who I'm talking to right now, you've been talking about starting a. Uh, a sports stream uh, channel yourself, and then I see Pure doing a stream, and I see a guest, and his name is Cam, and I'm like, oh, so there's Cam. So he's already collaborating, but that's not you. Well, that's, it's another guy. I'm, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cam does I'm, mock draft. Yes, today. And apparently you guys are way louder than me. Hold on. Why am I why am I letting you guys be louder than me? That's no good. Uh Yeah, so I was completely uh thrown off there. Uh So Cam <laughs> When when is your uh, channel going up, man? Cuz we've already Probably got next next weekend since I have next weekend. Huh? This What's... weekend, so next weekend. You got like a first uh, game you're doing already lined up? Yeah, I'm going to do a map. What's, what's the game? Matt. Matt? Matt. Matt. Mets. Yeah, he's uh -huh. doing the Mets apparently. Mets versus... I'm trying to give you a plug here for Christ's sake. Who are the Mets playing in your first game, dude? I need to see. You need to see. Yeah. All right. So you're starting a brand new channel next week, covering the Mets, playing you don't know. All right. Wait. Actually, I can't do the Mets game since I don't have coverage for it. Oh, well, that's kind of vital to the whole running a channel Sorry. thing. So I'm probably gonna do um <laughs> Yeah. All right, well I suppose uh yeah. Hey Birdwatcher, one thing real quick. Yeah, please, Thomas, please take the floor, please. You know there's some games like on Friday night they do like Apple TV. Are you guys are you gonna stream those games or what are you going to do about those games that are on Apple TV? All I can do is uh, find what games I can uh, get access to. And if there's no access, then I'm screwed. But last year, I I got access to Apple TV games. All I can say is there's some perks to living in a foreign country. That's all I can kind of say. So, temporary or bird watcher, my bad. I forget. You're on, I'm on your different channel. Oh, but, you, can, uh, you can call me by either handle. That's fine. You sent me a thing that's saying Corbin Burns is going to play against Boston. That's is right. That actually... Ah, crap. That's not good. Yeah, I, I'd forgotten that this Pittsburgh uh, series was wedged between this Kansas City series and when we play you guys. So I was just counting off the games in my head, and I'm like, well, Burns is going to pitch this last game against the Royals. In my head, I thought we were playing you guys next. So I thought, yeah, no Burns for you. But uh, then I was like, oh, wait a minute. You guys are on a 10-game road trip to start the season? That math doesn't work out. Yeah. And so, like 10 games. yeah, we'll get you. You'll be getting Corbin Burns and Grayson Rodriguez and probably, you know, hey, it's not a bad trade off because you're going to get a number five guy, Cole Irvin as well, in all likelihood. So you'll get our one and two, but then you'll get our five. That's not bad, right? Yeah. The only game in that series I won't be able to cover is, of course, the home opener game, which sucks. The Red Sox home opener. What? Be, what? Because of uh, academic uh, commitments. Yeah. Isn't that worth calling in sick for, man? People I know at my school know I do live streams, and they're gonna instantly call me out on it. 
Well, then they can instantly understand why you're doing it. <laughs> I mean, they know my they know my ego, which is basically like I'm not gonna skip school for really anything, especially a baseball game. So, but it's opening Steve, I, day. I know. That's the Mets schedule. They play the Orioles in August. The Mets play the Orioles in August. All right. Is that uh, in New York or in Baltimore? New York. In New York. City Field. All right. Hey, maybe I'll, uh, if I'm back in the uh, in the country there, I'll head on up to City Field for a Mets game. Meet the Mets. Be- greet the Mets. Step right up and beat the Mets. Yeah. Actually, beat the Orioles. Oh, uh, ooh. that's beating the Orioles. That, ooh, ooh, that was. Did you hear that sick burn chat? Came right back with actually beat the Orioles. Well, you did in '69. You did beat us uh, somewhere around when man landed on the moon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but to be fair, you yeah. guys won it in '86. And we haven't done much since '83. So, Hold on. Uh, Spaceman, who do, you, who do you guys play on? I'm just answering Spaceman's question in the chat, saying something about playing each other on April 29th. Uh, are we talking about Yankees Orioles? I do believe our first uh, matchup is on April 29th, uh, end end of Ooh. April. Uh, looking forward to that, Spaceman. Looking forward to getting at least one series out of the way without Garrett Cole in the equation. Uh, and Baltimore. Meanwhile, uh, I'm not sure where our minor league uh, slash injury report beat reporter is at the moment, but uh, reports are that Kyle Bradish and John Means are both uh, uh, on track to make uh, their – returns uh, without any setbacks so far. John Means might be back on the rotation in time for that series at the end of April. So if we can replace Cole Irvin in the rotation with John Means in time for the Yankees series, that's just one more extra bullet in our uh, chamber there. I'd like to... Spaceman, while you're... Oh, hold on, sorry. Spaceman, while you're still in chat... Um... Do you know when Garrett Cole is coming back? Space I can't. Be- I can't believe Jeffrey or Jeffrey Mayer is being brought up. David, how dare you talk about Jeffrey Mayer? If there's one person who will be the cause of an instant ban in my chat, it's that Jeffrey Mayer kid. Who is Jeffrey Mayer? He's a or- eleven year old dork who uh, had. Uh, seat at the railing uh, in the f- short porch and right at Yankee Stadium when Jeter hit a fly ball uh, that Tony Tarasco was standing under waiting to catch. Oh. <laughs> and this stupid kid stuck his glove out, caught the ball, you know, and it's the playoffs, so you got an umpire down the right field line. He's like 15 feet away from the action doesn't see that this kid reached over when it's clear as day and uh, it completely turned the whole damn series around. Yeah, way worse than Bartman. Way worse than Bartman. Dave, Uh, I'm going to um, the Mets game on um, April 14th for Dwight Gooden's um, jersey retirement. April 14th, Dwight Gooden's jersey retirement. Yeah, that sounds like a good uh, a good game to cover. Oh, okay, Spaceman. Thanks for that. Fancy tell Spaceman to join a call if he wants. Maybe. Uh, what time is it? 51. Come again? I got <laughs> minutes. I got thirty. I can't minutes. believe I'm up all night. For I mean, if they better get this game in. You're tired. I know you don't. Did you check the radar? Like, is the Orioles network the last, keeping like somebody in chat said like an hour ago now that it stopped raining? Is it Melanie? Right, Melanie. How long has it been since you said it stopped raining? Melanie, you still around? I haven't heard much. 
Dave, David. <laughs> are, are you talking about Cam, David? Dave, the rain is off here at 7 p.m. He'll play at like 5 o'clock, so that's 4 a.m. for me. So that's another... That's another two hours. Are you, are you saying two hours? What am I supposed to do? Play Elevator so. Uh, what am I honestly supposed to do? I mean, I don't want to... Then I have to, like, make a whole new stream? What time is it in your local time again? Like, one fifty. It's almost 2 a.m. here. And, you know, I can't, like, take a nap. If I, like, try to take a nap... To wake up like two hours from now, I'm just gonna sleep through and miss everything. I, I got, I, I, you know, I, I gotta, I gotta ride this out until it's over, and then I'm gonna crash hard because the following day we have an off day, and I can just, you know, get get my sleep. But I'm trying I'm to just. I'm looking at the weather now. What's uh, that? Right now, I'm looking at the my weather app, like the Weather Channel thing. It says storms. Continuing through seven, potential for severe thunderstorms. That's all it says. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's all throughout the northeast. Uh, see, yeah, card saying take a power nap, set an alarm. I'm telling you, card. Half the time I do that, uh, either the alarm doesn't go off, or I hit the snooze or something, and I blow it. It's. I done. just wait it out. I usually do. What I, this is out. this is the only way I'm staying up is if I unplug this thing and I play my PlayStation uh, and play the show. I've got the show 24. I can play a couple of games, smoke a little pot, and I'll even have time to run down to the 7-Eleven and get a snack. But what do I do with the stream? Do I just let the stream run while I'm playing PlayStation? Yeah. I probably don't. I don't know. I'd probably just wait this thing out and see how long we go. I'd probably just wait it out a little bit. But I mean, I is, in terms of like getting maximum viewers, would it make sense to just end this stream and start a fresh one? Or do I just keep this one because it's already been out there thing. in the YouTube verse? I, I think keep I, this going. Probably just keep giving people updates like, okay, this is what we know and stuff like that. Okay. So I could so like, I, I could potentially like say I could put up you could like... buy show What's that? You could buy Elmo your show during stream. I heard during a stream. That's the only part I heard. No, you should buy your show during the stream. I'll play the show during a stream? Yeah, during the stream of the game. What what I was gonna do was just have a little note up here that says, uh, you know, like, "Hey, folks, uh, stream will be up for as long as the game has not been called off, and uh, you know, stand by, something like that." Yeah, that's what I would. That's what I've been doing, or hey, I, folks, what I used to do. Go, go ahead. Sorry, you guys talk. I'm just working. Go ahead. What I did last year was I just called another game. I just called another game. Just keeping tabs on another game. Like, I think I went into, like, two rain delays last year. I think one of them I called, like, a Rockies and Astros game just to kill off the time. So if you have, like, access to other games, maybe just... uh watch one of those and call play by play of that one kill some time was there a, was there a question at the end of that i'm sorry <laughs> well there was no question at that i was just stating like maybe call another game if you can oh call, call another game, game while i'm waiting oh you mean oh just switch to another baseball game that's on right now yeah i, I did talk yeah. about that yeah you could do that that's what i did a lot uh I'd rather just play the show. <laughs> yeah, Steve, can you play the only show on the stream or? Can I do what? Can you play the only show when the stream is still on or? No. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm, 
I'm not sure. Oh, Rays are playing right now, currently losing one nothing to the. Let me uh, see. Were they losing to David France? I'm gonna look at MLB games. Hey, right Melanie, you coming been... back? All right, Melanie, take a nap and come back. All right. I need, I, I need, this. uh, I need, uh, you know, a good lady here to keep all the guys here in check. Oh, I will. <laughs> what cam? Hey, uh, got some news. Whoop! I clicked on the wrong article. Got some MLB news here. If anybody wants to listen in. Yeah, you got some news. Go right ahead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna get stoned while you tell us the news. Okay, go right ahead. Uh, looks like uh, the Pirates trade their former number two overall pick, uh, Joey Bart, to the Giants. No, or he's pirate. going. He's or acquiring, going to... acquiring from the Giants. My bad, I read that wrong. I read that wrong. So. Wait, this is the first item. Joey. This is the first item you're reading, and you read it wrong. You're fired. No, I, I, I gl it glitched out for me for a quick second. So I. I read it wrong. All right. Take See, two. Um, Take two. That is uh, trade for former number two overall pick Joey Bart from Giants. Pirates adding catcher catching pool once again, at acquiring former two number two overall draft pick Joey Bart from the Giants. So they're acquiring him from the Giants, it looks like. I don't know much about him. Compared, he was compared to Buster Posey, so he was supposed to be the next Buster Posey in San Francisco. But apparently, he's not, since he just got traded. Yeah, I remember when I bought the show 22. Uh, I wasn't really following baseball, but it was the Shohei Atani version version of the show where it was like the first chance to have like a two way player. So I bought the game. And uh, wait, what's the player? Who's the player you were just talking about? Joey Bart. Yeah, Joey Bart. Yeah, I remember. In in, in the, the in the show twenty two, if you're the Giants, they got Joey Bart as like an A rated prospect. Uh that's like, you know, gonna be like you're saying, like whatever Adley Rutschman is now, like that's what Joey Bart was supposed to be like three years ago or something. It's supposed to be he was supposed to be the next uh Buster Posey in San Francisco, but he's not. Yep. Didn't happen. I mean, I would have liked to see him prosper, but I guess not. Wait, so are the Pirates going to release the catcher since they already have five catchers? Uh, they're probably just going to send one down to AAA. That's more than what I'm saying. Say, I would say they should send out Jason DeLay. And Jason DeLay is going to the IL. Yeah, so they should just keep... Henry Davis, Grindall, and Bart. Oh, the delay was going to the IL, and Colin Se Colin Selby was DFA'd to make room for the, on the forty man roster for Bart. So that's what it says it's, right now. It's definitely keep on um, Henry Davis in, in the major leagues. I don't know much about the Pirates, so I don't know much about them. All right. What else is going on in baseball? What's the latest on Shohei Otani? The floor is yours. I have not heard much about that, other than pure adrenaline joking about uh, New Balance commercials. Yeah. I have not seen one of those, so. Well, tell me, tell me this. Tell me if this makes any sense. All right. Like, okay, here's the deal. Uh, baseball or bet betting in America, I guess what, like seven years ago or five years ago. I don't know when it started It happened when I moved over here, but whenever it basically became legal in all but 12 States and you can just start making bets on your phone with an app and all that stuff. Like once that became available, if you want to bet on games, right? Whether you're Shohei or you're his interpreter, whether you're making two hundred million dollars or whatever, or you're just making two hundred grand, like wouldn't you, considering that your job has you on the road, 
half the year any well first of all half the year you can be wherever you want to be you can be hanging right. out in uh tahiti or whatever uh but then half the season you're on the road normally in a city that allows gambling so why would you even need an illegal bookie in california unless you were betting on something that you know was a huge no-no i.e betting on more than just football or basketball but betting on baseball doesn't that make sense it kind of does but i still don't know much about it i haven't heard much about it for the last week because all all this betting could have been done above board uh nothing would have been illegal you're allowed to bet on other sports if you're a baseball player and of course if you're a baseball player translator you can bet on other sports but uh why would you need to have a bookie that's illegal under the table in a state that doesn't allow it when you can just bypass it you know it's it's the same thing as before betting was you know on these apps if you wanted to go to vegas to gamble you didn't have to be a citizen of nevada to be allowed to gamble in vegas you just came from wherever and you just did your business it's the same deal you just and again with with the with the way they naturally travel around and or even even if uh otani just had uh just a friend put in a bet on DraftKings. maybe he's in a city where he can't put a bet in or whatever you know it, it all leads back to me that base it has to be baseball has to be involved and that's why they rush to cover all this stuff up because once the feds get it out there that there was baseball involved everybody involved is cooked because you know with the whole pete rose situation and the precedent that's been set when it comes to the ultimate no-no the ultimate taboo betting on baseball as an active player or manager or whatever you you have to take the face of baseball the the face of you know global sports almost at this point and basically ban them for life or else we're sitting around like a bunch of hypocrites here right that's my Which take is why I, I have a question for you sorry. i'm sorry what, cam, uh, what, what's therapy. what's cam's take cam the floor is yours i need to finish rolling a joint it's a, it's about our sport see what um premier league did you came did you right right for huh I saw in your um, description that you wrote for the uh, Premier League team. Oh, you looked up one of my old Premier League articles? Yeah. What, what from team? What, what year? Uh, I was looking at all of them. What year did you do it? Uh, I was working uh, from what? Let's see. I guess it stopped in 2023. I guess 2013 to 2013, 2014, something like that, till 2023. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I liked all of your articles. Oh, well, thank you. I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun promoting the sport to, you know, an American audience that I felt, you know, deserved to be exposed to the best in global soccer because... You know, until uh, like Fox Sports and uh, NBC uh, started uh, running Premier League games and other European leagues, the only exposure Americans had to football was MLS or whenever the World Cup would come around. And of course, when the World Cup would come around, it was fantastic. It's what made me a huge fan of the sport when I was a kid because that uh, that's why I feel like most Americans never really gave that sport a chance for so long because they just never really got to see the best players play with any sort of consistency. And you're sitting there watching yeah. the domestic product, which let's face it, like in the eighties or early nineties, it, it was garbage. Now MLS is growing to the point where, you know, it's starting to get competitive. Uh, it's nowhere near like the top 10 or 12 
European leagues or even the, the Argentinian league, the Brazilian league. But it is now, you know, starting to attract players that, that aren't coming over there just because they're at the end of their careers or, you know, hangers on or whatever. There's actually guys playing in their prime now in the, in the MLS. And uh, it's been, it, was a, it was a fun time in those 10 years uh, watching the sport grow in the States. I don't know if you guys have yeah. ever been to a live uh, football match or a live soccer match with like a professional, like really good, you know, matchup. But uh, the the atmosphere is electric, especially if you catch it in the UK. It's a it's a fun sport. Yeah. Wait, Steve, you want to know something? Huh? Your Capitals are doing very good this season. My Capitals aren't doing very good. They are. The Washington Capitals, your team. Yeah, let me let me address David here in the chat. Uh, first of all, I haven't really been following hockey. I've only gotten really back into following the Orioles hardcore last year be- after, because you know working uh, for NBC Sports and writing about the Premier League, you know, I'm covering an English sport that's a completely different time zone, and then I live over here, and then all the sports like I'm trying to cover now, or on in the middle of the night back in the States. So I basically had to stop watching hockey. I had to stop watching basketball. I had to stop watching football. Uh, so I, I lost a lot of, uh, of my knowledge. So I'm, 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 a little, uh, I'm a little wet behind the ears, or what, what's the expression? I don't know. But uh, what, what's going on with the... What were you asking me? Oh, the Capitals? Yeah, I, I have no idea. What are they doing? Are they going to go to the playoffs or not? Yeah, they probably are. Well, then what's the problem? All you got to do is get in the playoffs and then you get hot. That's the whole thing with hockey. Get into the playoffs and then it comes down to whoever's goalkeeper is hottest and there's your uh, Stanley Cup winner. So, Well, Steve, I have to go. I have to go do stuff. So. All right. Take it easy, Cam. Bye. Bye bye. Cam, ladies and gentlemen. Uh I understood about eight words in the past half hour, but he was here. And I now understand the difference between this cam and the other cam who I thought was this cam. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I learned so something. Got any other up- on your, uh, you got any other updates on your Orioles? Orioles on updates. On- uh, let's see. Uh, oh, CNL Perez. Uh, he came out of the game early a night or two ago. Uh, he had an abdominal strain. And uh, according to Rock on Twitter, uh, he's going to be back throwing off a mound in a couple of days. Probably will be able to avoid any sort of uh, DL uh time so that's good news and of course dean kramer uh sean's back in chat good to see you sean sean reported on kramer he had to come out of the game in his start uh maybe earlier than they wanted to uh because his non-throwing arm had some sort of soreness but uh he reported uh directly to ryan ripkin that uh everything's okay there so yeah no injuries right now. We're a healthy squad. That's good. Except I still think Cedric Mullins uh, is not 100% fit. And, again, but with that being the case and the fact that we don't really have a legit center fielder to replace him in the lineup, uh, I feel like that's a concern that not enough Oriole fans or people covering the Orioles are talking about right now. That's a uh, huge spot, you... you know. Center field's a big spot. I know you were talking about, like, what was it earlier? Like, Ramon Urias, do you still want him on the team? or do you No, want him, like... nobody wants him on the team. The thing is, Ramon Urias is, can be a valuable player for a lot of teams out there, whether it's a, as a starter or for maybe a better team as a bench uh, player. But the fact is, he offers nothing that, no, that, that another player that we already have can't offer better. Uh, pretty much gotcha. one, pretty much once Jordan Westberg, uh, established himself with the team, 
it sort of made Ramon Urias, uh, you know, redundant because Westberg pretty much does Urias things, only better, and plus he's got a higher ceiling. He's younger. Uh, just, yeah, there, there's, there, you know, you think about something like, well, Urias is right-handed. Can't you find him that maybe a – Maybe you platoon him with uh, Holiday, you know, and Holiday sits against lefties and you start Urias. But Urias hits right-handed pitching better than left-handed pitching. So it's not even like you can use him as a pinch hitter against a left-hander or anything. It's, there's nothing really to use him for. Get rid of him. Right. You think Next you'll question. just like... <laughs> What's that? I know this is probably from like a couple of years ago, but uh, it's something about Camden Yards. How do I word it? Whoa! What you happened? like everything, Go ahead. right? No, just my you... my chat. Uh, every I guess my uh, something something touched my touchpad, and now my chat is blowing up like eight hundred percent size. I'm trying to fix it. Go. I'm sorry. Start over. I uh, go ahead. That left field wall you got in uh, Camden Yards, like what do you guys call it, Baltimore or something? Whatever yeah, you that's call that. uh, that's sort of the nickname. Yeah. What do you think about that? Like, as a hitter's perspective, what do you really think about I that? I think it's one of the most intelligent things a baseball organization has ever thought to do. Because, you know, first of all, Camden Yards is one of the finest. Uh, sports facilities in all of the world. I'm sorry. It's a cathedral. I love Camden Yards, all right? But it was a band box for hitting. And, you know, year after year, when free agency would come around and we're like, man, we need to go out there and sign a frontline starter. We need to go out there and get a frontline starter. And we, I'm telling you, nobody wanted to come pitch there. Even in the years where we had, like, you know, a playoff, you know, potential sort of team. We Nobody wanted to pitch there because they knew, you know, it's like nobody wants to go, you know, pitch for the Rockies. I mean, it's not as bad as that, but, you know, it's probably the next least desirable place to pitch, you know, if you don't want to get sit there and give up cheap home runs. So they moved the wall then, back. Yeah. They moved the wall back once uh, we realized that we've got no talent. So the only way we're going to beat teams is to sort of play fundamental baseball, you know, scratch runs across because, we, you know, we're not going to hit – we're not going to out-homer the opponent. we got, we got to find other ways to win. And the next thing they did was say, all right, well, if we move the wall back in left field, we can't do anything about right field because there, there's a scoreboard. That's that, – you can't do anything about that. So – where can we uh, increase, like, sort of a more defensive approach? You got left field out there. All right, so now we've increased left field. What do we do? Let's start signing and drafting left-handed hitters and build a left-handed hit, uh, heavy lineup. That way you don't have to worry about right field, but the opponent still does. At least, you know, more often than not, we got more left-handers in our lineup than the, than the opponent does. And it it's a strategy that's – clearly paying off it's a it's a stroke of genius and i wish i can get my right. chat working so i could see the comments with everybody nodding in agreement i'm gonna have to just hit refresh on this hold on let me let me see it let me try it this way so yeah i i love the idea you know i mean everybody always wants to oh i want more home runs i want more offense i don't know about you but the orioles play an exciting brand of baseball and part of the reason is just having that one little extra something different and that's a giant left field it's almost like the fucking polo grounds out there sorry i just dropped my first f-bomb of the night ah, it was bound to happen it is sort of polo grounds but I mean, you got your little, I mean, it kind of resembles, uh, how do I say it? It's a little bit of the green monster, but just farther out. Like, what is it, 398 feet or something to left center field? I don't know if you know the dimensions. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 deep, but then it's also an extra, you know, like instead of being a seven-foot wall, it's like a 15-foot wall. Yeah. I, 
I've kind of liked it. It was kind of, like, interesting to me. Like, whoa, nice-looking wall out there. But <sighs> I always hated going into Baltimore, not just because of well, that. Now, because of your great team last year. I don't want to play them again. But hey, we get to play them in Boston this uh, to open up the home opener. So, what a great test be a great test well i tell you what you still with me yeah i'm here i'm listening uh i, I just got my awesome. chat back up and working and the funny thing is uh why does he change topics every time he talks is that the other cam I mean, you're talking about pure i'm oh, so yeah. i'm so embarrassed about mixing up these two cams I'm so embarrassed. One, one cam uh, uh, really uh, has a nice uh, rapport with uh, Johnny. I got a few, and and I heard the other cam talk on Discord before, and I was sitting there going, "How are you the same guy?" Well, it turns out it's not the same guy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, uh, Cam sure knows is a good guy, or at least when I'm on stream with him, he's a good guy. So the the other Cam, yeah, the Cam on Pure Adrenaline's stream, like yeah, Cam well, that was calling the game last night. Well, yeah, well, did he have his own channel or what? Uh, I don't know. To be honest with you, I don't know. I would assume if he, if he did, he, that Johnny would have promoted it or something but all right so it's a whole I'd different like cam i didn't realize i i've never known a cam in my life until the one cam and now i've got two cams confused hey it's okay i know like five cams so what and don't mind me our watchers our watchers shocked that i know like uh, i think it's four cams go because i can hear you walk away from your mic yeah i uh you know i've realized what a gigantic uh you know cluster f of a stream this is gonna be tonight and i'm probably gonna walk away from the camera and run down to the 7-eleven for something for, you know because i got nothing in terms of snacks or anything The plan what? was the game started for me at midnight and would run to maybe 2.30, 3 a.m. And then I'd go to sleep, wake up like at 8 a.m. and get my breakfast and do my other stream at 9 a.m. But now, where is the sleep coming? I don't know when I'm sleeping. Probably sleep. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. Still haven't heard on it. From the I got a feeling I'm going to crash and I'm not going to wake up in time for my other stream tonight and I'm going to make those people unhappy. And I think they're already getting unhappy with me because they can tell that this channel is getting a little bit of a buzz while that channel has sort of been stagnant and just sitting there festering for months now, not really growing very much. David and France asked you a good question in the chat. I don't know if you saw it. Any hot girls in my building? David, pick a floor. Are you kidding me? In my building, in the next building, down the street, up the street, north, south, east, west. They're everywhere, dude. They're everywhere. Like, Anything imagine. On Imagine an American Walmart and then take the opposite end of the spectrum in terms of hotness. <laughs> and they're all over here. And the great thing about the ladies here is uh, they like to shop in their pajamas. It's so cute. 
Jeez. It'll be like 11 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, uh, you know, really? You're still, you're just out, just uh, picking up something to eat in your pajamas? And, it, and it's like, you know, the full, like, Ebenezer Scrooge type pajamas. You know what I mean? Anyway. No wonder over there. Hey, David, that ain't the only reason, but it certainly doesn't hurt. It looks better over there. Might be better better weather, maybe. Other, I wouldn't probably go over there because it's too hot for me. Too hot? It'd be a little too hot. I That's hate hot, hot weather, me. and yet it's hot here, and I still tolerate it because everything else is so good. Some things yeah, are what worth, is it? Some things are worth tolerating. It's like 83 degrees right now for you or something? It's 84 at 2 o'clock in the morning. And this is as cold as it's going to get. That's hot. <laughs> That's a little too hot. I mean, right now it's not even 50. I think it's supposed to be 49 for the high today. So. <laughs> yeah, what's weird is over here, it's the same weather all year round in terms of temperature. It's just whether or not it's rain season. So you don't really experience seasons. And when you kind of start losing track of time, uh, you wake up one day, it's April, and then the next day it's September, and, like, you're keeping in touch with your friends back in the States. And one day you're talking to them, like, yeah, it's really hot, you know? It's, like, 93 degrees, you know, you know, it's, like, July or whatever. And just a few months later, you're like, hey, what's going on? And you're like, I'm freezing my butt off. And I'm like, what? I thought you just said it was hot. Like, yeah, it's called season, Steve. Do you remember? Hey, Don, how you doing? Um, am I good after the earthquake? Yeah, I'm I'm absolutely fine, Don. And uh, it doesn't appear that uh, there's any ripple effects uh, <clears throat> from from the uh, aftershock that are going to reach me. Obviously, concerns for anybody in the path of the uh, aftershock of, of uh, that earthquake. Yeah, it's Taiwan, like not Thailand. But uh, still, you know, I was concerned, Card, because, again, you get tsunamis from earthquakes, you know? On, on these little island countries, uh, you know, it sends an aftershock. Uh, there were tsunami warnings along the Japanese coastline after the earthquake. I didn't expect it to reach all the way around to the Gulf of Thailand, but you never know. You never know. I mean... Water's got to shift from one direction to another when stuff happens, you know. Don't you Never... live in, like, where on Thailand do you live? Like the Gulf? I, I, and I, I live near the water. That's the only reason why I was concerned at all. You know, I was like, you know, because even if it was just a little swell of water, you know, like a 10-foot surge, I mean, that's going to flood, you know, the fir you know maybe like a half mile inland. And I, I live only about... A mile and a half, two miles inland. Mm, gotcha. But yeah, things, things should be fine over here. Everything okay here at uh, Camp uh, Casa del Steve or whatever. When the hell are we going to... Can we just get an update? I just want an update, please. You can't just leave fans out there in the lurch without an hour after... A, a two-hour... Since the last update. You still have the, uh, like, MASN or something on? Whatever the well, Orioles I, network I, I, is. I, I didn't even bother to bring up the network yet, the network feed. I haven't even bothered. I'm just waiting for, gotcha. I've got the, you know, the Twitter accounts that would report, you know, when the tarp is up and when they're going to estimate what the first pitch time is or when they're going to just say uh, the game has been called off, one or the other. But to have no update now for two hours by the uh, team, that's that's not good. You know, tell us something. Oh, my stream starts in like five minutes. So I'll still be here for a little bit, but 
probably in the next minute or two. I might have to start getting ready for my game. Your game's starting you in five minutes? Well, it starts at like 3.37, but I put the stream start time at like 3.30. All right. Well, you're probably going to want to go ahead and jump off at this point, right? I still got... Probably got another minute or two. I got the StreamYard tab up and ready, like the tracker and everything ready. So all I got to do is go live, the button, and go live. So I can stick around for another minute. All right, well, you spent a minute explaining that you got a minute left. So now what? <laughs> uh, how about another minute and a half? All right. All right. 90 seconds. The floor is yours, Thomas. What do you want to tell the whole world? The whole world's listening right now. Um, football world. Uh, Stefan Diggs has been traded. So anybody who follows football in your chat, tell them that Stefan Diggs got traded. Stefan Diggs got traded, everybody. We don't know who he played for, and we don't know where he went now, but he's been traded. Uh, Got traded. He was played with the Bills for the last few years. Uh, just got traded to the Texans. All right. Uh, Bill, Bills to Texans. And what's it? What, what position does he play? Uh, he was a wide receiver. Wide receiver. Okay. So that's a, like a fantasy. That, like that's the kind of transaction that has a ripple effect in the fantasy football community, right? Uh, yes and no. I mean, is he a decent fantasy option? Is he a decent player? He's a pretty good player, but over the last year, he's been, uh, how you say, um, a little bit of a baby. Like, you know, leaving the team practice facility and stuff like that. That's all I really know. Oh, much about wanna, him a little bit of a prima donna? Something like that. He's yeah, a good wideout. Another... Who's who's got time for prima donnas? For, I mean, unless unless you're Deion Sanders, you know, and just slow your roll. Be happy you're a pro athlete and enjoy the ride because it doesn't last long. All right, I think I'm gonna hop off for the day. But uh, thanks for having me on here, uh, Bird Watcher. Hey, you got it, Fitz. Uh, I hope uh, next time I have a rain delay, uh, you're around because. Uh, I need to figure out a way to kill some time. Yeah, well, <laughs> Pierre knows all about rain delays, so just ask him more. But uh, all right. Well, you have I a good get... you have a good stream today. All right. Yep. All right. Take it easy. Go Royals. Go go Royals. Did you say? I I'm wait. I'm sorry. You're cutting out. I didn't quite go Orioles. I think is what he said. I think he said go Orioles, ladies and gentlemen. That's Fitz, everybody. How'd the call go? I don't know. Is that, is that, I, don't, I don't care. Don't show me this again. Just, can I get out of here? I, I just, I have to answer something. Uh, volume was too low or high. One of the two. I don't know. Yeah, okay. All right, folks. Well, that concludes our interview segment of today's uh, broadcast. Uh, thanks to Thomas and to Cam for uh, appearing on the show. <laughs> now what do I do? God. All right, this is what I'm going to do, guys. God, this sucks. I'm going to... I have to. I have to. The only way this is going to work is if I go to 7-Eleven and get a latte and a snack. It'll get my body moving. I got to walk around. I can't just sit in this chair during a rain delay like for hours on end. I got to walk. So what I'm going to do is uh, just sort of keep the stream up. Uh, if you guys like to hang out, uh, I know there's not much reason to now, but I'm going to be back here in about 15 minutes. Uh, right back here talking to hopefully at least somebody as we wait patiently for word on when the Orioles or if the Orioles are going to play baseball today. All right. So again, I'll be back in about 15 minutes. Charles, Card, David, Pure, Don, 
Hang in there, guys. And, uh, yeah, let your boy uh, get a little bit of fuel in him so he can uh, take you all the way home tonight, all right? I'll stick around. I'll stick around. I appreciate it. Uh, a window opens in two hours. Yeah, everyone was talking about somewhere around 5 o'clock. Um, but here's the deal. Is it is that... Is that window, is that when the rain stops? Or are we taking the tarp off like a half an hour and then the window is then? Are we talking about a window and then a half hour wait after the window to get the dumb tarp off and the, the field ready? Or are we talking about first pitch two hours? Either way, it stinks. Hey, Sean, how you doing? I tell you what. Hey, you know what I'll do? I'm going to go get some food. I'm going to come back and uh, I'll pop into YouTube and look up uh, some old Orioles videos. Maybe I'll find some old comments I put on some. Old. Actually, there was a Brooks Robinson tribute video that was put out last year when he passed. And I left a comment on it and uh, got a lot of traction. It was a little, uh, a little love letter to old Brooksy. Maybe we'll take a look at that or... Some old highlight videos or something. Anything to, uh, you know, pass the time. Keep our eyes on the prize. Orioles baseball, that's what we're here for. First pitch, 5 p.m. established, Don. Established. Let me take a look at the old Twitter feed here. I mean, if that's the case, then I am going to be playing some... Uh, the show that mean you know what that means i could have just gone to sleep and woken up at 4 a.m to do the stream i could have just had a night's sleep i could have slept like 10 p.m to 4 a.m instead there will be no sleep Est estimated meant to say okay uh do you have a source for that because uh the o's themselves aren't saying it yet Up oh, here's a new here's a new a new photo. Fans asked to head undercover because of the threat of lightning strikes. It's been raining all day. Picked up in intensity a few minutes ago. That's the update. Are you kidding me? So it's only rained harder a few minutes ago, and there's lightning strikes and. There ain't a person in sight. What are they doing, man? Why didn't they just say, look, we're going to make it a night game? Like at one, you know, at noon. At noon, they were like, look, we're going to shoot for a seven o'clock start. And if it ain't happening, then, uh, you know, we'll make it up. But this just wait around and find out all damn day thing is really not cool for a lot of people how can you send me a picture uh i have a twitter account i can uh throw that up for you oops i'm already here what am i doing uh that's me There you go. Is it something you want to share with everybody else, Bill, or what? By the way, please don't let it be called lemonparty.org or something, okay? Oh, Don giving me the source, 105.7 The Fan. Thanks, Don. You don't use Twitter. All right. Uh, Discord? Uh... I don't know if you know about Discord, but you can put something right there if you're able. Uh, okay. It's a DP. David, you naughty, naughty, naughty boy. You naughty, naughty boy. David, is your poker game still good, man? You think if we played heads up, you could take me? One new message. There you go. Don's in. 
How you doing, Don? Sup? Uh, Don, by the way, this Discord is kind of designed for my other YouTube channel. Just so you know, the stuff you see on the boards here is uh, not really indicative of the baseball brand I'm trying to build over here. Haven't played in a long time. All right. You still know what beats what, right? Uh, I hate Discord. LOL. Love you, though. Hey, Don. See, what, what's your uh, platform of preference, Don? I mean, you don't do Twitter. You don't like this. We're already talking on uh, YouTube. Well, what are our other options? I'm, I'm not a Facebook guy. Not anymore. You and Brooks in 78. Well, where's the photo? Are you going to put it up here? Oh, that's Bill. Sorry. Bill, uh, Don is in. I don't know. Don, Bill, send it to Don, and then Don will send it. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, David, you have more than one kid? How many kids do you have? Oh, my God. Dude, we have not talked in too long. I probably I probably knew, but I got to admit I must have forgot. Three kids. Wow. Look at you. How old is the oldest? David's David's a tall drink of water. I'm just wondering if David's got a tall son yet. If he's got going to have another lurch in the family. Trying to have more if you find the right girl. Look at this guy. Well, maybe you need to come over here, buddy. I think you'll find the right girl here if that's what you're <laughs> If that's the uh if that's uh, a, a goal, you could you could do a lot worse. Almost eleven, nine, and seven. Okay, so the the growth spurt. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But usually one gene dominates another, and it changes from kid to kid. So you might have one super tall, one super short. Uh. Welcome, Don. We use it to send links. I don't have that yellow... F <laughs> oh, David, come on, man. What, what, are we, what are we doing here? Like, come on now. Are you trying to get me canceled here? You don't, you don't have uh, the love for all walks? There's beauty all over the world. All right. Maybe not Florida, but most of the world. Hold on a sec. Uh, second son Luke is going to be pretty big, you think. There you go. All right, well, start getting him into a... Does he like any sports? I'm telling you, if he's going to be anywhere near as tall as you, you got to get him into a sport. I'm not saying pressure him if he doesn't want to do it, but if he has any interest, get him in because you're an athletic dude. You got the DNA. All right, guys, again, uh, it's like I don't want to walk away because I'm afraid if I come back, everybody's going to leave, and then I'm just sitting here alone with my latte waiting 90 more minutes, maybe. <laughs> but I got to go. I got to go downstairs for a minute. I want him to play baseball, but there's no team around here. 
Damn it. That sucks. Hmm. And I guess you can't really just pick up and go somewhere where you can get them to access to, to all that. Okay, Don. I am going to go. David, Don, Bill, uh, <laughs> who else? Charles, uh, that everybody? I don't know. I don't know who's still here. Sean. Sorry, Sean. 15 people. Wow. Okay. Uh, and what's the likes looking like? Actually, what's the sub count looking like? I think I was on 164 when the uh, stream started. Wow. Six new subs. I've gained six subscribers for an event that hasn't even happened. That's when you know you've got talent. Okay, I'm going. I'm going, guys. Thanks. All right, I'll be back uh, about 15 minutes, okay? Uh, sorry for... Let me give you at least... God, something else in the background. Oriole, Oriole's Twitter. Or something. Just uh, something... I don't know. Where, where, where was that Westberg... Uh, There, that'll just be playing in the background while I run off for a minute, okay? Uh, oops. There you go. All right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right, be right back.
Okay. All right. Talk to me. Uh, all right, I need to push this back. This might make something weird happen. Hold on. I need some room on the table. All right. All right. All right. What's going on here in the chat? What's going on here? What's shaking? Uh, let's see. What do I want to watch while we're waiting? The Magic of Orioles Baseball. I don't know. You want to watch Earl Weaver yell at that umpire from, uh, what was it? The, like the 80, 85 season when he came back. Are you going to the Hall of Fame for effing up World Series? Is that it? Uh, I got some food in front of me, so I'm going to play something so I don't have to talk. I'm going to point the microphone away. Uh, let's see here. You know what I like? I like to look at the 1983... Orioles World Series uh, the I, I can't it was a W J Z or W B A L who had the coverage when they came back on the bus from Philly <laughs> Yeah, they they did like a. Uh, let's see. I've seen the clip on here before. Yeah, the, I'm talking about they wrapped up the series, and then they come home. Uh, late night. There's a crowd waiting for them, on Thirty Third Street. And uh, there's like live TV coverage. I can't remember which network, but uh, it's a nice little uh, something to watch. All right, we'll watch a little bit of a parade, I guess, while I have my I'm snack. I'm going to have to go ahead and have to mute this, this is new scene too. We're just looking at some visuals, maybe some old school uh, nostalgia for you Baltimore natives. He's near the Bromo Seltzer Tower.
When did when did wasn't Oprah on Channel Two? Was it was it Channel Two for Oprah? When did she leave? It, it was only like a year or two before this. I want to say. I wonder if this was Oprah's replacement. Imagine being Oprah Winfrey's replacement on Baltimore local news. <laughs> Talk about tough shoes. Uh, I got nothing to eat that's worth uh, bragging about. The drink, the drink is the real uh, star of the show here. Um. I got something that I figure would be the least amount of potentially bad feeling on my stomach as I'm eating at a very strange hour. And line to Ripken, and that's the final out of the 1983 World Series, and the Baltimore Orioles have won their third World Series in as many decades. The best team in baseball, record-wise, from the mid-1960s all the way till today. For 20 years, no one in baseball had a better record. And folks, you can look that up. It's true. That's how good we were. And now, 41 years later, here, here, is, here is the, yep, this is what I wanted. There, there is a raw uh, live uh, feed of this nighttime celebration, and it's fantastic. Maybe we'll get more of it here. Yeah, so uh, you wanted to peek at, it's just an omelet and rice. And I put some sauce on there. Omelet and rice, that's it. Very simple. Just something to put on my stomach. Look at Eddie Murray looking looking like Carl Weathers right there. That was our Apollo Creed. Um, about dollar ten. I could have gotten something authentic, but I would have had to wait. But it would have only cost about another thirty cents. Wait, where are they right there? That's not Memorial Stadium, is it? Okay, no, it is. The columns are right. Yeah, that, that's Memorial Stadium. Okay, but it, I guess the Colts. It's like the last Colts game, I guess. And it's a home run for Dempsey. I'm sorry, is my chewing coming up coming over the microphone? I should just point it away, sorry. 
Yeah, don't mind me either. Ever, no one mind anybody, I hope. All right. Oh, by the way, I failed to mention it in last night's stream, but I'd be remiss, especially now that I finally thought to say something, uh, to not mention uh, the passing of Larry Lacchino, who was one of the instrumental people in helping make Oriole Park at Camden Yards come into existence. So, you know, to me, that's... Uh, that's a front row seat in whatever afterlife of your choice. Helping to put together Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Where's the one-on-one -on -one interview with Wild Bill Hagee? Space, the final frontier. Thick of the night. Jackie Mason. Oh, what are you going to do? I was in Caddyshack, too. It was a huge mistake. What was I thinking? And more music from Alan Thick. God, who would who would watch that? Thick of the night. Ugh. Oh, I didn't realize Nature Valley was that old. Look at those. Look at that packaging. Was there a unicycle craze in 1983 that I wasn't aware of? Should I just take a nap on stream? I'll just point the camera over to my bed. Set my alarm. Your 6 p.m. news with Jackie Brockington.
Well, Hey, it's the Kennedy Center. Wow, okay, so I just had uh, an omelet with some rice. Sort of a two-pronged result here. My stomach feels better, and I feel that energy you get when you eat food. But yet at the same time, it makes me want to take a nap. All right, that's it. I'm I'm playing the show. I'm just going to keep this off to the side. Play some video games. Wow, down to six in chat. When I left, it was like 15. So by doing what I did, I made everybody leave. Why am I still streaming then? How about this? 620 people clicked on this. 16 likes. What is that, like 0.03% or something? That's just... Wow, it's really hard to get people to like stuff they watch. I'll admit, I don't do it for everything I watch. And I'm sure some stuff I liked that I didn't like. So, I can't blame anybody. Yeah, apparently, uh, you know, pr around 5 p.m. Eastern, uh, people are going to start filing back in. Um, so, uh, sure, they do, David. They have been proven to help one's channel in the algorithm. I mean... Depending on the kind of content you're doing, the like count uh, can be more or less <clears throat> impactful, but for this, it, it's definitely helpful. It's definitely helpful. Yeah, see? But David might have just been joking. David might have just been goofing around. Remember, folks, sarcasm in chat. You got to take it into account. <laughs> MCI, long distance calling. Remember when it used to cost $3 a minute to call Montana? Wow, she's the same age as her own mother. Wait. The, the daughter is... Whose mom is... All right. My God, that book is huge.
Can I can I watch how she awkwardly sits down again? She really makes sitting down look very difficult. Call 1-800-845-9000. That's 1-800-845-9000. Globe Life and Accident Insurance Company, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 73126. We got both kinds of music, country and western. Don's back. All right, everyone's back in time for me to play the show. Hey, how about I do play-by-play -play of my own video game? <laughs> how about that? <clears throat> All right. Hello, folks, and welcome to my first ever live play-by-play -play call of my own video game, where today, <laughs> I don't know, I guess it's going to take a minute to set up a game. I thought I had something already on, on uh, sleep mode. Or I don't know. What's it, what's a dream home run derby you guys want me to do? Let's see who wins. You want me to do Cal versus Eddie? How about Cal versus uh, Jackson Holiday or Gunner in a, in a home run derby showdown? Uh, updates on starting time. The last I heard is that they're, they're shooting for around five o'clock. So about 45 minutes from now, but I don't know if they're saying 45 minutes first pitch or 45 minutes, take the tarp off. Cause if it's take the tarp off, add another 20, 25 minutes, right? So, uh, yeah, I am going to be so delirious by the time I'm done streaming. There's the last known photograph. <laughs> the last known photograph of Camden Yards at the moment. Oh, wait a minute. Is this audio getting picked up? I don't think so. It wouldn't matter anyway for the show audio. Maybe I should give you some the show audio. Maybe it wouldn't work. So I went ahead into franchise mode and did a fantasy draft of the Chicago Cubs. Wouldn't you know I drafted three Orioles? What a lineup I got of young talent here on this team I drafted. Leading off will be Austin Hayes. He'll be followed by Bobby Witt Jr., Jose Ramirez, the switch hitter batting third, Spencer Torkelson in the cleanup spot, Luis Campusano, the catcher. Heston Kerstad will bat sixth in DH. Yoan Mancata at second. Colton Kowser in center. <laughs> and we are underway as I'm playing my own freaking video game on my stream that you can't even see. First pitch, swing and a miss by Hayes. Wow, this is interesting. Cubs versus Rockies. Max Freed on the mound for the Rockies. And Hayes fouls this one back 0-2. I'm getting practice in. That one's inside. 1-2 one and two the count. Outside this time, two balls and two strikes. Ken Griffey junior, junior versus senior. Is Ken Senior and Cecil Fielder, are they in the game? 
This is a foul ball, and Hayes is still up there with a 2-2 count to lead off the bottom of the first. Takes outside, and he works the count full. Boy, do I know how to work a count. Look at me trying to swing and a tapper to second. And Hayes will be thrown out. But the rest of the team will be happy that he uh, made the pitcher throw seven pitches. All right, you want me to play home run derby? Here's Bobby Witt Jr. He went 0 for 4 with two strikeouts in my last game. That's not good. There's a foul ball. One and one the count. One out, nobody on. No score here at Wrigley Field in a video game that I'm playing. Popped up to right field. Heading toward the foul line, making the catch. Two down. Uh, what are you thinking of deleting? Oops, called strike to Ramirez as I got distracted. Game paused. <clears throat> I have a video with two likes and 28 dislikes. Gets 50 views a day. Why, why, why is it like that? David, what in the world are you, what kind of content are you putting out there with that kind of ratio? Do you understand I do a live stream uh, that's comedy related where I do a lot of insult humor and stuff that can make a lot of people mad and I rarely ever get a dislike. I mean, rare. Thinking of deleting it because it is killing my like ratio, but it keeps getting the views. Well, I mean, your dislikes are hidden from view unless you know you download the uh <coughs> extension or whatever that allows you to see dislikes so the optics for people clicking on your videos they don't see all the dislikes unless they're really trying to look for them right i gotta i gotta look closer at your channel man i want to know why so many people are giving you a thumbs down Swing and a miss by Ramirez in the count 0-2. Two. two down, nobody on. For the Cubbies. I would do the home run derby, but that's even more boring to try and re relay over. There's a ground ball up the middle, past the pitcher and through. On in the center for a base hit, a two-out single by J-Ram. And that'll bring up the young first baseman, Spencer Torkelson. And this one's grounded to the second baseman who dives, stops the ball, gets up and throws him out. And that's all the play calling I'm gonna do. Am I an idiot? What am I doing? If I'm going to actually still call an, a real game, why am I wasting my time? More importantly, my breath. All right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back to ro ro finish rolling this J. I mean, now that I've got coffee, I don't know. <laughs> how about I just play some, uh, how about I play some online Yahtzee? How about that? <laughs> You know, I mean, why not? It's gotten this bad. Right? We've gotten this far, right, folks? Is this where we are? <laughs> Online Yahtzee? Or uh, streaming Yahtzee? Oh, I still got this running in the background. All right, folks. It's wait, I gotta go find a real person to play. Uh, what's my name? 
What's going to be my name? Am I Adley? Am I Gunner? Am I Burnsy? Let's go Corbin. Today's starter. All right. I want to play somebody with a check mark because that means they don't mess around. All right. They accepted my challenge. What do you got, buddy? You can't beat me in Yahtzee. I just rolled a large straight on one turn. What are you doing? You got nothing. Boom. Beat that. Beat that, buddy. What, do you got a couple of threes? You don't even know what you're doing. A one and a two? You're keeping a one and a two? Really? You had to think about it? The fact that you had to think about that means I already know I'm going to kick your butt. There you go. One and the ones. Have fun with that. Meanwhile, I'll take my fours and uh, take another four and uh, maybe take one more four. There. Your turn, buddy. What do you got? A couple of sixes? Boxcars? Oh, a little full house, huh? Well, you think you're better than me. You, okay, you, you say full house. I, you know what? I don't even want a full house. I want more fives. How about that? I'm greedy. Look at that. I got one. How about that? I'm going to take that right there. What do you think about that? Oh, no. He rolled a large straight. God damn it. Hey, everybody. Hope you're enjoying our live Yahtzee stream. Hey, there is a large straight, but I already got one. I'll take the small. Take your fours, buddy. What are you thinking about? I love the delay. There you go. Now what do you do? You lucky son of a... All right. Don't don't think... Oh, see, I should have gone with the full house. Now I've got three fives. Oh, what a waste. Now it's 19 and three of a kind. Ah, I should have taken the full house. What are you going to do? Huh? Twos? Place your bets, everyone. Place your bets. Ooh, I'll take a run on ones. I feel a Yahtzee coming. I feel a Yahtzee coming. Ah, crap. All right. That's fine. I'm still plus nine up top. Plus nine up top. Oh, what are you going to do there? That's not a good chance. You're going to go small straight? Oh, look at this guy. Just whips out a large one. Why not? You think you're good? Huh? You think you're good? Watch the watch what I do with these threes. You see what I just did? I just got my full house back. That's what I did. What do you got? I don't mess around. What are you keeping a five for? That, was, that is such a amateur move. Do I want to keep twos or threes? I'm going to keep uh, twos here. And I'm going to trade them back in for sixes. And if I don't get another, it goes to chance. And now I'm going to take my twos. See what I did there? Now I'm still plus seven up top. I can miss a three and a six. I know what I'm doing. I know exactly what I'm doing. Stay tuned for more exciting coverage of Baltimore Orioles Yahtzee. That's your chance, 15 points. All right, you're toast. Oh, look what I just rolled. Yahtzee. All right, you got lucky. You got lucky. Just two sixes is all I need for upper bonus. We were both still waiting on four of a kind. My three of a kind ain't so good, but your chance stinks. I'm liking my chances. Oh, what are you going to do? Oh, that's unfortunate. You have to get all your fives and sixes. Meanwhile, I'm going for four of a kind, and I'll take chance if that's all I get. All right, 23 to your 15. Sure. Still got my Yahtzee open. 
What you gonna do, buddy? You're running out of options. Oh, no. Oh, no. Is that a zero in the Yahtzee? I'm so sorry. Thanks for playing. Now that you did that, I can go ahead and take the risk. And would you look at that? I'll just take a little nine-pointer right there. Just sneak that on in. What do you think about that? Huh? What do you got? You're toast, buddy. Ten in the fives. You might as well just throw in the towel. Oh, look at that. There's your upper bonus and then some. Boom! Get out of here. You're done. Game over. You can't beat me in Yahtzee. It ain't happening. Oh, you got your four of a kind. Oh, good for you. Oh, good for you. Look at that. I'm taking the smaller one because I'm cool like that. Yeah, roll out, buddy. Roll out. You're done. You're done. Yeah, roll it on out. It doesn't matter. And there you go. A six in the sixes. Look at that upper bonus. Good game, really? Not a good game. You see my reaction? Not a good game. <laughs> All right, who's my next victim? Holy shit. This is bottom of the barrel. All right, this guy's got a lot of hair. What are you doing, buddy? Looks like Wild Bill Hagee's in the chat. Roll Tide? Oh, great. Come on, buddy. Take me on. What do you got? Okay, we're in. Good luck to you, sir. You're going to need it. I'll be taking my threes. And, uh, you know, settle for a full house. What do you got? Anytime you're ready, buddy. I'll be here. <laughs> Welcome. By the way, folks, there's an Orioles baseball game allegedly being played at some point today. Uh, where I sit, it's currently 3.30 in the morning. I woke up for what was supposed to be first pitch at midnight. I've spent three and a half hours doing nothing uh, this guy's just going to time himself out. What are you not happy that I rolled a full house on the first roll? That's, that's a pretty standard first roll, buddy. Don't feel like you're out of it. Go ahead. Give me, give it a chance. You're not out of it. Hey, Christian, the game is still delayed and will be for at least another half hour, I think. And there we go. Let's start a new game. But Christian... Watch my Yahtzee playing skills. I am a Yahtzee guru, okay? Oh, this person wants to decline? How about you? You look shaggy enough. You got what it takes to take me on there, buddy? You gonna accept my challenge? Come on. Come on. Turn off the porn hub. What are you doing? All right. I'm going to have to move on, buddy. I got bigger fish to fry. How about you? You ready for a challenge? All right. Let's go. And we are on the air. Take your twos and show me what you got. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not a good roll, is it? That's a terrible first roll for you. Meanwhile, I roll a full house right out of the gate. What do you got? A couple of ones? Really? You're going to go for ones this early. You go for ones. Wow, are you amateur. You are amateur, sir. Another full house, but I guess I'll just take the twos and be done with it. I don't know. All right, I see you. Oh, that's a lot of points. 
Oh, you're going to do the old switch it out for the sixes? Oh, what if you get burned? Oh, you got burned, though. And now you wasted your chance. Oh, no. It's like every decision you make is blowing up in your face. What's that all about? All right, I'll take it. I'll take it. What do you got? A couple of fives. Uh-oh. Whoa, Nelly, what are you going to do there? Not even a thought about four of a kind, huh? Fair enough. I see. Okay. Okay. Uh-oh. Oh, snap. I'll take it. I'll take it. Oh, no. He rolled out a large straight. You lucky son of a... All right. I got fours. I got fours. I got Yahtzee. See ya. See ya. Get out of here. What you got? Yeah, go for sixes. It ain't happening. You already used chance. Oh, you got a cheap full house. You little son of a. You're a little cheap full house. Get out of here. All right, let's build a large straight, shall we? Let's get a five in there. All right, we'll take the small. That's fine. That's fine and dandy. Take your fours. Hurry up. All right. Enjoy your fours. Let's go. All right, you got lucky. You got lucky. But I got Yahtzee. What's... Oh, my goodness gracious. Do I hear a double Yahtzee? Ah, oh. but you know what that does? Uh, what does that do? I have an extra one, an extra three, so that's plus four. I'm plus ten up top. I can miss a four and a five. And I just rolled a large straight. It's over. This one's over. You lose. Good day, sir. Thanks for playing. I really thought maybe one single comment about me playing Yahtzee for entertainment would pop up, but apparently everyone's just uh, watching with intensity or I don't know. Hey, we got, what do we got? Where do I go with this? I'm going to keep the six and say, screw it. Oh, that was a bad move. Oh, well. Wow. That was a bad move. That was a bad move. Uh, I think I can afford it, though, as long as they don't get Yahtzee. I should be okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All right, all right. I, I can deal with that. I can deal with that. What do you got? All right, two fives. Perfect. Any more is gravy. Oh, that's a lot of gravy. I might put that in four of a kind. You know what? I'm doing it. I'm taking the risk. What do you got? Oh, no. Oh, no. What do you do? Oh, that's going to sting. That's going to sting. Again, I only need two fours and two fives. There's two fours. Fine with that. Yeah, this is over, buddy. You're going to need yourself a Yahtzee. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No! I still got this. Come on. All I need is a couple of fives. You know what? I'm just going to... Oh, you know what do I do? there? That's a nice chance, but I got to take the bird in the hand. I got to take the bird in the hand. Take that upper bonus. Oh, no. No sixes? Oh, you crapped out and I win. Ain't that a bummer? Ain't that a bummer? I'm sorry. Thanks for playing. It's been fun. And another person loses to Corbin Burns. Is anybody watching this? 
Does anybody want to challenge me in Yahtzee? I mean, geez. Oh my God! What a does I? You guys told me to keep streaming, and now nobody's around to even like keep me company. I am up at three thirty nine a.m. playing fucking Yahtzee because I'm committed to covering every single game that I possibly can. I don't want to miss a single pitch. And this, this is the fruits of my labor. This stinks. All right, who's the next victim? Who wants a piece of me? Come on, you look, oh, that's me. Come on, Arlene. Oh, I swear we're playing. Watching my strategy. Come on, card, take me on. Oh, you're a card, you're card crazed. So you must uh, really enjoy, like what do you do in this spot? This is an interesting one. Do you go for fives or do you go for small straight? I think I go for fives. Small, uh, I take the two and the ones. I mean, there's just something about if, if there's a chance for a large straight, maybe I go for him, but you know, to go for us, oh, that's an easy, easy full house. The game doesn't start by the top of the hour, but I've put so much time in card and they've got to start the game. I'll, I will hate myself if I go all season. And uh, I don't get every game because I gave up half an hour before a game started. And again, if, if there was another game the very next day, I'd probably would have given up. But the fact that there's a day off, I'm saying to myself, Steve, just stick it out and just crash as long as you need to crash. You'll have time. Yeah. For me, it depends more on, you know, how early in the game it is. And I just, you know, small straight is something that, pretty much happens without even trying so to go for something that usually happens without trying i feel like is a waste whereas if you take a risk on the fives you could get four of a kind maybe you get a full house or you just put 15 in the fives there there's there's more options box cars baby come on give me one more all right i'm not happy about it but uh yep Gonna have to take it. Gonna have to get four of something up top to make up for that one I didn't use. Uh oh, he's got fives. Uh, four of a kind, or what are you doing? I think he's putting in four. Oh, he put it in fives. Okay, he wants that upper bonus. So now I know what to do. Now that I know what you. Uh, what your priority is. Ooh, I needed that roll. There you go. Now, instead of being minus one up top, I'm plus three. I can miss a two or a three on pace up top. All right, you already got your full house. Take your twos. I love the delay. She's like, damn it, I've already got a full house. Oh, three ones. Ooh, this is an ugly roll. What do you do here? I mean, the odds are you're not going to get anything other than maybe. I mean, you're hoping maybe for a full house or a Yahtzee, but if you don't get either, you're stuck with garbage. You got the four of a kind. You got to try. Oh, kidding. Come on. How's that for strategy card? Yeah, you can say wow. You can say wow, Arlene. That's how I play. How do you play? I play to win. I play for keeps. You're going to get that four inside straight draw? Really? You're going for an inside straight draw and now you're stuck with that for chance? Or are you going to put a one in the ones? I probably would have put a one in the ones because you still would have been plus three up top. I don't like your strategy, Arlene. I don't think you're very good at this. How about that? A large straight on one roll. Your turn. 
I've scored 90 points in the last two rolls. How are you doing? That looks like a large straight to me. Oh, my God. You had two, three, four, five with two rolls? You had an open-ended large straight roll with two rolls, and you coughed it up? I mean, fine. Take your threes, but, yeah, not good strategy. Uh, three, four, five, a pair of ones. Keep the five, roll the rest. Keep a five, roll the rest. Take the five. I got to take the five. I got to hope to get four twos or four threes. I might not even need it. I might not even need upper bonus. That's why I'm not too worried about it now. Hey, Bernardo. I just realized I'm turning Yahtzee into an exciting stream. All right, you got four threes. Now what? Good for you. Uh-oh. Guess who's yelling next door? Guess who's yelling next door? Uh-oh. Do I? Oh, here's a good one. Card. What do you do here? One roll left. I feel like I still got to, even though it's only going for three of a kind, it could turn into a full house. It could turn into four of a kind. And the worst case scenario, a chance. Whereas if I go for twos and I don't get the two, yeah, I got to just keep rolling. All right. I'll take that. I'll take that. Be right back. Be right back in the middle of this uh, heated match. All right. I have yet to lose a game of Yahtzee. I need twos, threes, a full house. There's some twos. There's another one. And another one. Do I want... I'm going to have to take it there, right? Well, wait. I've got an extra four. So I'm plus three. That would make a plus five. You know what? I'm putting it there. How about that? I might surprise a person or two. That might surprise a person or two. Oh, that was a tough one. All right, they're back in it. They've got a shot. They're not out of it. All right, give me two more fives. Or no, what do I need? Oh, yeah, this is perfect. Full house or a good uh, chance. All right, I'll take the chance. What do you got? Ooh, three sixes. Shit. That ain't fair. All right. You are still, what, plus three up top? Oh, but you still need three fours. See? You still need three fours. Twos and threes. Uh, go for threes. Oh, now what? Now I got to back up and go for twos, I guess. That sucks. Uh, I think I got this. As long as they don't get Yahtzee, I should be fine. Oh, you could have gone for three of a kind. You had a couple of sixes there. Now you're stuck with two fours. Now, see, that's why. Look at that. There is no excuse to have 62 up top. What a terrible play that was. All right, I'm going to just go for full house now that I know I'm going to win. There we go. Stick that in there. And that'll be yet another win for your old pal, the Bird Watcher, who is now, I believe, four for four and playing Yahtzee against random people. You can have that. Do I get upper bonus? Oh, my God. Forget upper bonus. I'm going for the whole kit and caboodle. It doesn't matter. I'm going to win anyway. Oh, -uh. oh, -uh. damn it. All right. Have your last roll. Have your last roll. Another win for the bird watcher. When I play a game, I play to win. Whoops, what happened? Yeah, good game. Because I won. You've been trounced. Even if you take my Yahtzee away, I beat you by three points. Yeah, it's well played. It's a well-played game. Who's my next victim? Well, this guy's got an eye patch. Can I play Mr. Eye Patch? Declined? 
Oh, Mr. Eye Patch. How about Mrs. Uh, Purple Hair? You want to play Mrs. Purple Hair? Hey, we got a we got a player here. All right, let's see if I can keep my win streak going. By the way, I'm rolling a joint at the same time. I'm multitasking. Oh wow, look at her! Four fours out the gate. All right, you want me to hunker down and pay a little attention to this one? All right, I'm locked in. I'm locked in. I gotta. Let's go. You ready for some box cars? Ooh, what do I? Ah. All right, I'm not happy with it. I'm not happy with that roll. I hate that roll. Ugh. All right, just roll yourself a free full house right out of the gate. You're not gonna go for twos. Just put it in there. Stop. And of course, I'd get two sixes now. You see, this is now my three of a kind. So, oh, okay, four of a kind. Thank you. I'll take it. Uh, whenever you're ready. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you happen to be in my stream right now, I know it's hard to believe, but uh, I'm here to give you Orioles play-by-play -play coverage of game three of a three-game series against the Royals, getaway day, and I can't wait to get away. Uh, I think for fours, I'm going to go ahead and yeah, I'll take the small straight. I'll take the small street. Ooh, this guy's got some hot dice. Oh, we're getting Yahtzee. Let's go. There's no better Yahtzee than a bunch of ones. Come on, give it to me. Oh, uh, damn it. <laughs> It's a new kind of YouTube channel where you listen to somebody play games by themselves as if they were really just by themselves talking out loud like a moron to uh, somebody that can't hear them. All right, we got some threes. Uh, I would go for full house, but if I miss it, it's a lousy chance. So, ooh, that paid off. <laughs> oh, all right. Ten more minutes till first pitch, David? Till first pitch? Is that what you're saying? Till first pitch? Or what? Do we have confirmation? I'm locked in another Yahtzee battle. I have yet to lose one game. Oh, and this guy's doing pretty good. He's got a large straight out the way. He's got four fours and four fives. And, wow, he's got upper bonus locked in. He's got a shitty three of a kind, though, it has to be said. Ah, uh, jeez. I uh, got a roller out. That sucks. That's not what I wanted. That's not a good outcome. I really hope all this nonsense with the weather today doesn't mess Corbin Burns up in some way. Uh, damn. Ooh. All right. I'm barely hanging in there. Barely hanging in there on this one. All right, give me uh, give me some twos. I'll take it, I guess. Give me a full house. All right. Well, let's see. So plus four. Up, that means I can miss a four. Perfect. The extra one, the extra three means I can miss a four. Two fours for upper bonus. 
So that's almost like getting an extra turn, I feel. I need to get at least large straight, if not Yahtzee. Come on. I need a big one here. Give me a good one. Sixes. All right. I'll take it. Whoops. Oh, what you gonna do, buddy? You gonna tr Oh, no. That wasn't a good roll. Not f that wasn't a good roll at all. Here, are you trying to do something where you're trying to get a large straight? Let me show you how it works. You do it like this. See? That's how you do it. That's how you do it. You're like, Steve, why didn't you keep the six? Because that's why. Because I know what I'm doing. I know how to play games. That's what I'm good at. David knows. David knows I'm a gamer. Give me a game and I'll be good at it. If you give me the time. All right. Uh, I need fours and a full house. You know what? I'm just going to roll this whole thing over. Oh, okay. I see a full house in the making. Huh? Oh! Look at that. God damn it. Come on. Uh, sorry. All right. I'm belching. I'm swearing. This is a true Baltimore stream now. You're getting the authentic O's coverage, hon. All right. Where are you at? I need upper bonus. What do I need? I only need two fours, right? Why am I not getting any fucking fours? No fucking fours. I'm not even... You know what? Fuck you. That's ridiculous. All right, now I'm just swearing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I am I am screwing the pooch. I am screwing the pooch. Oh, he got upper bonus. I need two fours and I still win. Just one more freaking four. One more. There you go. And another win. For your pal, the bird watcher, still undefeated playing Yahtzee. Uh, I can't find my little. Oh, there's my tool. Come on, David, get on, get in on this. It's it's easy. This tiny little website, we can sit here and be playing each other right now. You just type in a dumb screen name and boom, you're off. You don't have to sign up for nothing. Oh, this guy's name is Unbeatable. I want to play Unbeatable. Unbeatable has accepted my challenge. Well, the floor is yours, Unbeatable. Let me guess, if I'm in a position to win, you'll just uh, leave the game early, right? That's how you're unbeatable. You leave before somebody wins, right? Is that it? What do you do? Ooh, you got your ones. You got chance and ones out of the way. Wow, you're good. Don't mess with this guy. He's unbeatable. I'll take that. You gonna go for large straight there, buddy? God damn it. Ah, you gotta know when to hold him. Oh, look out. Boxcars. Out of town boxcars. Out of town boxcars. Dude, you're not unbeatable. You look extremely beatable to me. 
Uh, I'm going to go like this, and if I don't hit my two, I'll just take a one in the ones. I'll take a two in the ones. All right. All right. He got me there with the sixes. All right. I see you. All right. I see you. How about that? So plus eight up top. Plus eight up top. I need that large straight, though. Come on, large straight. Let's go. Oh, that's a big four of a kind. Get in. Still undefeated. Playing the unbeatable. Uh, we are not on again. And I'll be taking some fours. And I'll be going for large straight now. And I'll be taking large straight. The weather is finally clearing up in Baltimore. All right. As soon as I'm done with this game of Yahtzee, I'll take a look at the status of everything. Just got to get the field ready. All right. Meanwhile, I'm kicking so much butt in Yahtzee, I don't want to quit. You know? I mean... What am I supposed to do? Isn't Yahtzee more fun to watch? I have not lost yet. All right, twos, fours, fives. I see a two, I see a five. You know what? Give me one each. And then you're going to do that. All right, give me large straight, or uh, give me chance. I'll take that. I'll take my chances. Your turn, buddy. You're unbeatable, remember? It's your turn, unbeatable. I got a, I got a ball game that was supposed to start four hours ago. I'm supposed to be calling here in a minute. You want to go ahead and take your turn, buddy, or are you going to go ahead and concede? Are you looking at the board right now and realizing the chances of you winning are slim and you're just going to quit early? That way you don't have to experience the pain and suffering of losing. Are you just going to sit there and think, oh, I know the strategy. You sit there and you hope I quit. That way you remain unbeatable. Wow, that is a really... Not only clever, but courageous strategy. And there he goes. He has left the chat. <laughs> Unbeatable. Thank you. I win. Goodbye. All right. Uh, the Orioles. There's a baseball game today, I think. Ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls. Dude, they haven't even bothered to tweet out, hey, uh, the tarp's off and come on down to the yard because we're about to start here in about X number of minutes. They didn't even bother with a tweet like that? You said details will come when available. Why am I getting details that you're not? All right. Well, David, you're, you're telling me the weather looks good, but can you confirm whether or not the tarp is off? Because until the tarp is off, we know we're going to wait at least another 15, 20 minutes, right? Oh, this guy says, pl oh, wait, no, I don't want to. I accept no challenges without a certified check mark. I have my standards, sir. I only play worthy opponents. And even then, it's still a massacre. Now there's nobody around the play. See, oh, Judy has challenged me. Come on, Judy. I think this is David here. David is playing as Judy. 
I can tell because she's playing fast. All right, Judy, let me show you how this is done. All right, you go for sixes, and then you get fucked. That's what happens. That's the worst first turn I've had. Ouch. All right, Judy, give me, give me a chance. Ew, I don't like these rolls at all. And now I gotta go and do this. Come on, get in. Hey! What am I complaining about? Had it the whole time. Never a doubt. Oh, four sixes, huh? How about four fives? How about four fives? How about five fives? Yahtzee! How's that, Judy? Yeah, boom is right. Boom, boom. Give you a little bit of the old sunglasses, huh? Ain't that right, Judy? All right. Uh, I still need everything up top, so I was looking at small straight, but nah, I need to start working on the top here. Okay, that'll work. All right. A one in the ones, that's not a good roll. Oh no, Judy, you look like you're in trouble. Oh Judy, this does not look good for you. Judy, are you gonna be my latest victim? Can anyone beat me at Yahtzee? I don't know. Doesn't appear to be anyone out there. Oh, you got your twos, huh? Oh, I'll just take that. Go ahead. I just need one roll. I take one roll turns. That's what I do. All right. Uh, let's see. I've got my threes, but, uh, you know, why not? Yeah, four of a kind. That'll work. I'll take it. Hey, what's going on, DK1? You're back. What do you think of live Yahtzee coverage? Uh, do I? Uh, I think I just got to go for fives here. Take three of a kind. Ooh, ooh. Do I? Oh, I have to. I have to. All right, I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah, I keep thinking you're getting Yahtzee. You're not. Oh my God, they got Yahtzee. <laughs> Damn you, Judy. All right. Touche. Touche. I'm not done yet, you see. I'm not quite done. Oh, no. I might be done. Plus five. I got I to gotta take it here. Whoops. Yep. Don't show this again. Yeah, put a zero there. All right, you got a whiff. No five. Oh, why did you keep a five and a six? Why did you keep a five and a six? You limited yourself to at maximum three of a kind. You were just going for a large three of a kind when you could have had four fives or four of a kind five. What a stupid play that was. That was a no brain play right there. And now look what I just did to you. Now my upper bonus is all but locked in. Yeah, you better applaud. I'd applaud you, but you made a really bad decision. All right. A couple of twos. You know what I'm going to do? Check it out. I go for full house, and if I don't get it, never mind, I got it. This person is toast. Yeah, have your fives. Oh, darn, your four of a kind has a zero in there. Oh, no, what do I do with it? See, you would roll something like this when all you need are two and twos and fours. Hey, look at that. Oh, my goodness. 
upper bonus locked in. Do I have one more roll? No, that's it. Okay. Oh, you're done. Goodbye. I don't know who's been here the whole time I've been playing Yahtzee, but I'm like seven for seven now. This is starting to become, uh, you know, a bit impressive. All right. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right. A little peek into my gamer ability. By the way, fun fact, back in the first generation of Tetris, before they came up with all these fancy new tricks and tapping methods and all that, back when it was just plain old NES Tetris, you're listening to the voice of the greatest Tetris player of his generation. That is my other claim to fame. All right. You got a new tweet there, Baltimore? Or am I on to my next game? On to the next game with Salomea. What do you got, Salo? I'll take that. Elliot, you know. Despite the fact that you can't see anywhere off of my camera view, there is indeed no one off camera pointing a gun to my head, which means I have the liberty to end the stream whenever it pleases me. So, obviously I haven't gotten to that point yet. But when I get to that point, my ability to, uh, you know, think and make decisions will surely come into play and I'll be where I need to be. <laughs> I mean, Elliot, I understand you go into the Orioles, just just cancel the game, but why are you telling me to quit the stream? Like, is my stream preventing you from watching another stream or something? Like, that's a weird flex. All right, uh, this is an interesting one. Well, what do you do here, card? You got one roll left. You got a full house in hand. You got a great three of a kind. You could wind up with a four of a kind with sixes. What do you do there? Are you waving goodbye? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just thinking about what to do. Uh, you're, oh, is it my turn? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Well, well now it's uh, now it's your turn. Okay. No, it's your turn. I, I said it's your turn. It's your turn. All right. <laughs> uh, people are so fun, aren't they? What do I do here? You know what? I got extra three, extra six. I don't want a shitty chance with these fours. I'd rather just take four in the twos or six in the twos. That's better. I tell you this, nobody's going to sit there and question my commitment to Orioles baseball coverage. <sighs> you think Jim Palmer would just sit there in the booth for five straight hours waiting for that first pitch? Nothing against Jim, but uh, all right, it's straight time. But then again, Jim can't smoke a spliff while he's up there in the booth either. Uh, let's see. I'll get, take some sixes here. That'll work. All right. What do you got here? Oh, upper bonus is looking good for you. I might be in some trouble here.
Pretty neck and neck in this one. Pretty neck and neck. In fact, if you get twos, look at that. Upper upper bonus is deadlocked. Basically, my three of a kind versus their chance. So I got the edge right now. Uh, I'm not going for ones. I guess I'll keep the four. All right. Can I do with only two fours? Doesn't matter. I got all three. Okay. Upper bonus is locked in. I feel another win coming. Oh, you're in a state. You're in a hotel next to the stadium. All right, Elliot. Well, you're the perfect person to inform me when. Uh, wait, you told me to quit the stream. Why would you tell me to quit and then tell me that you're about to go down to the ballpark? You're the perfect person to let me know when uh, to stop playing Yahtzee and start uh, getting into the ball game here. Oh, that should have been a Yahtzee. Come on, man. Yeah, you got your upper bonus. I wouldn't get too excited about it. Oh, geez. I feel like I got to do it this way because a large chance or a large straight possibility is 19. Or do I just put a zero in the ones? I'll, t uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. To fight the refs. Oh, man, they snuck a large straight, and this could be my first loss. Oh, I need a large straight pulled out of my butt right here. One more. Come on. Oh, damn. All right. All right. All right. I'm in the weeds. I am in the weeds. Okay, that's not a good three of a kind. All right, three, four, five. Do I keep the one? No. Ugh. All right. All right, so let's see. Plus, ten, plus 11. If he doesn't get that, that's plus 20. So, yeah, I'm going to lose. If I, I need the large straight. I need it. And I'm not going to get it. Not with this hand. All right. Do I keep the one or the six? Eh, fuck it. Whatever. All right. There you go. I lost. Oh. Sorry. I'm just not used to umpires being referred to as refs in baseball. I fight the refs. All right. That was a that was a crappy loss. Uh yeah. Baseball. How am I going to it's I'm the the, my, the sun is going to I'm about 90 minutes away from sunrise for a game that was so stupid like I should have just three hours ago I should have just been like you know what let me just let me just NFL refs taking over MLB oh who's taking over the NFL somebody's gotta make calls on the city Foden with a hat trick no not a Foden hat trick <laughs> <clears throat> well, that stinks. Oh, here's an Orioles update. Orioles waiting to play this game. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, boy. Oh, so there's now NFL umps and MLB refs. What is it? The uh, vice versa day. All right. Who's the next opponent on 
Killing Time with Yahtzee and Weed, the show. Jan Jankika, good to have you. Let me go ahead and show you how this works. You see, I'm going to go unconventional, and then I'm going to backtrack and stay conventional, okay? Hey, Paul, how you doing? Paul, you have officially checked in at rock bottom. I am playing Yahtzee on a live stream. Uh, I guess I'll uh, begrudgingly take that. Hmm. Do 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 do. You're about to, all right, you're missing a verb in there, Elliot, and that verb, depending on what it is, can really uh, cause a whole variety of responses. <laughs> that is a shitty first roll. Okay, let's just roll it again. I'll keep the threes. That'll work. Uh, this person likes to play fast. What are you in a hurry? What's the big hurry? This is another terrible roll. All right. Just got to take that one on the chin. Would you give me a chance to do something over here? This lady's way too fast. Uh oh. Box cause. A turning out of town box cause. Out of town box cause. Ah, you like to work fast, don't you? You like to work fast. Are ones really going to help me at this point? I'm plus six. I need a. F so if I missed a five. Yeah, I guess so. I guess ones. Uh, I hate to waste it like that, but I have no manners. Sorry, don't kick me out of stream. Uh, have I even come close to threatening to kick you out, man? What are you worried about? You know? All right, I need a straight. That is not getting me toward a straight. Ew. Ew. I'm gonna I'm gonna lose. I'm going to lose. Wait, isn't it five twenty two PM there now? It's five twenty two PM, right? You gotta be kidding me. How is this game? What are you what are you saying, Elliot? Man, come on. There's so many people that pull this emotional swing thing out of nowhere. I'm just sitting here playing Yahtzee, dude. Calm down. Everything's cool. Thomas, I'm playing Yahtzee right now. What do you think? <laughs> I'm playing Yahtzee and I got a guy here who's saying don't kick him out and okay, I'm stupid and I don't know why. I'm trying to tell them to just calm down. Nobody's calling you stupid. Nobody's kicking you out. Nothing to worry about. Just waiting on a rain delay here, you know? How's your game going, Thomas? Oh, damn it. I had a put a zero in the Yahtzee. I had to put a zero in the Yahtzee already. Of course. Of course. That's right. Stefan Diggs has been traded to the Texans. I've already forgotten who he used to play for. 
Oh, that's a bad roll. Wait a minute. Ten. Does that get me there? Yes, it does. Right on the money. Look at that. That's how you play upper bonus. That's how you play upper bonus, folks. You give yourself a chance to miss something. All right. I need a little help here. Little help here, please. Oh, pulled that out. Oh, this is close. It's plus five, plus. Oh, man. I'm going to have to get four of a kind. I'm going to have. Oh, and they just got four of a kind. And it's going to need to be what? Nine, 10, 11, 12, plus five, 17. So I need 18 or more and four of a kind. It's never happening. That sucks. Nice win. Nice win. Uh, Ricky, unfortunately, no. Uh, the Orioles have kind of uh, been toying with us with their uh, Twitter feed today. Four hours. Oh, wait a minute. Five minutes. Five minutes. We've got an update. First pitch. We have a time. 6.05 p.m. So it's a night game. It's a day game that's really a night game. I can't believe... I could have just treated this like the previous two nights had my normal sleep routine. I turn everything upside down. I've been up since last night. Since last night's game. I did have like a 75 minute nap somewhere along the way. But damn it, man. Just the worst case scenario. This really annoys me okay so we're looking at what five so we're looking at f almost 40 minutes almost 40 more minutes all right but at least we have a time <sighs> let me update update this down here uh we'll begin at uh where is it six 05 p.m. Eastern. Okay. Okay, card. I'll see you then. You know what? I'm going to go back to playing some, uh, some of the show. I'll probably walk out and have a smoke, too. So, uh, in that case, it's back to, uh, Where's that extra note? Okay. Uh, it, 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 whoop, look out. Oh, I didn't realize I would. Okay, whatever. You can see that, right? All right, there's the info. There's everything. All right, folks, uh, I'll be back, uh, you know, two shakes or something. Two shakes of a something or other. All right, thanks.
10 minutes until first pitch. 10 minutes until first pitch. Holy cow. Holy cow. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Wrigley Field. This is Harry Carey coming at you, where tonight the Cubbies will be taking on the Milwaukee Brewers. Wow. Okay. Is this it? Is it now? Is now the time? Now the time. You know what? I think I need a little something. Whoops. Go in here. Join the other tabs. Go to your home. Don't you want to go to your home? Whatever. Here, you can go way over here for all I care. You can go way over there. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's try and uh, get pepped up here. I need I need to get peppy. You heard? Your boy Steve needs to get peppy. The bird watcher is uh. Feeling kind of low energy, and the game hasn't started yet. So, how do I remedy that, you ask? I always like to point a little music to help, you know, set the mood. Just a little bit of music, maybe. Maybe just hit that, uh, yeah, just go right for the, uh, for the chorus. Let's see here. Oh, really? Are you really doing that? Who's going to hear them call? You hear that, folks? Can you feel it? All right. That's about all I can do. <laughs> All right, folks, I guess uh, we are about to hopefully get underway with a baseball game five hours later. Considering I've been running a stream for five hours already, would any of the 16 people in chat right now like to sound off and let me know that you're here, you're you're doing okay, and you're ready for some Orioles baseball? Because I need a helping hand tonight. I, I need a little bit of enthusiasm and excitement from everybody else because uh, your boy Steve is burning a candle at both ends here. All right, well, that that created a whole frenzy, didn't it? <laughs> All right, David is here. Pool is ready. I guess the lag is something I need to take into consideration. Well, if this game does get underway in six minutes, which is what they're saying, I guess I can go ahead and 
go over these uh, starting lineups and starting pitchers, considering it's been five hours since I last talked about it. For the Kansas City Royals, Michael Garcia will play third and hit leadoff. Bobby Wood Jr. bats second and plays short. Vinny Pascatino will DH and hit third. Salvador Perez is at first base, batting cleanup. N.J. Melendez in left field. Hunter Renfro in right field. Adam Frazier in the seventh spot is at second base. Uh, the catcher, Fermin, hitting eighth. And Kyle Isbell, the center fielder, in the nine hole. On the mound, Cole Reagans, a left-handed starter. For your Baltimore Orioles, Gunnar Henderson will lead off and play short. Adley Rutschman is at DH today. Ryan Mountcastle in the three spot playing first base. Anthony Santander in the cleanup spot in right field. Jordan Westberg moved up into the five hole. He'll be at second base. Austin Hayes left field. Jorge Mateo center field batting seventh. Okay. James McCann batting eighth doing the catching and Ramon Urias in the nine spot. Third base on the mound making his second start as a Baltimore Oriole, Corbin Burns, who came off a brilliant opening day outing where he went six innings, giving up just, uh, what, the one base runner, the one hit, the one run, the one swing. Otherwise, uh, 11 strikeouts, uh, fantastic outing. Let's hope for something similar. Typically, when we have situations like this, where it's a long, long, long delay. The umpires love to have that small strike zone. Or, uh, or is it a big strike zone? Small, right? They, they, want, they want the game to get, get sped up. They're going to call strikes, right? So hopefully uh, Corbin Burns can... Uh, Take advantage of that, and maybe we can scratch across a couple of early runs, and that's all he'll need to get us maybe into the seventh inning or so and just try to get a win out of here. We need a win. We need to get a series win. I know the rest of you Oriole fans feel the same way as I do. Uh, there's a big difference if uh, we end this homestand 4-2 and two versus 3-3. Three and three. It's not the end of the world if we go three and three, but considering we won the first two and considering uh, there isn't a single team in the American League East with a losing record right now, uh, that's, uh, you know, not the best, not the best result. Folks, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this here at the bottom. Uh, I'll probably, well, if I'm doing my job... I will be reminding you from time to time to maybe uh, hit the like button. It helps out the channel. Uh, and please think about subscribing as well. I'd like to earn your subscription by calling a good game and, you know, giving you an alternative uh, source to uh, follow Orioles ball games throughout the season. But Five hours after I do hope pitch, that tonight... Baseball You'll give me a little bit of leeway because your boy, the bird watcher, we are still has here, had approximately 75 minutes of sleep and ice cream and in the past uh, thirty-two uh, hours. We're get baseball today, which is very exciting. A five-hour yeah. rain delay is a little bit. Of a difficult I'm, uh, spot, I would think for a ball player. I'm How exhausted. So let's hope that we get off to a good start. Let's hope we have a nice, positive day. Burns is sharp because I, I need a positive outing. I mean, after last, last night's game, after this five-hour wait, I am ready to see something good. Oh, thank you, Thomas. Sorry about that. Maybe, uh, that you know, was bound to happen. But that was great, bound to happen. Sorry. That's what I get for playing that Orioles song earlier. Okay. Taken care of. Thank you very much. 
Uh, I'm I'm just a simple man, pure. I can't be better. I totally forgot to turn the TV down. Naked Gun. Hey, it's Enrico Palazzo. He'll be in left field. Seriously, guys, tonight, if my voice starts to sound like Harry Carey, it's not me doing an impression. It's just I'm that exhausted. Corbin Burns. There he is. He's kicking the dirt around the rubber. Baseball in glove. And he is staring in for the first sign. And we are about to get started after a five-hour rain delay on the money. First pitch, 94-mile-an-hour cutter on the outside corner for a called strike. And we are underway. Let's go. Hey, we have baseball. And the next pitch, swing and a miss. Oh, an 88-mile-an-hour dipper. I guess that was the sinker. Oof. Lots of movement. And the 0-2 to Michael Garcia is on the outside edge at the knees. How about a three-pitch strikeout looking to begin the ball game? And as I said just before the start of the game, if you're up there to hit, and games like this on days where there's a five-hour rain delay, the umpires are going to call anything close. You can't be taken with two strikes. That pitch was a strike. It was right on the corner, but uh, just in general. All right, next batter is Bobby Witt and a swing and a miss. 95-mile-an-hour cutter. Oof. What an arsenal of pitches Corbin Burns has. What a pleasure he is to watch when he's on your team. Next one is low and away. One ball and one strike on Bobby Witt Jr. The current weather in downtown Baltimore, 52 degrees. There's still some mist in the air. 11 mile an hour winds blowing to the north. And the wind chill makes it feel like 48 degrees the 1-1 one, one pitch to Witt is low and away, 2-1. and one. I hope folks are starting to file in now onto the channel. I have no idea if having this stream last as long as it did. I probably should have just made a new one, but it's a rain delay. I didn't know how to play it. This one's low and away, 3-1 and one the count on Bobby Witt Jr., Batting 400 here in the early going. Hey, 45. That's a nice number. Swing and a miss. 97 miles an hour. The count goes full. Vinny Pascatino on deck. And the payoff pitch. Swung on and hit in the right center. This one is going to... Get past the diving Mateo, and Witt Jr. will hustle into second easily with a stand-up double. That ball hit in the right center. Mateo laid out for it, but the ball did not land in the glove. Let's look one more time at that dive. I mean, he got there, and it just hit off the webbing. It just hit off the outer two fingers of the glove, if you will, on the webbing. I hate to say it, folks, but Mullins makes that catch. One out, Witt Jr. at second, and here's Pascatino. He takes a called strike. 81-mile-an-hour curveball. Pascatino hitting just 167. Two for seven in the series. The pitch fouled back 0-2. Just getting underway here at Camden Yards after a five-hour rain delay. The 0-2 to Pascatino is taken low, 1-2. and two.
Hopefully, Corbin Burns uh, has some sort of routine for days like this where maybe he was ready to pitch in the day. and this, He spikes this one in the dirt, and it's going to get away, and that's going to allow Witt Jr. to get to third. Again, the speed of Bobby Witt Jr., a wild pitch. McCann watched the ball get about 15 feet away toward the first base side of, of the plate. And with Witt Jr. going the opposite direction, an easy advance to third base. And now he's 90 feet away with only one out. A 2-2 count on Pascatino, and the infield is in. The pitch swung on and tapped foul off to the right. Still two and two. You got to figure maybe the infield wouldn't be in if uh, if it's not somebody like Burns on the mound. They expect Burns to either get a strikeout or get a weak ball on the ground. The 2-2 two -two to Pascatino. And he can't get the call. Burns tried to get the outside corner at the bottom of the zone, the ball was just outside the zone according to the, the zone tracker or whatever you want to call it. I already forget what to call it. Anyway, the count is full now, and the payoff pitch is tapped back to Burns. Witt Jr. broke for the plate, and now he's in a rundown. He's running back toward the plate now, and now back toward third as Burns holds it. Rutschman has it. Witt Jr. still in this rundown. He's so hard to tag. My God. Mountcastle finally tags him. God, Bobby Witt Jr. is such, such a pest. And wait a minute. The Royals manager is coming out to argue what? What do you want? He was in a pickle for like two minutes. What, what are you arguing? That somebody was interfering or something? You got to be kidding me, dude. There's no way. No, we played that just right. You got no argument. What is this manager talking about? There is nothing to argue about, dude. You got to be kidding me. Go, go take a seat, you dope. Your boy took off when he shouldn't have. He got caught. He tried his hardest. We had to relay the ball back and forth like six times. And you're acting like, uh, oh, somebody got in the way there on that last uh, throw. Shut up. Sit down. And by the way, the runner who hit the ball got all the way to third base on the play. That's how long that, that pickle went on. Two down, runner at third here in the top of the first. What a start to this game. Here's Perez, and the first pitch is low for ball one. Oh, am I not on the screen? Hey, sorry about that. Thank you. All right, I am doing a great job tonight, aren't I? And the next pitch is swung on a miss, a fastball just off the outside of the zone. Perez went after it and came up empty. One ball and one strike. Burns trying to get out of a jam here. Again, folks, you're going to want to watch a replay of that rundown of Bobby Wood Jr. and just admire how elusive of a runner he is. Here's a foul ball at the plate, one and two. Oh, that, that, that pick you're talking about, card? That's just a piece of... Uh, Hieronymus Bosch, Hieronymus Bosch's uh, Garden of Earthly Delights. I'll show you what that whole thing looks like in a sec. Here's the one-two pitch. Swung on and popped up. Shallow feet. Oh, God, it drops in. And a run will score. Good Lord. Just like last night where Kyle Isbell hit a ball into no man's land in left field, this ball finds a hole. Pass Gunnar Henderson over the shortstop's head in shallow left field. Gosh darn. That's the second night in a row. And I think it was two outs last night. 
That is tough. So the Kansas City Royals have taken a one nothing lead here in the first inning. And normally I wouldn't say no big deal, but again, in games like this, after a long rain delay, they typically they are typically low scoring and fast moving, and I'm just not happy to see us uh, give up a run with our ace on the mound. Here's a swing and a hard hit ball in the right center. That'll get down. Mateo misplays it. Thankfully, it's Salvador Perez who was on first, and he'll only get the third base. Okay, the Mateo experiment is over. It's over. The Mateo experiment is over. Absolutely misplayed that ball, and if it was anybody other than Salvador Perez on first base, that's another run on the board. The only reason it's not two to nothing is because Salvador Perez was running the lead runner on that uh, ball out to right center field. Swing and a miss. Hunter Renfro chases one low and away. Two down and a run in. Hey, Melanie, welcome back. Oh, your, your boy's not happy with this first inning. The 0-1 is in the dirt. Uh, one ball and one strike on Hunter Renfro. Burns already up to 24 pitches here in the first. Precisely not what you wanted to see. That kid Marsh last night, I don't think he had one inning where he threw more than like 14 pitches. Here's one low and away, two and one. That's 25 pitches for Burns. Your boy's not happy. The 2-1 is on the outside edge, a called strike. Two balls, two strikes, two down. Runners at second and third. One run in here in the top of the first. The Royals ahead, one to nothing. Corbin Burns with his 27th pitch of the inning. And he catches the bottom corner of the zone on the outside for a called strike three. And Hunter Renfro is asking the umpire about it. Dude, it was a strike. Sit down. You know, these Royals are complaining way too much considering they got caught in a rundown. Then they got their run on a bloop hit. Then, uh, you know, we got a infielder out there trying to play center, and he's not cut out for it. I'm sorry. Folks, if you were here at the top of my stream, which was five hours and 15 minutes ago or so, <laughs> uh, I said when I looked at the lineup card, Look, we got to do something here. We're, 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 in fact, I want to find the, uh, what is it? Is it the Masson Orioles? Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to show you the comment I left on a tweet when that lineup was announced right here. Okay. This was, this is what I said about this lineup tonight. We boast of depth, Adley clear exception, irreplaceable. But I'm not hearing others say it. We don't have a center fielder to spell Mullins. And what are we doing if he, heaven help us, suffers another injury? I get Mateo has range, but I'd rather see Kowser there. It's his most experienced spot. I mean, I get there's a lefty on the mound. Again, this is why I screamed start the season with Mayo. But the bottom third of this order is weak. At least put Mateo in, in the infield. Westy on third. Urias out of the lineup. Hit Kowser seventh and play him in center field. Whatever. And then I also complained that McCann was already back in the lineup. I mean, we're, we're, we have an off day tomorrow. Mc, Adley can't catch. It's only been four games since the last off day. 
and he already DH'd once in between those games. Okay, underway here, Adley Rutch, or excuse me, uh, Gunnar Henderson at the plate, and after one pitch off the plate, the second one is just a bit outside as well. 2-0 and the count on Gunnar Henderson leading off the bottom of the first. The next one is low this time, and Gunner has a 3-0 count. All right, let's just get a nice early chunk of runs. I want a chunk of runs. Three spot, four spot. Let's go. 3-0 count to Gunner. That's a called strike. Gunner has really, what is going on? That pitch, I don't know if you saw it on the stat tracker, that was low. Here's a swing and a ground ball to the right side. The first baseman has it, flips it to the pitcher, and he covers the base just in time. But Henderson was robbed of a walk on the previous pitch that was five inches below the zone, four inches maybe. I don't know why we don't have people we know we can do better for a series game. Yeah, yeah, we need to win this game. We cannot come out of here losing two out of three to Kansas City and losing th three of our last four games after starting with those two great wins. Here's Rutschman. First pitch to him is a called strike. The 0-1 is tapped foul at the plate. Rutschman quickly in the hole 0-2. He comes in hitting 278. Norfolk versus Charlotte about to begin. Arm Br Brewster is on the mound. Who's a uh, Nartrini? Is that a name worth knowing? Tell me about Nartrini. Here's the pitch to Rutschman. It's inside, but he takes a hack at it, and it's a foul ball. Still 0-2. God, Gunner had a 3-0 count and then got ball four and the umpire called it a strike. I'm still mad about that. Swing and popped up. Shallow right field. The right fielder calls off the second baseman. Renfro making the catch. He came in a long way to make that play. And there are two down here in the bottom of the first. That'll bring up Ryan Mountcastle. Again, hitting third tonight with the left-hander on the mound. Cole Reagans, uh, the four-seam fastball, he throws 33% of the time. That's his uh, go-to pitch. First uh, pitch to Mountcastle is in there for a called strike. And the next one is inside, one and one I'd have to say for the first week of the season, Despite the heroics from Santander, solid play from Adley and Gunner, solid starts from Burns and Grayson, I think uh, if I have to give a week one MVP award for the Orioles, it's my boy Ryan Mountcastle here. Because not only has he been doing it at the plate, he's been doing it on the field as well. Here's a foul ball. I got up and hit Mountcastle. He steps out of the box and collects himself. Two and two the count here with two down, nobody on in the bottom of the first. Kansas City ahead one to nothing. Did I belch into the... Uh, this is a comebacker to the pitcher. Reagans will flip to first and Mountcastle is retired. The Orioles go one, two, three. We headed the second, one nothing Kansas City. Did I belch into the microphone? Really? Normally I'm pretty reserved about that. Coughing, coughing, I, I might, uh, it might be un unpreventable, but belching? Now, now I feel terrible. At least let me know if it had a Baltimore accent. Did my, did my burp had a Baltimore accent or not? Uh, 
Oh, boy. One inning in the books, and we're losing. And there's been some weird stuff that's happened. Again, that rundown with Bobby Witt, only to then have a ball drop into no man's land. Did I really, like, full-on belch into the microphone? If I did, then it, it just tells you how delirious I am. L listen, I don't mind, you know, being less than professional, but I would never intentionally just belch into the microphone. If I did, I'm sorry. That's just not like me. Uh, you know, I go for a lot of low-hanging fruit to get a laugh, but belching into a microphone, that's normally not in my bag. But if it was a good one, well, I guess there's something to hang my hat on. <laughs> I'll have to go back and watch it on the replay. Okay, we're beginning the top of the second. And Adam Frazier, former Oriole from last season, at the plate, he takes one a bit low. Had had the plate. Adley held it there for an extra second, but Burns can't get the call, and he needs the call. He threw 27 pitches in the first. And this one's outside. Misses with the curve, 2-0. and oh. This is not making me happy. Two zero to Frazier is grounded off to the right side. Mountcastle cleans it, cleans it, fields it cleanly. How, how am I going to get through nine innings? Wow, this really is a. Te this is like one of those. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, creepy pasta stories about like experiments done with like sleep deprivation. You're listening to a sleep-deprived de uh, play-by-play caller. Swing and a miss as uh, Fermin steps in and behind in the count 0-1. So, uh, yeah, that last play, uh, I absolutely butchered the call. The 0-1 pitch is low, one ball and one strike. The first was not a ball. All right. Well, there you go. Prepare for more mistakes. The 1-1 one, one to Fermin is on the ground. Gunner fields it and will throw across in time. Two down here in the top of the second. That'll bring up the number nine hitter, Kyle Isbell. I tell you what, though, when I used to live, uh, you know, in and around both uh, Camden Yards and uh, RFK Stadium, I didn't really go to Nationals Park too much. Here's a curveball in there for a called strike. Nothing beat uh, going to games like this where, you know, everybody doesn't show, you know, you can, you can just sit wherever you want. It's an intimate affair. Swing and a miss again. 0 and 2 on Isbell. Two on, or <laughs> two out, nobody on in the top of the second inning. Oh, sorry, Rob. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, hit on the ground and through the right side for a base hit. A two out single for Kyle Isbell, and that will flip the lineup over. For Michael Garcia. Garcia 0 for 1. He struck out looking to begin the ball game. That ball was hit 106 off the bat by Isbell. So Burns has not been very sharp. And this was my worry. You know, like what would he look like if this, uh, you know, every pitcher is different and a lot of pitchers have routines. That if you, uh, you know, if you throw a wrench into the routine, 
you know, that mental preparation, you know, you're like, all right, I'm going to be throwing my first pitch at this time. And next thing you know, you're just sitting around for five hours, two outs, runner at first. And the first pitch to Garcia is pop foul behind the plate. My main concern is his pitch count right now. Hopefully uh, he'll get Garcia here in the next couple of pitches because he's on 37 here in the second. The 0-1 is, here's a stolen base attempt uh, and he's safe. Stolen base for Kyle Isbell. The pitch was a called strike. It's 0-2 the count. But now a runner in scoring position here with two down. So the Royals, they love to run. And it's been pretty effective for them so far in this series. This one's low and away. One ball and two strikes. Hey to the 50 people there in chat as uh, Garcia will call for time. Thanks for being here. Obviously, uh, your boy here has been live streaming since the 1 o'clock original start time through the entire five-hour delay. So, yeah, if you hit that like button, you'd make me feel like it was all worthwhile. Here's the one-two pitch, and that's low. Two balls, two strikes, two out, and a runner on second. Twos are wild here, and Burns is already up to 40 pitches. The 2-2, two -two outside. Maybe a little low, too. And the count goes full. Base open, but you got Bobby Wood Jr. on deck. You want to get this guy out and get him out now. And here's a fake as Burns steps off and looks the runner back to second. Yeah, this is the great all-nighter. I'm telling you, folks, if I've ever earned a like or a subscribe, it's tonight. The 3-2 pitch is hit on the ground to short. Gunner on one hop. Across the diamond, low throw, but Mountcastle is able to handle it, and the Orioles get out of the inning. But Corbin Burns has to throw another hefty amount of pitches. He doesn't give up a run, but uh, it's been a struggle through two innings, a run on four hits. Hopefully he can throw some clean innings here coming up. We go to the bottom of the second, one nothing Kansas City. And, yeah, your boy, oh, man. You know, I might set up a stream and just point the camera at my bed and call it the watch me sleep for 17 straight hours stream because I got a feeling that's what's up next. If it wasn't for my bladder, I think I could go 17 hours. Hey, base, what's going on? What's up? Me barely. The epitome of dedication. That's right. Yeah, we got base. Wait, didn't we have a I got yeah, we got Rob and we got base. Now all we need is DJ Easy Rock. Cause you know your boy here is delirious. It takes two to make a thing go right. It takes two to make it out of sight. I want to rock right now. I'm Rob Bass and I came to get down. I'm not internationally known, but I'm known to rock the microphone. All right, I'll stop right there. Listen, again, I'm delirious. And I'm asking everyone watching my stream tonight to give me a free pass. Bottom 11, the Yankees up 6-4 to four on the Diamondbacks. Here, I want to change the lyrics to that song. 
I want to sleep right now. My name is Steve, and I came to go to sleep. I'm not internationally known. In fact, I'm not even locally known. All right, here we go to the bottom of the second. Santander to lead off. First pitch to him is a curveball for a called strike. Cole Reagan's nipping the bottom of the zone for strike one to Santander. And the next one is line foul off to the left. Nice play over there by the ball boy, ball, ball young man, ball something. Uh, the 0-2 to Santander. Upstairs, and he's just able to lay off. One and two the count. Hey, Pierre, was my uh, impression of It Takes Two so good that I might get a copyright strike? Here's a tapper back to Reagans, who has to field, and he will toss out Santander, who's not too fleet of foot. How many times have we grounded out to the pitcher in this series? I know we did it last night about three or four times. That's the second time today, and that's just the first out here in the second inning. I mean, come on. What are we playing here, a wiffle ball? Can we barrel up a baseball, please? Here's a called strike to Jordan Westberg, who's hitting in the five hole here. Westberg was the hero in the first game of the series with the walk-off homer. This one's a little bit low, one and one. Whew. Lizzie, Lizzie might need some time off. Swing and a miss. That was a ball moving in on the hands of Westberg off the plate inside, and he uh, came up empty, 95 miles an hour. Boy, that ball was moving. Here's a changeup. That goes low and into the dirt. One ball and two strikes. Excuse me, two balls, two strikes on Jordan Westberg. One down, base is empty, bottom of the second. The next one from Reagans is swung on a missed. 88 miles an hour at the bottom of the zone. Westberg comes up empty. Two down, nobody on, and the batter, Austin Hayes. Oh, hey, boy. Can we get some offense, please? I mean, last night was abysmal, and I don't want to see a repeat. And the first pitch to Hayes is a curveball that catches the outside corner at the – I mean, that ball – you can't do anything with that pitch. Perfectly placed. 0-1-1 the count. Next one is inside 1-1. But Austin Hayes is hitting a robust 133 in the early going. The 1-1 one, one is inside. Two balls, one strike to the Orioles' left fielder, Austin Hayes. Hey, what's going on there, Isaac? Oh, you already asked me about Lizzie. Oh, I'm sure she'll be around. Here's a swing and a miss at a ball in the dirt. That was a nasty change up there. Two and two the count. And Reagan's kicks and deals. This one is outside, and we've run the count full. Base is empty, two down, and a full count incoming to Austin Hayes. Were he to reach, Jorge Mateo is on deck. The payoff is in there, called strike three. That ball had the plate, low, low part of the zone. Hayes should have offered at it. He got crossed up, and he'll go down looking. At the end of two, it's the Royals won, the Orioles nothing. And I mean nothing, zeros across the board. You telling me your boy... After going all this time, is going to sit here and watch the offense sputter their way like they did last night 
I'll accept it for a couple of innings. I'll accept it. It happens. First time through the order, you never know. But uh, if I see anything like this second time through, I'm going to start uh, getting a little agitated. I'm going to be honest with you. I need to see a little more offense. I need, I want to see a response after uh, last night's uh, no-show. You know? What's going on there, Spooky? The pitching coach has dominated us the entire series. I'm telling you this. That Marsh kid looked so comfortable out there last night while everybody else looked like they just wanted to go home. That was that to me was, the, you know, nothing else really mattered. It was a, a pitcher. It was just one of those things where, you know, a pitcher with not a whole lot of fanfare, not a whole lot of expectation, pitches like his best start of his major league career in a bad weather game where an opposing team just isn't in the mood to really, you know, work the count, play along. You know what I mean? It just it was just a perfectly bad scenario, but we can't have a repeat of that tonight. All right, we're going to the top of the third. Burns is out there and Bobby Witt at the plate. First pitch is off the plate for ball one. Uh, what was the word card? First of all, I'm not monetized yet. Second of all, what, I mean, unless it was like hate speech, what, what am I not allowed to say without getting a strike? Have you heard me on my other channel? <laughs> uh, Bobby Witt Jr. gets on and up steps Vinny Pascatino. I'm sorry, I didn't see how he reached. It was right when I looked at the comment there. And there goes Wit. Throw down. Wit's in there. God, this dude. You, he is just a menace. An absolute menace. The Royals have another runner in scoring position with nobody out. Card, I don't know if you're either uncomfortable or feel like it's not safe to type in whatever the word is I said, but I wish there was a way you could tell me what it was because I'm honestly curious. This one's hitting the air to right. Santander catches. Witt will tag, but only fake to go to third. And luckily, we hold Bobby Witt Jr. at second base, one down here in the third. Yeah. Uh, I just don't know what the serious cussing was. And, and by the way, like, I already broke the rule because during that five-hour rain delay, I dropped the F-bomb like three or four times. But uh, that that isn't... Uh, <laughs> that isn't the... By the way, I'll also say this. Uh, NYY Underground, uh, the New York Yankees version of a channel like this, they curse. He's got 25,000 subs. He's uh he's doing all right. Sally Perez at the plate with one down and Bobby Witt Jr. at second base. First pitch is off the plate, one and oh. All right, I'll do the wild bill cheer uh between innings if we can not give up a run. Here's a as I say that, it's a base hit in the right field and Bobby Witt Jr. scores. Good God. Uh, two nothing Royals. Sally Perez with an RBI single to the opposite field. Bobby Witt Jr. scores easily. He's just who is? Is he the Flash? New Yorkers cuss a lot. Well, have you ever been to Baltimore? One out, runner at first. And sorry about the animation being off here. Uh, it's Melendez at the plate. He takes a called strike, 0-1.
Melendez doubled back in the first. This will be the 50th pitch from Burns. And that's low. One ball, one strike. One out, one in, and a runner on first. Yeah, that's what I figured, Pure. Like, if I said something that was, uh, you know, like a curse word, I don't think it was used in any sort of, you know, crazy way. It's like a PG-13 movie. Like, you're allowed, like, a couple of bad words, right? <laughs> One and two the count. And the next pitch from Burns is on the outside and not on the plate. Two and two the count. Burns with another deep count. I don't know how long he's going to go, but right now he's on pace to get through five innings at best, which is not what I was hoping for. The pitch is low three and two, so he works this count full. Next pitch will be number 54 here in the third inning with only one out. This is our ace who's pitching like Sidney Ponson right now. No offense, Sidney, but you know. Uh, the payoff pitch swung on, grounded to the right. Mountcastle tags the bag, goes to second, and the ball is butchered out there. But luckily, it's Sally Perez, the runner at second, who is not going anywhere. Uh, Mountcastle's throw to second was low. I guess that would have been. Uh, wait a minute. It's West. It's uh, Westberg at second, right? Oh, Gun no, it was Gunner who was uh, there to handle the throw from Mountcastle. And it was to his right. He was trying to keep his foot on the bag but he couldn't do both. So almost a double play there. Bottom line now, there's two down and a rudder in second. Hunter Renfro at the plate, 0 for 1 tonight. The pitch is low. So all good on the uh, language front. Again, I admit it. I dropped probably 15 F-bombs between the third and fifth hour of rain delay. Here's a swing and a miss on a nice pitch on the outside edge. One and one the count on Renfro. Two down, a run in here in the top of the third. Kansas City ahead two to nothing here in the final game of a three-game series, the rubber game. And this one's off the plate, two and one. Burns, come on, man. What are you doing? Stay ahead of the count. Stop working these deep counts. The two one is swung on, hit on the ground and past the dive, diving glove of Henderson for a base hit. Once again, the slow speed of Salvador Perez helps out the Orioles as he can only make it to third base. So now runners at first and third and two down. Boy, I tell you what. What they need to do is make a player with the combination of Bobby Witt's speed and Salvador Perez's speed. Because one is just too fast and the other one is just too slow. Uh, Kevin Brown just read off a stat that there's a, they measure sprint speed. And of the 369 major league players who are ranked in the sprint speed, uh, Sally ranks 362. So apparently there's six or seven other guys slower than him. So he's got that going for him, which is nice. Two down and a ground ball by Frazier on the first pitch is to second base. And the Orioles get out of the inning. 
Burns has to throw a lot of pitches again. The Royals have seven hits through the first three innings. I guess we kind of have to consider ourselves lucky that we've only given up two runs. We'll go to the bottom of the third. Kansas City two, the Orioles nothing, sending up the bottom of the order, which, by the way, again, I said this when the lineup card came out. You, you can't have the bottom three be this weak. Because I'm telling you right now, I don't have a whole lot of faith in suddenly breaking through on Cole Reagans, sending up Mateo, McCann, and Urias. Uh, I know it's early, but these kids look soft in bad weather. Yeah, I don't want to, like, come down on the whole team. But, uh, you know, between the weather and uh, the delay and the fact that, like, you're, like, waiting to get on a plane, although it's just to Pittsburgh. I mean, what are we talking about, a one-hour flight? It's not that big of a deal. And you got the whole day off tomorrow. I don't know. You, w I, I was hoping to see... Uh, I mean, you know, not to take anything away from Cole Reagans. I mean, it's a good young pitcher. It's Kansas City's best arm. So, but still, after last night where it felt like we just could not square up the baseball to save our lives, I just want to see us getting back to just hitting some line drives, even if they're for outs. I just, I want to see some solid strokes. It's been a few days. Oh, no worries, card. No worries. Hey, card, when it comes to modding uh, for this channel, it's really just about, uh, you know, if there's hate speech, that's not accepted. If people want to be off topic, that's fine. Uh... It's pretty much spamming, hate speech, or people are just, you know, clearly here just to agitate people in some way. You know, I'm sure your best judgment will be just fine. Jorge Mateo at the plate. The first pitch was a ball, and the next one is in there for a strike. So one on one the count on Mateo leading off the bottom of the third. Mateo is hitting 400 at the beginning of the season. Swing and a miss here. On a pitch at the bottom of the zone on the outside edge. The one two. And then once again, Reagans catches that outside edge, bottom of the zone, and Mateo is caught looking. <sighs> we bat Mateo seventh, we put him in center field. He's already made two miscues out there. They weren't errors. And one was a diving catch attempt, but I'm just saying, Mullins makes that catch. Here's Brian McCann. He takes a called strike on the outside corner, 0-1. And, and then you bat him seventh and uh, striking out looking. Ugh. Swing and a miss, 0-2 on McCann. Wow, from that angle, there is practically nobody sitting anywhere out beyond the uh, the bags down either uh, side of the baselines in the stands. They've never really shown a wide shot of the ballpark, and I can imagine why. There may, there may only be a few thousand people there. Here's a ground ball. That's a fair ball at third base, and McCann will not be able to beat out that throw. He's retired. Two down here in the bottom of the third. And up steps Ramon Urias. Urias has probably been the most frustrating player on the team so far in terms of uh, contributions. Uh, they've been little to none. In fact, they've been sort of Less than none, if you count the error he made a couple of games ago. Owen won the count on Urias.
The next pitch is tap back in front of the mound. Another comebacker to the pitcher. Third one in this game in three innings. So of the nine outs, three have been comebackers to the pitcher. He's also got how many strikeouts? I mean, the Orioles' bats are ice cold right now. Ice cold. And yeah, like I thought, sending those three batters up, don't expect much of a rally. Just not a strong bottom of the order. We can do better. We go to the fourth. Kansas City 2, Orioles nothing. And I am delirious. You got to be kidding me. A five-hour wait. This could be worse than my boy Rhino. My boy Rising Rhino, shout out to him. Uh, I'm just too lacking energy to even type in a link right now. But listen, just search Rising, R-I-S-I-N-G, Rhino, R-H-I-N-O. This dude has a great uh, live stream sports coverage channel. And he covers the Rockies. Uh, at least he dabbles. And he covered their opening day game where uh, the Diamondbacks scored 14 runs in an inning. Imagine having to call that. Hey, Tomek. You can continue to, you know, say that the Orioles stink, but after you say it like three times, then what? I've been streaming for like six hours, dude. <laughs> Uh, let's see how much stamina you have. All right. Top of the fourth we go. Two runs, seven hits, and no errors for the Royals. They've left five men on base in the first three innings. The Orioles with nothing but goose eggs across the board. Leading it off here for the Royals. The Royals is Fermin. And he's first pitch swinging, soft liner to third. Urias catches it in the air just above the ground for out number one. A one pitch out for Corbin Burns. How about that? I'll take that. That is the biggest highlight of the game today. A one pitch out. That is, honestly, that has been the best thing in this game so far. All right, Isbell in there, and he takes a strike low in the zone. 0-1 on him. He has singled and stolen the base tonight. The next one's low, 1-1. One one. Yeah, that, uh, I, that inning uh, really had to get... Uh, how am I negative? I'm, I'm only telling you like it is. All right, this ball is on the ground and handled at second base. Isbell will ground out, and there's two away. Look, if I'm telling you Burns' pitch count is high, that's not being negative. If I'm telling you the bats are ice cold, that's not being negative. That's telling you like it is. They've barely gotten the ball out of the infield. I love my Orioles. I want to see them kick some butt I know they got it I know they got it in them I'm not coming down on them I'm just telling you what's happening man two down nobody on in the top of the fourth and back to the top of the order for Garcia there's a broken bat Gunnar Henderson with a diving stop from the outfield grass. No chance to get him. Too much speed. Henderson with a nice athletic play, but uh, no chance to get the fleet-footed Garcia. Infield single with two down here in the top of the fourth. He's allowed to think the team sucks and be here. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. I'm just wondering... Uh, you know, after you say a team sucks like three times, like what's left to really say at that point? You kind of got your point across at that point, right? 
Have I totally missed the plot? I'm sorry. If I've got something confused again, I, I, I gave a disclaimer at the start of the, the ball game that I'm delirious and I might not read the chat uh, as well as usual. Here's a stolen base attempt and Garcia. He made a strange gesture as if he was waving for like the trainer as soon as he stole that base. What was that move? Was that like a... I don't know if that was just sort of a gesture of uh, pumping up the guys in the dugout, or I guess I guess he's fine. Okay, stolen base, two outs. Bobby Witt Jr. at the plate with an 0-1 count, and the next one is over the plate but low, one ball and one strike. Okay, we all we all straight there in chat. Everybody cool? We're just here to watch some baseball. This is Charm City. Let's act charming. Burn steps off. One and one the count on Wit here. Top of the fourth. Two down. Runner at second. The pitch. Popped up. Center field, Mateo should have this. He's backing up and about two steps in front of the track will make the catch. That is the end of the top of the fourth. The Royals have eight hits through the first four innings, but Burns has kept them to just two runs. So, well, they flashed eight hits on my screen. I still see seven hits on the uh, ESPN graphic here. According to the Masson broadcast, there's eight hits. Yeah, actually, you can see right here, eight hits for Burns. He has scattered them. No walks, eight hits, two runs. We need to rally. Okay, who was talking about where's the enthusiasm? Who's talking about I'm negative? Who's talking about getting fired up? Because you want it, you got it. We're going to the bottom of the fourth. We're sending up Gunner. We're sending up Adley. We're sending up Mountcastle. And if any of them get on, we got Santander. Let's effing go and get a rally. All right? How's that? And I'm out of coffee. And the sun is actually coming up behind me. Wow. Wow. A game that was supposed to start five minutes after midnight, my time, and I am now staring at the morning sun. Happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday morning to you. As we go to the bottom of the fourth. Yeah, let's go. How about some more of those celebratory... Uh, I don't know, confetti or whatever that little emoji is. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. See? Look at that. Am I firing you guys up? There you go. There's a bit of a lag. There's a bit of a lag in the chat, but let's go. All right? Here's Gunner at the plate. First pitch, called strike on the outside corner. I'll give you a, I'll give you a game to call. That's the 40th pitch from Reagans. Gunner is 0 for 1 so far tonight. Next pitch, low and away, one and one. Yeah, we're we're gonna yeah hit that button, hit that yeah we're yeah we're. I'm gonna try it. That's the best I can do. The one one to Henderson. Hit on the ground, foul off to the right. One ball and two strikes. I'm waiting for somebody to type in charge any second now. The one-two pitch is hit in front of the catcher. That's a fair ball. Throw to first and they'll get him. So Henderson taps one about two feet in front of the plate. So, 
again, there's been three comebackers to Reagan's, and now that one was just hit in front of the catcher. That's four outs made from a ball that c couldn't get past the pitcher's mound. One down for Rutschman, and he takes Lowen in for ball one. Adley hitting from the right side, 0 for 1 so far tonight. There is a charge. All right. There's a couple of charges. The 1 0 pitch is swung on and hit foul at the plate. That might have got a piece of Rutschman as he sort of. Uh, what do you call it? Waddles his way around the batter's box. Yeah, it looks like they're giving Adley just a little extra time to recover from a foul ball. Here comes the 1-1. One -one. Hit on the ground, but foul off to the right. One ball and two strikes. Orioles looking for any spark they can get. They are now about one and a half games removed from any semblance of offense. The pitch, this one is hit in the left center field. This will get down between uh, left and center. Rutschman's going to try for second, and he'll get there. A hustle double for Adley Rutschman. There you go. There you go. Turn on the sprinklers. I cannot believe Mr. Splash is out there right now in these conditions. <laughs> Mr. Splash putting in the work. Let's go. Folks, we've got a runner in scoring position. Wave the orange towels. Here comes Ryan Mountcastle, one of the best Hitters of left-handed pitching in the league, and he takes low and away for ball one. And at this point, folks, you're not going to be looking at that animation. I am going to just get that out of the way because I want to see, without any spoilers, the 1-0 coming to Mountcastle from Reagan's is swung on a missed. He chased one low. Rutschman at second. The Orioles looking for their first run of the ball game. There's one out. And probably our best hitter right now at the plate in Ryan Mountcastle. The pitch swung on and hit opposite. Oh, gosh, darn it. Mountcastle hits it off the end of the bat the other way, and it's a liner to first base caught by Perez. Ugh. And you know Perez doesn't have a whole lot of range. So that ball had to hit, be hit right to him. Mountcastle retired, and there are two down. Here comes Santander. First pitch to him is in the dirt. Fermin quickly pounces on it. Adley Rutschman stays at second base. No need to test in this situation with two down. How's it going, chat? Hey, folks. Just a quick reminder, you can take just a second, if you don't mind, and hit that like button that's just below the screen. Brand new channel, just getting started. Happy to have you. Here's one low and away to Santander, and the count goes to 2-0. and oh. And if you really want to go the extra mile, there's a subscribe button. I'd love to hit a goal tonight, but I haven't even thought about it yet. I'm too busy worried about giving you this coverage. The 2-0 pitch. Low and away, 3-0. and Okay. We haven't had a walk in a long time. Did we get a walk last night off of uh, Marsh? I don't think we did. How about a good old-fashioned walk? I'll take it. The 3-0 to Santander. And he's taking all the way. Called strike. Bottom of the zone. 3-1 and one the count.
This has definitely been the most uh, work in any inning so far for Reagans. The 3-1 pitch, that one is lined but foul off to the left. And the count runs full. We have 100 people here right now. Hello, 100. Hello, 100. Yeah, you might make me do what I don't want to have to do. You know what? I'm not going to do it right now. It's too too important. Full count, two down. The pitch to Santander is swing and a miss. And Santander tosses his bat in frustration. Santander goes down on strikes. The Orioles leave a runner at second at the end of four. It's Kansas City two, the Orioles nothing. Folks, it's been a frustrating night, a five-hour rain delay. Your boy is 12 time zones away. Your boy was live streaming the Orioles game from last night. That was my morning, okay? (laughs) And then... I was like, well, I guess the next game's at midnight. I can stay up. And then midnight came, and then a five-hour rain delay came. And now we're in a ball game. So your boy is uh, sleep-deprived, a little bit delirious, but excited to bring you Orioles baseball coverage despite... (laughs) Every reason to just uh, collapse right now. It's 2 nothing Royals. The Orioles have just one hit. That Rutschman double in the bottom of the fourth was the first hit for the Orioles today. And it seems like every time the Royals come up to hit, they're bringing up the heart of their order. Hey, care packages are always welcome. But again, I'm such a new channel and I'm so not focused on stuff like donations or setting up sites for like Patreons or any of that stuff. Uh, I haven't even uh, I haven't even addressed it yet. My main goal right now is to hopefully convince people out there that I'm a channel worth uh, checking in with. I want to. I want. I want to. You know, grow an audience. I. I want. I want to. You know. Earn. Earn your respect. <laughs> and then maybe uh, I can start thinking about growing the channel a little bit more. Because sure, I. This is what I want to do. This is my thing. Okay, top of the fifth we go. And here's a check swing. No swing, says the third base umpire, as Pascatino is in there. 0 for 2 so far tonight, but he has scored a run, having reached on a fielder's choice in his first at-bat. 1-0 pitch is spiked in the dirt about two feet in front of the plate, 2-0. and I do have a uh, donation, uh, a, a, a Ko-Fi, K-O-Fi, I don't even know how you pronounce it, page set up for my other YouTube channel. Here's a pitch low and in, apparently. Burns wanted that call, and so did I. Instead, it's 3-0 and on Pascatino. And last thing we can afford here is a leadoff walk. The pitch swung on and fouled off to the right. Pascatino might have helped out Burns there. Looks like it had the outs or the inside corner of the zone, but typically on a 3-0 count, you take a pitch that far in. Here's the 3-1. Another ground ball foul off to the right, and now the count goes full. Top of the fifth, leadoff man Vinny Pascatino. Working with a full count, Corbin Burns about to throw his 73rd pitch of the ball game on a long, rainy day in Baltimore. The pitch popped up foul and off to the left. Another long at bat for Burns. Mm, mm, mm. If there is any, uh, it's more of a mist than a uh, light rain, I would say, at this point. 
Here's a pop-up. Right center. Santander calling off Mateo. And he'll make the catch. One down here in the top of the fifth. That'll bring up Salvador Perez. He's got a couple of hits tonight and a, driven in both of Kansas City's runs. Uh, let me see. There's, there's been some other stuff in the chat. Crazy you can get the game on Mars, but I can't on the East Coast. I know, right, Evan? That's another reason for the channel. Uh, I know there's a lot of you out there and a lot of you in the Baltimore area who, who get games blacked out or whatever you know package you might have. You, you might get screwed, maybe an Apple game or something. I'm here for you for every game, okay? The 0-1 pitch to Perez is fouled back 0-2. Look, I'm not as good as Kevin Brown. I never will be at calling a game. I'm not as uh, good of a color guy as Ben McDonald. I'm just a regular guy doing his best to call a ball game for you. Here's a swing and a soft liner in the left field for a base hit. That's the third hit of the game for Perez here in the fifth inning. Perez three for three off of Corbin Burns. 110, I said soft, I take it back, 110 off the bat. What was I talking about? And I know I pick on you for being slow, but I can't pick on you for hitting the ball slow. That ball was hit hard. Here's a called strike at the bottom of the zone to MJ Melendez. One out, runner at first, top of the fifth. Kansas City with a 2-0 lead. The Orioles just waiting to open the floodgates and get some offense going. This one's in the dirt, 1-1. One one. Hey, Card, I appreciate it. And, and I try to walk that line somewhat. I mean, I, I want to let my true emotions out, but I also do want to Try to call it somewhat professionally as best I can. The 1-1 one, one pitch on the ground foul into the dugout on the Orioles' side. Still 1-2 and two on Melendez. Burns now on 80 pitches. With one out, this could be his last inning. This one's in the dirt. Check swing, he doesn't go, two and two. And once again, another at bat with at least five, four or five pitches. I mean, just how many one pitch outs tonight? I think one. I would say out of the, I mean, how many times have we been through the order now? Like two and a half times? So that's what, like, tw like 22 batters? Here's a pop-up to right. Backing up is Santander. He's on the track. He's at the wall and makes the catch. Boy, on another night, that ball probably leaves, leaves the yard on a hot summer night, but not on a cold, blistery night here. That ball hung up, and Santander able to make the catch on the track. Two down with a runner still at first base. Hey, thanks, Mabel. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the uh, compliment and vote of confidence. Two down now. Renfro at the plate, and he'll take just off the plate for ball one. Renfro tonight has a single, which is breaking news because I believe that's his first base hit of the season. One for two. The next pitch is in there. That's what I've wanted to see from Burns tonight from the get-go. That was just a come and hit me fastball or cut fastball. And Renfro let it go. One and one the count. And now my uh, broadcast just froze. Okay, it's back on. Swing and a miss. 
That might be Burns' hardest pitch of the night. 96 mile an hour cutter. Top of the zone. That was pretty nasty. All right, maybe Burns has got a little bit something in the tank. Maybe he knows, you know, he's got only so much time left in this one, and he's going to empty the tank here. The one-two to Renfro. He reaches for one off the plate and fouls it away. A defensive swing. Count remains a ball and two strikes. Runner at first base. Two down in the top of the fifth. Kansas City ahead 2 nothing here in this rubber game of a three-game series to close out the opening homestand at Camden Yards. The Orioles will be off for Pittsburgh tomorrow to start a series on Friday. Here's a ground ball to third. Urias fields across the diamond to Mountcastle, and the inning is over. We are halfway through this one. Burns has his hands uh, inspected as he goes back to the dugout. And we'll see if he comes out for another inning or not. I'm not sure. I mean, considering uh, the delay start, the conditions out there, and the fact that he's already into the 80s, I mean, do you really expect him to go out there and throw a 10-pitch inning the way it's been going? I don't think so. I would assume there's at least somebody getting up in the bullpen while we uh, get ready to hit in the bottom of the fifth. There is Rishi Rich in the house, wishing everyone a good day. Hey, how about this for being a decent time to go and check? Folks, again, just a little bit of self-indulgence, just a little bit of real-time check-in. You know, follow along with me. You're part of the family. Let's watch this channel grow together, you know what I mean? Uh, I came in today, uh, what are we talking about, uh, with 162... I think 164 subs at the start of the day, 164. Looks like it's at 182. That's 18 new subs today. Thank you guys so much. A couple of more would make it an even 20 on the day. That would be pretty cool. You know, sometimes you throw the live count up there, and it gets people a little hype. They're like, you know what? I could be one of those next 18 subscribers. Ooh. Be one of the first 200 for this channel that's bound to grow as the season wears on. A season that you're going to want to remember, folks. All right? Look at that. Can I give you a sales pitch or what? Oh, I know we're not at the seventh inning stretch yet, but I need to stretch. We're going to the bottom of the fifth. The Orioles have just one hit so far. Jordan Westberg is going to lead it off. And he'll take a first pitch strike right in there from Cole Reagans. Reagans has been fantastic so far tonight. Uh, the Orioles have barely been able to get the ball out of the infield. Just one hit so far. This one is low. One ball, one strike. I'm calling it. We're, we're rallying here. We're rallying. Even though it's the bottom half of the order, I'm calling it. Come on, Westy. Get on base, buddy. A 1-1 one, one pitch. Swing and a miss. Ah, ha. Ah. That was a hittable pitch. That ball was pretty much in the middle of the zone. The 1-2 is foul back, and Westberg stays alive. Yeah, folks, be sure uh, once my ball game is over, Head on over to Pure Stream, and uh, Fitzy might be still stream. I don't know who will be streaming by the time I'm I'm over. I don't know. Anyway, uh, this ball is off the plate, and the count moves to two and two. Westberg leading off the bottom of the fifth. Here is a swing and a miss. A pitch at the bottom of the zone. First batter of the inning strikes out. Ugh. We have had trouble these past couple of games getting a leadoff man on to get that rally started. And yes, there is definitely a, a mist in the air, if not a, just a flat-out light rain. 
One down for Austin Hayes. First pitch is swung on. Backhanded a third base right at the foul line. On a bounce across the diamond, he gets Hayes. Wow, that's a nice play. So the Orioles have two out already here. As Garcia backhands the ball right on the third base line and throws a strike on a hop across the diamond to retire Hayes. Two away now for Jorge Mateo. What are you doing hitting seventh in the lineup? I don't know. The 0-1 pitch outside, 0-2. Oh, excuse me, 1-1. One one. <laughs> There's the next mistake. Mateo's up on deck is Brian McCann. Excuse me, James Brian James McCann? Oh, my God. I said Brian. I'm delirious, guys. I'm delirious. No, it's not ex-Braves catcher Brian McCann. It's James McCann on deck. One and two the count on Mateo, and your boy is dog-tired. The pitch in the dirt, two and two. You know, see, the problem here is if Mateo makes the third out, then the next inning, it's McCann leading off, followed by Urias. Does that sound like a rally inning to you? So that then you're through six innings. You know what I mean? And a swing and a miss by Mateo. He slams the bat down. Boy, the Orioles' body language throughout the entire team is not good right now. It is not good. And Mateo has really struggled both at the plate and in the field tonight. It's been a bit of a tough watch for two straight nights, but at least last night I didn't have to wait five hours to then watch a tough game. My God. This is like 1999 waiting like four hours in line to see the Phantom Menace. That's what this feels like. Ugh. I tell you what. Do up for Kansas City. To start the sixth inning will be uh, the bottom of their order. Frazier, Fermin, and Isbell. Let's see if the Orioles stick with Burns or if they're going to go to the pen. My money would be on a bullpen change. Maybe uh, they'll show us here. Oh. Burns is still listed as the only pitcher. I th He's on 87 pitches. I, I wouldn't. I honestly, I wouldn't. He's given up nine hits. He, you know, he hasn't walked anybody, and he's done well to get out of jams. But 87 pitches already, if he's dominant, maybe you, you go out there and get another inning out of him. But honestly, we got four shutout innings from our bullpen last night. I don't know if I'll be happy if he's out here to start the sixth because you want, if you're putting out there to start the sixth, you're hoping that he f pitches the inning, not just gets like one batter out. Let's see what's going on here. It is still Corbin Burns on the mound. Okay. Here we go. I guess this is the next sort of battle of wits between me and Brandon Hyde. If I'm Brandon Hyde here, I would have called it a day for Burns at 87 pitches. Mike Ballman is up and getting loose for the Orioles right now in the pen, the right-handed reliever. So any sort of uh, trouble, and that's probably who we'll be going to, Stowers doubles to score Mayo and rec and record third RBI of the night or record third RBI of the night. Nice. Another good night for Stowers. Norfolk. What's Norfolk's re uh, record so far, Sean? Have, uh, have they lost? <laughs> Yeah. 
We're still waiting to get to the top of the six cylinder way. I'm not sure what the delay is right now. Okay. Batter in the box. Again, bottom of the order for the Royals. Adam Frazier up first, and the first pitch to him is on the outside corner. Generous call there. Strike one. Frazier has grounded out twice. Next pitch is bottom of the zone called strike two. Hey, what do you know? Burns is ahead of a hitter 0-2. I can't remember the last time that's happened, if at all, tonight. I think the first batter of the game, he struck out on three pitches. That might have been the last time. The next pitch is high, and Frazier is fighting it off foul to stay alive 0-2. I can probably go ahead and turn off my indoor lighting now. Here is a ball hit on the ground foul off to the right, and the count remains no balls and two strikes. And in fact, I won't miss a pitch, guys. I've just two seconds. This artificial light has to go. Okay, I'll wait one more pitch. I'm ready to turn off the artificial light. Uh, the 0-2 is hit back up the middle. Gunner is well positioned to field it and will retire for me, excuse me, Frazier, to begin the top of the sixth. One down and the batter, Fermin. All right, hold on. All right. How dark is it in here? First pitch to Fermin is swung on a missed. High above the zone, and he chased 0-1. Now there's a lot of light pouring in from behind me. Okay. Duly noted. One and one the count now, as this one is just a little bit low and away. For me, 0 for 2 tonight. Base is empty, one down here in the top of the sixth. The 1-1 one, one to Fermin is over the plate, but a little low. Rutschman tried to frame it. Excuse me, McCann behind the plate tried to frame it. Does not get the call. Two and one. The next pitch is swung on a missed. Fermin went after that one that might have been a couple inches off the plate outside. 96 pitches now for Burns. Approaching 100. All right, I might uh, just close. I don't know if closing the uh, drapes the drapes behind me will be better or worse. I need to buy a ring light, by the way. Here's a foul ball off to the right. Yeah, when it comes to my channel and growing it and making the presentation better and a little more user-friendly or aesthetically pleasing to the eye. I got to buy one of those ring lights uh, so I don't have to rely on natural light or my awful artificial light here. This has popped up. It's uh, in foul ground. Having a look as Mountcastle, he leans on the tarp, but it's back into the stands. Two and two the count on Fermin, and with that play, it's going to be a few seconds for the next pitch. Okay, I bet it's really dark now, right? Oh, no, that's not bad at all. Oh, that's, that's fine. I don't need to be uh, lit like, uh, you know. I'm a model or something. I'm just a dude wearing a hat in the corner of the screen. Don't worry about me. Okay, we're about to see pitch number 100 on the day from Corbin Burns. This is the eighth pitch of this at bat. And it's a check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. A strikeout. Two down here. And let's see if this 100 pitch count is the limit for Corbin Burns. It would be a good time to remove him 
And indeed, that's going to be the play. 100 pitches on the nose. Corbin Burns. It was uh, not his best outing by any means. Nine hits given up through five and two-thirds innings, but only the two runs. So he didn't have his best stuff today, but uh, he did well enough to sort of manage what he had and keep the Orioles in the ballgame. It really is on this offense to wake up and get us going. Let's go. I mean, when our offense is clicking, we're putting up uh, half a dozen runs like it's uh, nobody's business, like it's nothing. And we don't even need six runs. We didn't need six runs last night. Five would have done. But uh, these last couple of games, come on. We're going to be facing... Some rotations a lot tougher than this one, I can tell you that much. We're going to get pumped, though. We're going to get this last out. In this. Look, it's the top of the six, folks. We still got the bottom of the six, seventh, eighth, ninth. I'm not saying this one's over. I've seen the Orioles magic too many times, baby. I've seen Orioles magic. Well, I can't say too many because you can never have enough. But I've seen enough to know. Uh, this game is not over. But where's the spark? That's what I want to know. Where is the spark going to come from? We need it. The final line on Burns. Well, I guess it's not final. Well, yeah, the bases are empty, so it is final. Well, they only flashed it on the screen for 0.8 seconds. I can't even tell you what it said. Okay, Mike Ballman is indeed on to replace Burns. First pitch to Isbell is in there for a called strike. 95-mile-an-hour fastball. Ballman's making uh, his third appearance already, and there's a swing and a miss. Little knuckle curve there in on the hands, 0-2. Isbell one for two tonight, a single and a stolen base. The 0-2, top of the zone and doesn't get the call. Ugh. The umpire stood up almost as if to make a motion for strike three, but McCann framed it nicely. The ball did clip the top of the zone, but we don't get the call. One and two the count. And the next pitch is hit on the ground toward the right side. Mountcastle will scoop it up and tag the bag all in one motion. And that will end the sixth, at least the top of the sixth, as the Royals get another hit, but leave them out there. That's two runs on nine hits. Corbin Burns, you can shut the door on him. Five and two-thirds, nine hits, no walks, two runs, only three strikeouts, by the way. Three strikeouts. I mean, not for nothing, but, like, Hunter Renfro strikes out a lot. I mean, come on, MJ Melendez. I mean, Fermin. Three strikeouts? Eesh. Nine hits. Three strikeouts, five and two-thirds. That is not ace material. But, again, he's done enough to where you can't put it on him if we can't win this game. We got we to gotta start looking at our offense here. Tonight we got one hit, Adley. That's it. Over, 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 over. And how many times have we... Uh, Hit pop-ups on the infield, comebackers to the pitcher, swinging at the first pitch, not working counts. We 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 got to put the pressure on the pitcher. I don't know why we're playing with it with like like we got pressure on. What's the deal? Like play free and easy. 
It's okay. Last night stunk. I'm not worried about it. But, you know, let's just get something going here. All right. You'll help me be better. I don't know if that's possible, but I appreciate the sentiment. Single and double by Charlotte. Game now tied at four. I'm sorry, Sean. I was asking earlier what Norfolk's record was on the season. If he typed it in, I missed it. Uh, bottom of the sixth we go. Reagans is out there for his sixth inning of work. The first pitch is low and inside to Ramon Urias. I'm sorry, James McCann. I'm sorry, that was McCann at the plate. Don't ask me how I mistook McCann for Urias. And here is a line drive to third, caught by uh, Garcia for out number one. Now Urias comes to the plate with one out here in the bottom of the sixth. And again, like I said in the last inning, we're going to come up in the next inning sending McCann up first and then Urias like... Uh, first pitch to Urias is a called strike, 0-1-1. I don't believe what I just saw out of the corner of my eye. Are you kidding me? Again? Inside, one on one. Again? We can't get the ball past the pitcher? Again? The one one is a comebacker to the pitcher. Flip to first. Urias out on a comebacker to the pitcher. That is the fifth comebacker tonight. I've lost count. Honestly, the Orioles offense could be played in a wiffle ball park right now, and we'd still have no runs on the board. Come on. Here's Gunner on the first pitch. He swings and hits one into left center, but enough room there for Isbell to make the catch without too much worry. And the Orioles are retired quickly and quietly. One hit through six innings. We go to the seventh. It's 2 nothing Kansas City. Whew. I mean, folks, it's like I'm trying to build up the uh, momentum. I'm trying to just urge some, some spark to to happen and then I watch an inning play out and then I just see a couple of events happen and just it just dies back down again and I'm gonna have to gear up for the next time we get up to the plate we gotta break through I mean we need we need a speech or something we need some kind of like brave heart level speech to this Orioles dugout Let's go, like, do it for Johnny, whatever. Pick a pick something to win one for the Gipper, I don't know. Pick something, get hyped. Top of the order, do up for the Royals. Again, why, it's always, it's the same guys. It's like they have five batters in their lineup and they hit every inning. Garcia's one for three so far today. He'll lead off the top of the seventh. I'm still waiting for the broadcast to return. It seems like this commercial break has gone on longer than usual. Oh, but I guess that'll give me a chance to once again say, hey, thanks to everybody watching my channel. I'm pretty new here, but I'm also excited to, uh, there's one more subscriber since, before. oh, there's another one, and then, and then another one. Okay, I guess it's sort of working its way up. Hey, folks, maybe we get to 200 tonight? Maybe? We'll see. All right. Uh, Ballman is out there after getting the last out in the sixth. He's out here to begin the seventh inning. First pitch is off the plate for ball one to uh, Mike Mikhail Garcia. This one's low and away, 2-0 to Garcia. 
Teresa loves Taco Bell. How you doing, Teresa? Have you made a run for the border today? The 2 to Garcia swung on and fouled back 2-1. and one. Hey, there's a Taco Bell uh, in town here where I live. I'm 12 time zones away if you're on the East Coast. Yeah, I'd say bring Holiday up, but uh, I, I mean, we're not even using the right players we have right now, Rob. That's what's making me upset. I mean, I get the lefty-righty matchup thing, but Colton Kowser can hit lefties. Uh, if you look at his uh, his splits, and he had a great spring, and his natural position during his minor league career has been center field. And he came off a game last night where he had the only RBI. Here's a high fly ball to right field. It's backing up Santander, and this ball is going to get out of here. Michael Garcia has been an absolute uh, pest. His third home run of the season. And the Royals now lead three to nothing. My goodness. So after four scoreless innings of relief last night out of the pen, Ballman gives up the home run here, having retired just one batter in the sixth. Still nobody out here in the seventh. And here's a swing and a miss from Bobby Witt Jr. I mean, we need we need better hitters. I mean, we got the hitters. They just need to execute better. And they need to – number one is stop swinging at the first pitch. That's number one. We're doing it too much. 0-2 the count on wit. And this one clips the bottom of the zone. How about that? Mike Bauman striking out Bobby Witt on three pitches. That might be my number two highlight of the night. I'm looking for highlights wherever I can get them, folks. And, yeah, that was a well-located pitch. Witt retired on strikes. One down, bases empty, run in. 3 nothing Kansas City in the top of the seventh. The bring-up holiday chance continue. I tell you what, at this point, it really is – the optics really do look bad because if the Orioles come out of this th with a 3-3 three and three home record against these two teams, then everyone's going to say, you know, if we had Holiday on the team, maybe we uh, win one of those games. Urias certainly isn't helping us. So, yeah, it's just you hate to – it's a long season, though, folks. And we're going to make mistakes along the way. I don't know if you guys play poker like I do. Three and one the count now in Pascatino. I don't know if you play poker like I do. And this one's inside ball four. So a one out walk. But if you play poker, even if you're good at it, you know, you're still losing like hands like 55% of the time or, or what, what is it? Like 45% of the, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, uh, the difference between getting on a run and getting in a rut, uh, you know, a long season like this, you got to take the good with the bad. Look, we still have this consecutive series streak without getting swept going. We got that going for us. Hey, there's my typical seventh inning. It really has been every time. In the seventh inning, my stream will cut out for whatever reason and I have to turn it back on I don't know if that's a Thailand thing or what okay one down did I miss how that last batter got out Salvador Salvador Perez is stepping into the plate I apologize uh let me see if I, if I can recover what that last at-bat was. 
First pitch to Perez is a called strike. One down, runner at first. And I guess Pascatina was retired in some fashion on the previous play. Sorry about that, folks. Here's a ground ball foul off to the left. 0-2 oh, the count on Perez. <sighs> I'm telling you, folks, seventh inning stretch is coming up, and you want me to not channel my inner Harry Carey? Because we need some runs. Popped up by Perez. High in the air. Mateo sprinting in a long way. Comes in to make the catch. Mateo probably ran about 140, 160 feet. Here comes uh, Brandon Hyde out of the dugout. And with two down in the seventh, we're probably going to switch to a lefty of some sort, I would assume, with the left-handed MJ Melendez due up. And they're not going to show us who's coming in. I think it's Danny Coulomb. All right, two down in the top of the seventh, and we have a pitching change. Danny Coulomb appears to be the one coming out, and yet indeed, he's already listed here on the page. This will be his second appearance, I think, of the season. And if I'm not mistaken, he had a scoreless inning of relief in the... In the third game of the Angels series or the first game of the Royal series? I can't remember. I promise a Wild Bill cheer. It is the seventh. Well, hold on. It's top of the seventh. There's still two out. Pitching change. Let's. How about we do Wild Bill for uh, the seventh inning stretch? That seems the appropriate time. Plus, it just buys me time. <laughs> All right. If I do the wild bill, wait, 189, 190. Folks, I mean, look how close. And I know some of you will sub just to see me do a little silly something, only to unsub immediately thereafter. It's expected. I do wish you kind of stuck around and subbed. and, But uh, I'll take whatever I can get, you know. Hey, Ulysses, you're welcome, and I appreciate the compliment. I hope to, uh, I hope to uh, continue to uh, give you good work. Okay, Coulomb is out there. Indeed, he has made just the one appearance, one inning, uh, one strikeout. And he's in there to face Melendez, the left-handed batter. First pitch is in there for a called strike. Melendez is one for three, doubling back on the first. Runner at first, two down. The Orioles cannot afford to give up any more here. The 0-1 pitch is hit in the air foul off to the left. And Coulomb quickly ahead 0-2. You know what I find interesting is listening to any other, like, baseball uh pundits or YouTubers swing and a miss and the ball in the dirt uh, McCann will throw to first to retire Melendez on the strikeout so Coulomb comes in and shuts the door gets the strikeout seventh inning stretch time here in Baltimore cakes are on the griddle Oh, my God. They just finally showed the wide shot of the stadium. And, folks, I got to tell you right now, I can fit more people in my apartment comfortably. Like, comfortably. There is maybe a 1,000 people there. Maybe. Wow. But you want a little wild bill, huh? Even though I feel like nine more subs really should be the... The, the draw. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on. Let me bring myself up on the screen so I can see how silly I look. All right, folks. If I'm going to do this, you're going to have to do it with me. We need a rally, and you know we need it bad. Come on. Oh! Orioles! All right.
sorry, that was terrible. But you got you to gotta realize my energy. <laughs> I got no energy, man. I don't. I've been, I've been up for a very long time. Whew. All right. Well, at least uh, that got a huge round of nothing. <laughs> oh, here, here it comes. Boy, there is quite the lag on the chat, isn't there? There is quite the lag. All right, folks. Surely a little wild Bill Hagee Orioles chant is worthy of a few more subs to get to that magic number of 200. You know, 200 is a very special number in my heart. Just thought I'd tell you that. Okay, bottom of the seventh we go. Cole Reagan's out there for another inning of work. Adley Rutschman at the plate and a 1-0 count. This is rally time. Rutschman leading off an inning equals rally time. Next pitch low and away, 2-0. Come on. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry, sorry. I got to get myself off the screen. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There you go. Okay, there you go. And this one's outside. 3-0. Okay. All right. Here we go. Here we go. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for a round. Come on. We're so due for a run. Let's score. Come on. 3-0. In there, a called strike. Give me a base runner. Give me momentum. The 3-1 is low for ball four. We have the leadoff man on base. I repeat, sound the klaxon. Shout it out of the row houses of downtown Baltimore. We have a leadoff man on base. Ryan Mountcastle at the plate outside for ball one. And here comes Fermin out to have a conference with Reagans. Yeah, have that conference. Yeah, that's it. Pick up that bullpen phone. Pick up that bullpen phone. Reagans is up to 80 pitches. He has been... Very good so far tonight, clearly, not having given up a run through six innings. But he has the leadoff man on via the walk here in the seventh and a 1-0 count on one of the better left-handed, uh, right-handed pitchers against, <laughs> right-handed hitters against left-handed pitching hitters. I can't even get it out. Whatever. Mountie destroys lefties, and he's one of the best at doing it. And I couldn't get it out. One and one the count as Mountcastle fouled that ball off. My goodness, am I a mush mouth now? Okay, come on. The one one pitch is low. Two and one. And I can see that uh I'm looking over at this thing. It's about to be two and two. I'm sorry, guys. We're gonna have to stare at something else. It doesn't have to be my sub count, but I can't have anything spoiled during the most important part of the ball game. Please rely on my play call. The 2-1 is swung on a miss, 2-2. Two and two. So now we're at the position I already knew we would be. No more giveaways for me. The 2-2. Two, two. Taken inside and the count goes full. Come on, baby. Take another walk. We need one more base runner. Santander is on deck. I mean, if we can't hit, then let's walk. Sounds like a plan. The 3-2. Swung on him, foul back. Mountcastle stays alive. Fights off a 96-mile-an-hour fastball. Reagan's dialed up for a little something extra there. The count remains full. Nobody out, runner at first, the Orioles. 
desperately trying to break through here. The pitch is upstairs for ball four. The tying run will come to the plate in the form of Anthony Santander, still nobody out. And I would tell you that the crowd is going wild, but the crowd is about the size of a crowd you'd see at, I don't know, at a Marshalls on a Tuesday afternoon. There's like 24 people in the crowd. Okay. Two on, nobody out. Santander, first pitch, is taken for a called strike at the bottom of the zone. Reagan's pitch count is starting to creep up. This will be number 88 coming. Santander 0 for 2. The 0 1 pitch is a swing and a miss. Santander chasing on a ball below the zone. 0 and 2 the count. Come on, Tony. This is not a situation to be striking out. I know you like to swing hard, but if we can just move some runners over here, he takes low and away ball one. And yeah, if it's outside, take it the other way. That'll get the two runners, that'll get a run in and another runner to third. You don't have to be the guy to tie the ball game. If you do, I'd love you, but you don't have to be the guy. Just keep the line moving. The one-two pitch, it's chopped foul off to the left. We'll do it again. 90 pitches for Reagans. Do you guys notice as the game gets more intense, my play calling gets better? My focus gets better? I am willing us. I am willing us to rally here. Come on. One and two. Swung on and missed. Santander taken down by a changeup. And Reagans gets a big out there. Mm, mm, mm. And here comes the Royals manager. This could be it for Reagans. Indeed it is. And get ready for some changes on both sides because if they're bringing in a lefty, or excuse me, a righty, we've got some lefties on our bench right now just itching to get to the plate. It does indeed look like a right-handed reliever coming on for the Royals out of the bullpen in left center field. Let's see if a name is up on the screen yet. It just popped up as I click. It's MacArthur. Is that James? Wasn't this like a president at some point? I don't know. Whatever. This sounds way too like founding fathers of a baseball name. James MacArthur. Author of the Bill of Rights. Will be on to pitch. Well, that's strange. I go back and now his name disappeared here. And now it's back. Okay. Whatever you want to do, SBN. You're as delirious as I am at this point. By the way, the road to 200 is uh, apparently roadblocked. <laughs> still, at, still at 191. Hey, folks, if you're out there right now, why don't you think about hitting that subscribe button? This channel only started right here. We're in the beginning of the season. And as you can see, people are finding it and they want to, they want more. <laughs> uh, so why don't you help the channel grow? Why don't you? No obligation. No salesman will visit your home. Can I possibly coax one subscriber out as I wait for MacArthur to throw his first pitch? It looks like my sales pitch is going to fail. No problem. Westberg at the plate. First pitch to him is right on the outside corner for a called strike. Oh, boy. Man. We need a big hit. Two on, one out. 0-1 oh on Westberg. The pitch Swung on and grounded up the middle, and Witt will field it. Goes to second for the force. That's all they can get. 
Witt was falling down while he made that play. Really no chance to turn two. But also good on Witt to keep it from going into the outfield. So two down now. And it's going to be up to Austin Hayes. Now what do you do here? Are you sending Hayes up to hit? Okay, I'm just saying there's two runners on base and we've got Ryan O'Hearn and Colton Cowser as left-handed options on the bench that could hit for Hayes here. And Hayes takes a called strike. Uh, by the way, did I mention Hayes is batting 118 so far? I was expecting Brandon High to make a move right here. I have to be honest. 0-1, check swing, and it's a called strike two on the inside corner. 0-2 on Hayes. What are we doing? What are we doing? Brandon, I love you, dude. I love you. I promise you I love you. We may not have another chance to, have, to bring the tying run to the plate in this game. We've got two men on base. We got to have a pinch hitter in this situation. 0 and 2 on Hayes, and he checks his swing. The umpire says he went. The catcher tags him, and the inning is over. First and second, nobody out, and the Orioles can't score. At the end of seven, the Orioles no runs, one hit, no errors. We go to the eighth, three nothing, Kansas City. Tough night, guys. Tough night. Wow. Wow. How quickly am I going to fall? I don't know if I'm going to. I don't know if I'm so delirious that I'll have trouble falling asleep after this or the anxiety of this game is. I don't know. Am I going to pass right out or am I going to have insomnia? I have no idea. I haven't a clue. Oh, God, everyone's struggling, base. Everyone's struggling. See, I'm struggling, too. I spent an entire uh, commercial break, uh, you know, trying to pimp out the channel to no success when we're oh so close to a milestone number. Emphasis on O. Just a reminder, your boy started the stream on time. One oh five, your boy was sitting here ready and never left. And now is sitting through a game where we've gotten one hit. Because I refuse to give up. And I refuse to let a single pitch of this season occur without my eyeballs on it. Top of the eighth. I don't know why it's showing Santander there. Okay, first pitch swinging here in the top of the eighth. Coulomb still out up there, and it's a shallow ball into... Left field, the shortstop, Henderson, makes the catch. One pitch, one out here in the eighth. Denny, cool as the cucumber, Coulomb. Cool Keegan Aiken getting loose in the pin, another left-hander. Frazier at the plate now, and the first pitch is called strike, top of the zone. Frazier's average at 214 with his 0 for 3 tonight. Here's a nice breaking ball catching the inside corner. Coulomb gets ahead 0 and 2 on a couple of nice pitches to Adam Frazier with one out here in the top of the eighth. 
Yeah, I don't know what's going on with this. I guess we can just abandon this. This one's off the plate. One ball and two strikes. Uh, there you go. There's a called strike three for Coulomb on the outside edge. Two down. Coulomb has been uh, razor sharp since coming on. It's been it's been a uh, a pleasure, honestly, to watch an Orioles pitcher retire batters in in a quick and somewhat effortless way. Two down, and the first pitch to Fermin is that Fermin at the plate? Yes, it is. It's uh, low for ball one. Fermin is zero for three. He struck out in his last at bat. This one's up in the zone. 2-0. and oh. Next pitch is tap foul off to the left. Two balls and a strike on the Kansas City catcher for mean. I mean, this looks like a COVID game, this crowd. This one's off to the left. I mean, right now, if you want to sit, like, next to Brandon Hyde, you could. You can sit wherever you want right now. There are about as many people watching this game as there are playing it. Two and two the count on Fermin. This one swung on and hit hard, but nicely picked by the third baseman, Urias. He throws across the diamond in time. And that'll do it for the Royals here in the top of the eighth. Bottom of the eighth we go. Six outs left to wake this offense up. Who is due up? Who will be the, the hero to come out of the ashes and wake? Oh, my God. It's the bottom of the order. <laughs> no. Wow. All right. By the way, bottom of the order tonight, 0 for 6 with a pair of strikeouts. Just saying. I kind of said something about how strong the bottom of our order was tonight. But then again, we only have one hit through the whole lineup. So, whatever. I don't know. I'll tell you this. We can double our hit count if we just get one hit. How about that? Let's make let's baby steps. Let's baby steps this thing. We're going to double our hit count right here in this very inning upcoming. Let's go. Man, I finished my latte a long time ago. A long time ago. Good Lord. I went, I did go this morning to the 7-Eleven. That did happen today, right? Good Lord. I am so delirious. Hey, look who it is leading off the bottom of the eighth to pinch hit for... Jorge Mateo, it's Colton Kowser, everybody. Now we bring up a left-handed pinch hitter with the bases empty. Not the tying run at the plate. Just somebody to hopefully get on base. Again, why not just bring him in in a bigger spot? He had two guys on base. He drove in the only run last night. I'm really not happy with Hyde's decision on that. I know it might not make sense to pinch hit for Hayes. He was an all-star last year. Is that a slight on him? I know, I know, but let's see what Kowser can do right here. Swing and a miss on the first pitch. MacArthur 
with one low in the zone. The 0-1 is hitting the center field, dropping, and it will get in down for a base hit. Kowser, I believe now, is hitting over 500. Base hit for Kowser, and we have doubled our hit count. Let's go. We have doubled our hit count on the night single-handedly by Colton Kowser. Gee, this 571 average that's wedged between a bunch of 111s and triple zeros sure seems like should be in the lineup a little more. Okay, leadoff man on. McCann at the plate, and this one's off the plate outside. Ugh. All right, let's go. Yeah, let's give it up for Kowser. 1-0 on McCann. Pitches swung on a missed. Slider there from MacArthur. 86. One ball, one strike. Oh, I forgot. I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this. It's about to be one and two. We, we're not looking at that. We're not looking. We're just, we're, we're in this together. There's that called strike to make it one and two. Okay. All right. We're still in this. Uh, there's a lefty for the Royals up in the bullpen. A fellow by the name of Zerpa. Z-E-R-P-A. Zerpa. Getting loose out there. I'm hanging in there. This one is hit well. That's tagged. That ball's going to get down. It's going to bounce off the wall in left field. We've got runners at second and third. Nobody out. Turn on the sprinklers. I was about to say, let's pinch run for McCann here. We need both these runs in at least. I don't know how, but who, then who would catch? We'd have to take the catcher. We'd have to remove the DH. It might come to that at some point. I don't know. No, McCann is going to run. Okay. I guess it. I guess we can't. Yeah. If, if it was ninth inning, maybe. But yeah. Okay. Second and third. Nobody out. Let's keep the line moving, guys. Ramon Urias first pitch swinging, and I said swinging. Shallow right field, not deep enough for Kowser to tag and score. Thank you for nothing on one pitch, Ramon Urias. Opposite field, shallow fly ball. Not close to solid contact. I mean, you're swinging at the first pitch, just, what, hoping something good happens? What a blown opportunity. I am done with Urias. I'm done. I'm done with Urias. The Royals are making a pitching change. Here comes a real hitter. Gunnar Henderson's up next. We go to a commercial break. I am done with Ramon Urias. I mean, yo. <laughs> if you're an Orioles fan... Hit the like button if you're done with Ramon Urias. Hit. Oh, somebody unsubbed. <laughs> lovely. Lovely to see a number go down on the live stream. Especially after streaming for over seven hours straight. That's a good feeling. Hey, there's 78 people here. Of those 78, you could be one of nine to take what has been a historically exhausting evening slash morning and turn it into something special. You have that power in your hands. And if you believe in that whole, you do a good deed for the day and, uh, you know, you'll be set for the afterlife. Talk about an easy way to get that good deed out of the way. You just hit the subscribe button and you're done. Good deed done. Just throwing out, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just saying. <laughs> Holiday with a single. Norby doubles. Holiday scores. 
So Holiday singled in a run. Okay, so an RBI single and then an RBI double for Norby. Man. And again, yeah, it's like, uh, we still have Norby too. It's like, just get rid of Urias. We have Urias and Kemp, and they could be, uh, you know, if not Holiday and Norby, then Holiday and Mayo. But, I mean, come on. You mean to tell me? We don't have something better waiting in the wings. Okay, Gunnar Henderson's at the plate. A lefty on the mound. First pitch is taken for a called strike. And even though it was a strike, I'm happy to see Gunnar take. Let's not swing at that first pitch all the time. Second and third, one out. The Orioles still looking for their first run of this game. It's Zerpa on the mound. The pitch, inside out swing, foul off to the left. And Gunnar in the hole 0 and 2. All right, Gunner's going to have to hang tough here. We got double barrel action in the Oriole pen. The righty Cano is up. Aiken, the lefty, is still out there. He's probably already ready to go. The 0-2 pitch, low and away, ball one. Gunner able to lay off. Cannot afford a strike out here. Must at least get the runner from third home before making the second out. Just pop the top off of the cap. Okay, that's a foul ball back. One and two remains the count. I'm hanging in there. I'm hanging in there. There's a chant of let's go O's and all nine people yelling it. Good on you. The one-two pitch. Hit in the air. Left center, it's going to be caught. Isbell has it, but he's still backing up as he makes the catch. That's going to make it easy for Kowser to tag and score. The Orioles have a run on the board. Three to one now here in the bottom of the eighth. RBI sacrifice fly for Gunnar Henderson. Two down now. And again, the tying run coming to the plate in the form of Adley Rutschman who will now turn around and bat left-handed. Excuse me. We'll turn around and bat right-handed. I had a 50-50 chance, and I blew it. And Zerpa's first pitch to Rutschman is low and away for ball one. All right, boys and girls. It's time to hang in there. Rutschman at the plate, the tying run. He takes one, low and in, a called strike. Bottom of the zone, inside corner, perfectly placed. One and one the count, runner at second. Pitch, check swing foul. And now Rutschman with two strikes. The Royals have... Bullpen action as well. Chris Stratton, a right-hander, is on the bullpen mound getting loose. Wow. A good point by Kevin Brown here on the 1-2 pitch. This one's hit the opposite field and will get down for a base hit. And coming around the score is McCann. Adley Rutschman will hustle into second, but is tagged out. No. No, not with Mountcastle on deck and a left-handed pitcher who was required to pitch to him. No, check it again. Check to make sure. Don't tell me you've run into the third out. Not with a left-handed pitcher and Mountcastle do up next. No. Give me a replay. He's out. The Orioles score a pair of runs, but the inning comes to a hasty close as the tying run that would have been on second had he made it. Adley Rutschman gets thrown out, trying to stretch a single into a double. It looked like he was going to make it. Fantastic throw came in from right field. Mountcastle would have been up. 
this uh, Zerpa guy, whatever his name is, he would have been, he would have had to face Mountcastle. It would have been a huge opportunity to not only uh, perhaps tie, but maybe take the lead in the ball game. But listen, folks, we got two runs on the board, okay? It's looking a lot better than it did 10 minutes ago. We've got three outs left. We had six outs. We needed three runs. We've used three outs. We got two runs. We're on pace to get there. We get two in the eighth. We get two more in the ninth. We're good. I don't want to hear anybody out there uh, losing hope. Even though I sound like Captain Negative all the time. There you go. Look at that. We're going to get the 200. I can feel it. You know why? You know why? Because I believe the world is truly a good place and that the human heart is capable of anything, including showing love to a complete stranger on the other side of the planet who has been up for like 37 consecutive hours streaming his butt off like a madman, probably needs to be checked into some sort of hospital, whether for mental or physical help. Okay, Cano is going to come out here to finish. I say finish. What am I talking about? I am delirious. Cano is out here to start the ninth inning, taking over Danny Coulomb. It's never too late to sub, folks. Look at that. Just six to go. I'm telling you right now, what if that were the, re what if that were, uh, the difference between winning and losing? Just some magical th number of 200 giving us enough to rally back. First pitch from Cano is off the plate. Want to know the count. And the next one is drilled down the right field corner, but foul. That is Kyle Isbell with a foul ball down in the right field corner. Sorry, I keep adjusting my microphone. I'm sure you can hear the er, 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 er. I just, it's a bad habit. I'm trying to work on it. One and one the count. Cano on Isbell. Cano worked out of a fantastic. This is a soft grounder to first. Mountcastle will tag the bag himself for out number one here in the ninth. I was going to say, uh, Cano did a fantastic job working out of a bases loaded situation uh, earlier in this series. Okay, with one out now, up steps uh, Michael Garcia, and I already see the outcome of this. Okay, once again, late in the ball game. Uh, I choose to keep this just like this. Called strike, bottom of the zone, 0 and 2 the count. Garcia, 2 for 4 tonight with a home run. That home run right now, the difference. Otherwise, we'd have a 2 2 ball game right now. The pitch is swung on a miss, no chance on that. And Cano takes his classic pose on that strikeout. Two away here in the top of the ninth. Oh, my goodness. We got a bottom of the ninth to go. Can we rally? Can we rally? If we rally, oh, my God. Come on, I want to rally. Swing and a miss. Nice. First pitch there to Witt Jr., He's two for four tonight. Double, single, stolen base, a run scored. Typical Bobby Witt Jr. production. The 0-1 is swung on a miss. He chased one a foot off the plate. And Witt is behind in the count 0-2. Cano one strike away from retiring the Royals here, 1-2-3. The next pitch taken outside this time, 1-2. Why did the, why did this just pop up? I don't want that pop. Stay stay there. Urgh. The one two is hit on the ground. A big hop to short. Gunner throws it across. 
with pace on that throw. And we're going to go to the bottom of the ninth. Witt retired. The Orioles need a run. They need it bad. Do up. Three, four, five. I'll take it. And guess what? We still got Ryan O'Hearn in our back pocket. But here's the problem. I believe Will Smith is the Kansas City closer, and he's a lefty, is he not? So if Smith is going to come in, and it's, it, it already says Smith is going to replace. So, yeah, uh, that's a lefty. Who's our right? Do we? Who do we? Okay, so Mount Castle, no problem. Santander, no problem. Westburg, no problem. Hey, oh, you know what? Fine. We're not pinch hitting anyone. We got a lefty in there, and the next four batters, I wouldn't use anybody to pinch hit for. I can't think of a better option. If we had Kobe Mayo, maybe, but uh, I'm not complaining. Bottom of the ninth coming up here soon. Six subs away from 200. You know what happens when we get to 200, right? It's a... Uh, it's something spectacular, I got to tell you. It's absolutely spectacular, the 200 celebration. You're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna break out your uh, devices and record for posterity. We're going to overtime. <laughs> I'll take overtime. As exhausted as I am, let's tie this game and go extra innings. If that's what it takes to finally win the game. I am ready. We go to the bottom of the ninth. All right, Orioles fans. Listen. What has been the story of this team last season? How many come from behind wins? How many, hey, we're down, but we're not quite out? How many heroic comebacks? How many unexpected moments of Orioles magic? Let's say we get another one. Ryan Mountcastle here to lead it off. Will Smith in the game to close for Kansas City. The Southpaw's first pitch is in the dirt for ball one. Who do we have to pinch run for Mountcastle if they decide to pitch around him, which I wouldn't be surprised if this, you know, not a straight pitch around, but don't give him anything to hit. This one's outside 2-0. and oh. Let me think. I guess Tony Kemp. I guess we'd pinch hit with pinch run with Tony Kemp. I might be putting the cart before the horse, but I got a feeling they're not going to give Mountcastle anything to hit. This one's a foot off the plate, and it's 3-0. and oh. Kansas City does not want Ryan Mountcastle to tie this game. They say we'd rather face... Everybody else in your lineup because they're struggling right now. And we need to respond. Off the plate, ball four. Guys, I called it. I called it. I mean, this is a closer, okay? That's the respect Ryan Mountcastle is getting, that a closer comes out and basically gives an unintentional, intentional walk to get to Anthony Santander. That is some mad respect. Where is the pinch runner? Please tell me we have a pinch runner for Mountcastle. I know he's not slow, slow, but come on. This is the tying run. First pitch to Santander is over the plate but low for ball one. Okay, tying run at first. Nobody out. Santander with a 1-0 count. There is noise in the stadium. The pitch. Hit on the ground and past the diving of a shortstop, Witt Jr. in the left field. A base hit. And that ball rolls slowly as it skids across the wet grass. The left fielder will get it back in. First and second, nobody out. Tying run at second, winning run at first. And where are the pinch runners now? Here we go. I forgot all about Mullins. Mullins is in to run for Santander at first. They're going to keep Mountcastle at second. That's the most important run. 
Is Mount Castle faster than I give him credit for? I mean, maybe I'm just not giving him the benefit of the doubt because he's a first baseman, and typically that's not what you look at as a speed spot. But I also don't know him to steal bases too often, but okay. Nobody out. Westberg is going to lay down a bunt. Well, he tries to. Wait a minute. The run. Oh, my God. Oh, a lot to unpack. Westberg pulls squared around a bunt. Uh, he could not connect with the ball. So strike one. And the catcher threw down a second base quickly to try to pick off Mountcastle, but he gets back in safely. All that happened in a span of a moment. Owen won the count on Westberg now. Second and third. Nobody out. One run down. And he squares up again. And this time, he doesn't bring the bat back. And that pitch was nowhere near the strike zone. Oh, is this not a part of Westberg's bag of tricks? Is he not a bunter? Are we asking him to do something that he can't do? 0-2 the count on Westberg. He was the hero two nights ago. 1-1. One and, one. and he is going to lay a bunt down. And it's going to work. The only play is at first. Both runners move into scoring position now. Tying run at third. Go ahead. Winning run at second with only one out. Austin Hayes. It's your night, bro. This is your night, bro. This is your night, bro. Austin Hayes. Talk about a guy that's due. He is 111 on the season. I'm going to go ahead and do the math and say he's 2 for 18. That math works out. 2 for his first 18. So he's due. Bases loaded. Wait a minute. Are they walk? They walked Hayes. They put him on. That makes sense because his run doesn't matter. You know what? I would have made that point had I thought about it. And what a situation we have now. Bases loaded, and up steps Colton Kowser with a chance to do something against a left-handed pitcher in a gigantic spot. The first pitch to Kowser. Swung on and missed. He chased one in the dirt. Come on, Kowser. Dude, you don't have to press. They're the ones right now on the ropes. They're on the ropes, not us. Don't press. Just feel it, man. Get in that zen, Kowser. Get in that zen. We believe in you, buddy. We believe in you. A hit will do. Just a flare will do. The next pitch is taken. This time, Kowser doesn't even swivel his hips to swing. He lays off well there. One ball and one strike. That looked like a more patient hitter at the plate. Oh, it really would have hurt to get behind in the count 0-2. I just got a feeling kowser has got enough in him to lift a ball into the outfield to tie the game. And that's all we need right now. One and one the count. The pitch. Check swing. Appeal. No swing. No swing. No, sir. Two and one. Two and one. Guys. There are orifices in my body that are clenching right now. I am fidgety. Two and one. Bases loaded. One down. One run down in the bottom of the ninth. The 2-1 pitch. Swung on and missed. Kowser swung for the fences and comes up empty. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the blood pressure. Come on, Colton. This would be so big for you, buddy. I am rooting for you so much, man. I am rooting for you, man. More than just the moment. He takes a call. Strike three at the bottom of the zone. Two down with the runner at third still there. Base is still loaded. Smith threw the ball right at the bottom of the zone. 
with two down now, we have to rely on James McCann. It's James McCann and a 1-0 count. I don't even want to see anything over here. Next pitch is outside. Hey, look at that. The sub count is over 200. Maybe we'll get something special. Maybe we'll get some Orioles magic. 2-0 the count on McCann. All right, you know what to do right here. You look middle-middle, McCann. Otherwise, you got to lay off. 2-0 is swung on line. Base hit left field. Tying run comes in. Here comes the winning run, and he scores! The Orioles walk it off! A two-run single from James McCann! Somehow, some way, the Orioles take the series with a walk-off two and three nights. A two-out, two-run single. Final score, Baltimore four. Kansas City three. Orioles magic. Feel it happen. Woo! And it was worth it. Get this stupid thing out of my way. It was worth it tonight. I stayed up all night into the day. Look at this. Look at that. You know how long I've been up? Do you know how long I've been up? You mean to tell me this ain't the best damn sports stream on YouTube? Get that sub count up. That's right, 09. Make it 210. I like even numbers. I like even numbers. Final score, Orioles four, Royals three. And I tell you what, how about a hand to the crowd that stuck around for this and saw the conclusion of this game? A five-hour rain delay, a game where the Orioles had only one hit going into like the eighth inning. Just an anemic offense. Couldn't get the ball out of the infield. We had Mateo screwing up in the outfield. Chances squandered, hope all but lost, and yet this team, this team, the magic that lies within, it simply will not fade. We wrap up the homestand, four and two, and we hit the road for the first time. We're going to Pittsburgh. And wow, this is a late one, but here comes Santander and Kowser to splash. Oh, that's sort of a anticlimactic splash there. But we'll take it as McCann is doused in some purple scissorp. My goodness. Wow. You'll remember this game if you were there tonight. If you're one of the lucky 825 people, holy Toledo, what a game. What a game, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, your final score, Orioles 4, Royals 3. Let me go over the box score real quick, and we'll talk about that first game in Pittsburgh before I get the heck out of here and collapse. Collapse. <laughs> Yeah, Sean, it's coming, baby. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you, baby. I'm, I'm delirious. Sean, I'll never call you baby again. That was just a slip of the old tongue. Your boy here, you know he's tired. <laughs> wow. So Corbin Burns, not his best start, uh, but he powered through much like Tyler Wells powered through, much like how Dean Kramer didn't have it to begin with. I'll give it to this for the Orioles' uh, starting rotation. Even when they're not on their game, maybe save for Cole Irvin, uh, they, they figure out a way uh, to keep us in the ball game. Uh, Mike Bauman came out, wasn't too effective, gave up a run in his only inning of work. 
But Danny Coulomb and Yenier Cano both were lights out. They've combined for two and a third innings with three strikeouts, no hits, no walks. They shut down the Kansas City offense when we needed them to at the end of the game. And I told you, two in the eighth, two in the ninth, right? Did I not make that call? I said two in the eighth, two in the ninth. So here is the uh, batter stat lines. Everybody's telling me to go to sleep. How do I now? I've got all this adrenaline rushing through my veins. Now now I'm in that loopy stage where you're so tired and now adrenaline's rushing, uh, you can't go to sleep. Gunnar Henderson 0 for 3 but had a sack fly RBI. Adley Rutschman a couple of hits and an RBI. Ryan Mountcastle 0 for 2 but scored a run. Anthony Santander went 1 for 4. Said Mellons came in to pinch run for him to score the winning run of the ball game. Westberg went 0 for 3. Hayes went 0 for 3. Mateo 0 for 2. Kowser with that pinch hit. Scored a run, and James McCann with the walk-off, a two-for-four night. And, oh, yeah, there's this guy, Urias, who's at the bottom of the order. Why don't we just have eight men in the lineup, honestly? <laughs> I swear, if Urias is in the lineup on Friday, I'm, uh, I'm done. All right, so that does it for the uh, stat line. And once again, your pitchers coming up on – uh, what is it? What is it? Let me just go to the MLB, not PMLB, MLB. Give me the probable pitchers here. It should be Grayson Rodriguez on the mound for Baltimore. And speaking of the Pirates, there they are on the front page. Guys, thanks so much, by the way, for coming out tonight. It's been another exci- – look, we've had a couple of tough losses here at the beginning of the season, but we've also had some very exciting wins. And to be able to share the experience with you guys is, is just uh, – it's fantastic. It's, uh, it's great. So, yes, on Friday, April 5th, come back to my channel and tune in – at 4.12 Eastern first pitch. I will go on the air at 4 p.m. Eastern Friday, April 5th. Grayson Rodriguez against Jared Jones of the Pirates. Folks, that's going to do it for your very tired pal here who's basking in the sunlight. Look at the light behind me. It's like I'm an angel, right? There's an angel on my shoulder. Do you see it? Do you see the angel over my shoulder? Looking over these Orioles, I'm the bird watcher. I'm sitting in a nest 12 time zones away. And uh, I'm going to go to bed happy. Once again, final score, Orioles 4, Royals 3. This has been the bird watcher, and I'll chirp at you later.